Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the UEL, where gamers go pro, and we are back for another hard-hitting game from the Southern Conference. My name is Strix, and I'm joined with... A.V. What's going on, brother? I'm excited today. You might see history made. It's been every weekend. I feel like history has been fought for and made this season, but we're seeing the Bucks friendly spar right before playoffs mm-hmm. with the Gorillas. Uh, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it hey, goes. man, I'm I'm just super excited to see exactly what the Bucks are going to be able to pull out here. Um, it is just gravity and pizza, man. Now, these two have been uh, in addition to. The Bucks gravity has literally been here for almost every game. Pizza Man, the new addition coming over from the Bandits, who originally was on the Trolls, now known as the LAX Gods or the X Gods. Um, so I'm really interested to see just what they're going to pull out today. Uh, there's no, uh, they don't have like a leader outside of gravity being here. So there's no fear. There's no, there's no Baba Yagans. There's no one. <laughs> It's a great opportunity for us to see how these new players handle some of the pressure of UEL. Yeah. Gravity, again, has come through to, like you said, almost every single game. And has consistently put on the show, his growth in fighting games over the course of the season mm-hmm. has been amazing to watch. And you can tell when he goes into a game, he has an idea and ready to play. And Pizza Man takes instruction really well. So mm-hmm. I think the yeah. two of them working together, they might be able to maybe make, you know, find that chemistry that helps them take a few of these games. Every game isn't you know four players five players there's a lot of two v twos and if you can find a little bit of magic you never know what might happen oh yeah absolutely and even even with uh the bucks i'm gonna move over to the gorillas this has kind of been uh their not necessarily their staple lineup but you've seen merged you've seen global figure and now with the addition of both x-ray kevin and kenny um it's been a really interesting season for them uh, with the with the uh, gorillas and just in general with uh, four wins five losses yeah. and we get to see O to the L again and O to the L and always fun to see him come out be able to come out and compete and we get another chance and I think great things to just give everybody a few more reps going into playoffs they are still in that fight that road to Michigan that we're moving towards everyone is looking to take to the stage mm-hmm. in Grand Rapids and have their shot at hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. You're absolutely correct. So this is actually going to be a really um, interesting game. Uh, What games do you see like being like heavily contested here? Funnily enough, so some any of those strategy games where you can bring those numbers down Mm -hmm. and maybe having a little bit of fun. Funnily enough, not disconnecting if the Bucks if the Bucks have a little bit of uh, ingenuity and can understand how the game is played, they might be able to get some of that magic from DVD that we saw last season. Mm -hmm. Ending the game super quickly is even possible to take a win, but any of those strategy games, I think they can work in. And in the fighting games, yes, Global's been putting on a great clinic, but I think there's always this room for fighting game players. You have to be on every single game, every single day, and generally, I think he can find... Gravity can find his wins and find his moments, as well as Pizza Man. We've seen Pizza Man sweep teams by himself let alone any just player you have to know exactly what you're doing in these fighting games to be able to stop him oh yeah no absolutely um i i really think that uh for me as far as uh contested games i would say actually i was going to say f1 but then i forgot mers is there uh, mers is a little bit of a Murs plays a little bit rush, so that's another one. But we have an interview from the floor. We're going to send y'all on over to them. Catch you in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're here for another lovely day. You, yeah, we got the Bucks versus the Gorillas. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. G Gravity, Gravity the man himself, and one half of the actual League's Wonder Twins, Kevin. What are you guys looking forward to today? Uh, I'm looking for pretty good games uh, throughout. I um, mean, I know it's the two men today, so it's a little rough out here, but. I know you guys can pull some games from us. Yeah, a little rough with the two man here, but uh, no, just another day. Not not worried about points. Just gonna do our best that we can and everything that comes up, no matter what comes up. Hey, you gotta have the positive mindset. You gotta be focused to be an in gamer, and you can hear the Bucks are ready for it. You know, Kevin's ready to do his job. But uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Back to you guys. And here we are. We're gonna be swapping over directly into our. P S and it looks like did Pizza Man take and in the did 
Did Pizza Man take it? Because he was looking for you. He was looking for you. Pizza Man took RPS, global figure, maybe setting the stage for some losses in these fighting games. Fighting games are a lot of rock, paper, scissors in reality. Mm -hmm. And if Pizza Man's already got in Global's head, you never know what might just happen. Yo, <laughs> Pizza Man got in Global's head. That'll be crazy. And we got Texas up first. You said strategy games, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was all right. So the, I want to see, I want to see who's cooking in Texas. Texas is Funnily enough, a game like, I don't know if I want to say I enjoy, but I've spent a lot of time with this season. <laughs> you enjoy it uh, a little too much, huh? No, I'm not Magnus. <laughs> if I don't know if you, for people that saw him in DVD yesterday, um, or te even Texas, excuse me, it was Texas. Mm -hmm. He was, he he looked a little too comfortable on Leather. He was, <laughs> he was way too ready and way too happy just to be like, oh, yeah, I got you. Oh, you're running that way. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I, I want to know, like, with with this type of strategy, having um, Texas Chainsaw being a three v four, what uh, what do you think the strategy is for the Bucks here? Do they play the family? Do they play the victims? What do you think that they should do? I think you try to play family uh, if you're gonna play Texas from like a down perspective, mm -hmm. where something like DBD you have access to the hatch. Uh, Texas, unfortunately, does not have a mechanic yeah. where it's like, oh, you're th this many people left. You're really down. You can. There's a way to escape, possibly have a chance on points to win. You still have to be able to control a lot of the different avenues for how the, the map flows in general. Mm -hmm. And it means a yeah, dealing with three killers, less people means you just have to hide a little bit better. Yeah. Whereas if you are the killers, you know, like, okay, Leatherface is down in the basement. I'm upstairs feed help help downstairs and you can hopefully cut off the easy exits and maybe force a couple of mistakes to come out oh yeah no I, I get exactly where you're coming from and me with the bucks being the ones who won rps they have that opportunity to really set the standard for kind of like the rest of the game you know at least in my opinion for for when it comes to this uh matchup at least yeah. at least with uh texas right so uh like you said Playing the family is probably more ideal. And now if you're the family, it's typically three anyway, right? Yeah, so you're only down one person. Mm -hmm. And especially if either Gravity or Pizza Man has some time on Leatherface. Leatherface has so much presence early in the game. And depending on map, you can have an amazing, amazing opportunity to run away with the game. Now, we're getting some information that really does make me think that maybe... Go ahead. Maybe their decision, it's, it, would you rather be the person getting chased or running away, especially if you know there's less of you? When I think about it, right, mm -hmm. you, we already know what the magic number is. The magic number is three, right? So if two people escape, technically they points. win. It's still points. Right? <laughs> it's still points. That's, I, actually, that's a great question for our game master of how that would work because normally yeah three would be the winning mm -hmm. for either side yeah so do you just guarantee go to points <laughs> every maybe there's some tech here as well less victims and for those wondering why we're saying this it looks as though the rps choice that the uh, bucks chose was victims they, the, the bucks are playing you have RP less people to hit and less points to get that's that's true that's true i say that the Bucks might make me a believer today. The Bucks might just make me a believer. I cannot wait to uh, <clears throat> see what they're all going to bring to the table. I want to see what map. The map also depends pretty heavily. Um, depending on how much you play the game, there are some maps that are balanced, mm -hmm. killer favored, survivor favored. If you know some of those survivor favored maps, mm -hmm. maybe you can get out. But even if I was the gorillas here, guess what? If we go to gas station like everyone in the league has been doing... Mm -hmm. Just wait by the, these gates back. Yeah. Don't even, don't even, just don't let them get the car battery, and then let uh, let <laughs> let the game proceed. The big thing I am going to call out though for the gorillas is historically in this game they've had Gerns who's not playing today, but Gerns who is usually their leather face. So we might see somebody that's unfamiliar with that basement, the areas of the map, moving around and actually pressuring uh, Gravity and Pizza Man, and that could lead to huge, huge opportunities for them to maybe get those points and get out. Well, I mean, it also makes sense because if they're picking, so if at, for the for the Bucks, if they decided to go with, you know, who they were playing, 
and the gorillas got to choose Matt with the knowledge that I feel like the gorillas have more knowledge when it comes to um, Texas with, you know, gravity being a uh, rookie for this yes. season. He may not know that, you know, maybe choosing the map would probably be best for them. I mean, honestly, you know, being at a deficit at the deficit that they are right now, like your best bet is really to try and outsmart your the other team, right? I mean, that's, that that goes along with any game that's being played here at the UEL. But being able to truly figure out uh, what needs to happen as far like how how you should operate yeah. is kind of is kind of where you want to be. And it looks like we may have a timeout for the Gorillas. That is not a negative timeout. We will fix that <laughs> here in just a sec, guys. It they used be, all five they, timeouts they, in the first game. That is wild. All five. You so, remember? Hold on. Stop. You remember nine minute timeouts? No, I don't. Let's not go back to that. Let's not go back to that. That let's one of those things that I even remember. Not just nine minute timeouts. Do you remember the first few games of this season and teams just being like two and four minute setup timers? Can I do? And now at the end, I'm like, okay, cool. Most yeah, of y'all got ex- it exactly. And before nine minutes, like I'm like teams, you got to get it together. Mm-hmm. You got to be ready to play. And, uh, you, Texas you, is a harder game, though. but yeah, like, I'm, I'm. This is blank because this entire time that we've been talking, my brain's been going. How would I win a two v two or a two v three situation? And I just remembered a very specific detail. Hey, let hit so away. Hit, for hit people around uh, in the league. Um, we've our rules are different than most competitive leagues, but they're mm-hmm. also a living document they yep. are updated we look at things if things are broken we continue to make sure our rules create the most competitive interesting creative environment one of the big rule changes that has really been enforced going forward now is even if you're playing less than the number of players you have to fill those pcs in you have to put those slots in and so we may see some bots on the side that's also very true yeah the bucks and those bots funny enough might be able to give more you know space what? to the actual that, players. That honestly, it, you know, when I when I first heard of it, I was like, that doesn't really make sense, you know, to put in, you know, to to still have people like load in and things like that. But it actually does kind of make sense um, in the event that these bots actually do move on their own or whatever the case is in this situation. That also means that they can also help you to win games. Yeah, and. We all have played those games, right? You mm-hmm. might get an escort quest NPC where the mm-hmm. NPC is like running into a wall for oh an hour. Oh my gosh. Or you get like the perfect one that's like pathing and looping mm-hmm. and jumping over stuff and really leading. The yeah, those are on the chase. those ones are rare. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest <laughs> with you, but some of the in this genre specifically, some of the dead by daylight bots are menaces. Truly yeah. menaces okay. that will absolutely be like, Oh yeah, this isn't too bad. It's just a dead by daylight bot and the bot's like, I'm just a bot. Okay. okay. Am I? So, I can't wait to see. We are getting lineups in, I believe. Um, it looks like we might have another technical issue that we're just trying to get everybody handled for. But for those at home that are wondering, Kenny and Kevin will be going in along with O to the L as the family side coming out of the Gorillas. And on the flip side of this, obviously, we're going to have Gravity and Pizza Man along with those bots going in as the victims. Mm-hmm. But don't count the bucks out. Don't call. I don't like calling them victims. Let's see if they're survivors first and foremost. Well, they're they're victims in game, not victim in real life. But if you get out, you you're not, well, I guess you're still a victim of the situation. Yep. Thank you. Anyway, you asked me. So now I'm gonna put you on. <laughs> yeah, what 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 you, what do you got? The Bucks. What 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 ex- expectations do you have on the Bucks being able to compete and win in some of these games? I think. Mm-hmm. That the Bucks can win Pokemon, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. Look, and, and the reason I say that is here at the UEL, obviously, like Pokemon and and uh, Yu-Gi-Oh are uh, one one v ones, but they're also heavily coached games. Now, there is the Gorillas do have more support on their side, but I don't think that anyone on the Gorillas plays either Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh. Right. And I'm hoping that maybe 
you know, the there's a difference for, you know, Gravity and Pizza Man. One of one of those two guys plays one of those games. Or Fortnite, maybe? Oh, I want to see Pizza Man. Notably, mm-hmm. Carnage is not in the Gorillas lineup. Many He's people, not. He's people not. put Carnage as one of those top Fortnite players. And we have seen, like, I don't think the Gorillas are bad. But mm-hmm. if Pizza Man is of that level, Pizza Man... It doesn't require a license, okay? You don't got to carry. You just got to build. I'm going to tell you right now, when it comes to Fortnite, he still has young man reactions, all right? I thought it was the stupidest thing. What's that? Fortnite does not require a license. You just need a permit to build. (laughs) Pizza Man got his permit ready to go. (laughs) Building the whole, building every wall, building every ramp. Mm. I do think that, I didn't even think about that. Fortnite is definitely a game you can win two v mm-hmm. three. Oh yeah, you can absolutely, Ooh. and even Rocket League too. Any of those reaction based games, I think, is fully possible uh, for them to be able to take it. And again, it all is rotation dependent as mm-hmm. well. We we act as though, you know, the best players get to play their game every single time. Here at absolutely. UEL, we're looking for those well rounded gamers, those in gamers that can truly master five genres, thirty three games. And compete on them weekly to a top level, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's all about being able to, you know, adapt, right? And that's what the UEL is. That's what the UEL is about. Even And here's the crazy thing. That's even in production, bro. Like, that's in everything that we do. Like, you have to turn, you know, what you have, like, the way the UEL, uh, like, the format for UEL into, like, everyday life. Yeah, You have to think of it like that, right? Like, if I wanted to... Let's say that, you know, as a player yourself and as a coach, you know that, like, now I have to, like, all right, cool. We just played the spider. Now I got two minutes to train my brain to go ahead and switch over to a, you know, a a, a first-person shooter or a third-person shooter or a strategy. Like, you have to – there's so many moving parts when it comes to – when it comes to how the UEL operates that, you know, if you don't have – if you don't have that format and if you don't understand that format, you will never be able to be one of the best gamers in the world. It's one of those scary possibilities. But first and foremost, I noticed we're playing on one of the nighttime maps, which we have the seen too many players. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and select. Yo, yo, yo. All right. Let's uh, see. Go yeah, ahead yeah. and hook them on up there. Yeah, I think something the center of this. That looks very comfortable. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very uh, therapeutic, you know. Where you would go for vacation? Exactly. Perfect. Maybe a Halloween. All right. I will tell you here in a second. All the basements are slightly different, but it does matter where we are. I think this is a family house, which will be interesting to start. So we started in basement storage, and Leatherface, we're watching now. And Leatherface looks to be Kevin? See, I was going to let you make that decision. I'm (laughs) I'm still... The twins are very... They're, they're very good, and I know they play a lot of Dead by Daylight as well. Um, a lot of the X-Ray guys are very good at the game as well. And now looking for an opportunity just to start and maybe get a location. Yeah. You can kind of see maybe what I was mentioning before with Gurns being more of the Leatherface traditionally. Mm-hmm. A little bit of unfamiliarity, but is now starting up his chainsaw to be able to cut down these barriers, open up the basement, and let him... Have a little bit more freedom to move around and find people. I mean, and that, and it did. You can definitely see that he's not really comfortable with playing, you know, this character, or doesn't really know how to play because he's not revving that chainsaw. You're right. So what happens when he does find one of the? Vi- oh, that's a bot. Okay. Uh, one of the. Or one of the victims. pieces. Yeah. But, you know, there's no revving of the chainsaw or anything like that. So. I think that was his name. All right. So, we got a PC that's already out. Uh, it like, looks like they may have already escaped come, the like, basement, which is already a good start to be like, able to get out. Like, now, the like, craziest way that they could win be. this, right, mm-hmm. would be anyone? if two of them managed to get out, one of them ran to the third PC and tried Those to do it. That would be The hilarious. third PC out. This could be a legendary oh, moment. Right. Oh, oh, but one of the players is found here. <laughs> oh, no. Maybe thinking that was a door. That's actually one of the escapes oh, yeah, for Fuse. Wait, no, you have to get that set up for that door to open up. And, and now like we're looking pizza at Pizza Man. Man mm-hmm. manages to find a 
crack that he can slip through and chaining these together to create a lot of space and a lot of distance on the killer is a really good opportunity has to be aware nice job avoiding the bone charms but it looks like leatherface has a read on where he might be i like the decision to kind of slow down and reassess the situation like okay he's not immediately on top of me i just need to figure out where I can go to from here. It, he does this thing where he knows that he was making a lot of noise. He didn't open up any doors. He didn't put himself in a position um, to uh, to make a bunch of noise. And it looks like that there is another family member out there. Ooh, this is always scary. This is always scary. What, what, what? Once they've made enough noise and Grandpa has awakened, that it does open up the ability for other family members to come down to the basement. Mm. And so maybe deciding that, and Johnny's found his footprints, and it looks like we now know the locations of both Gravity as well as Pizza Man. Johnny knows where you are. Did he finally manage to juke him? Actually electing to go for the bot and to get a kill here. That makes sense. Um, but he saw the, yes, he did see the, the footprints, which I think was a really good idea. He knows he's in that area. Might as well get as many points as he can uh, from, from killing the bot. Yeah. Right? And this now means if either Gravity or Pizza Man get caught and die, the game will end. That is two kills already set up and put away for the killer's uh, those flashes of red you're seeing at home, that means that the, a killer or somebody has line of sight on you. They could, they could technically see you. doesn't mean they're looking at you, mm -hmm. but it kind of lets you know, hey, they're in the area and you have to be aware. You notice gravity even smiling there like, okay, uh, where'd he go? Well, oh, wait, he missed me? All right, perfect. Well, Let back to what I was... Anyway, exactly. Let me go ahead and go through here. And looking for an opportunity... Has healing in a bone shard, which means if he gets grappled, he's pretty safe. He has the opportunity to keep himself alive. Needing to find these toolboxes to get out of the basement in general. And using Connie, I'm liking this pick as a, one of the player characters because it gives the opportunity to quickly escape. Now, the points difference is going to be diff difficult, but already has this door open. Now, that makes some heavy noise. You got to throw that door open. And it should tell the killer that somebody is there. I like the patience, though. Not immediately sprinting, not immediately kind of giving up where and what all is happening. That he's out. They know that he's out, but where he is does matter. These crawl spaces already opened up. Looks like had an opportunity to kind of move around and open up the door. Now, he has to get at least this front door, or he can go through the window, uh, open up to be able to get out of the house and start working on one of those yeah, exits. I feel like this person is, or that gravity is, is gravity close to grandpa? Grandpa usually spawns near some of these, uh, one of these two rooms. It's either in the front hall or in that den area nearby where he was. You know, grandpa either waiting, you know, in his chair mm. by the TV or waiting for dinner to get started. <laughs> Uh, and we're back on Pizza Man, who is still, still locked down here in the basement, but doing a good job of using these shadows and staying safe and essentially moving in such a way that he can find the opportunity to maybe escape out of the basement. He has some time. He's hurt, but he's not on one shot or not in danger of one shot. Sees a family member, quickly chooses to say, hey, let's not go that way. We're going to keep on moving our way really, around. Really, really good idea on his part. I like what Pizza Man is doing here. You know, that's definitely showing awareness of his surroundings, being able to um, know when he needs to, like you said before, that he's just being being coached very properly, learning, uh, listening, and that's a lot. That's a lot of what we'll see, you know, tonight. A lot of what he's already learned here at at the league himself. Yes. All right. So we see the cook here. This is O to the L. Looking around. I think he might have caught wind of the pizza that Pizza Man was trying to deliver. But out of stamina. Yeah, you see him right there. Unfortunately, that locks you down. I think this is a good opportunity. You can see Odell seems at least familiar with the basic mechanics moving around here with Cook. Pizza Man's going to have to find a door to be able to get upstairs or get away. You saw these cracks. Cook is also a little bit older of a, of a guy. Can't slide through the cracks like some of the other killers. Still down there? Yeah, he runs out of stamina faster. It makes sense. Down there, O2. A nice job using that crack, and oh, maybe a big chance for Pizza Man. 
Oats the L trying to look for a, a route to cut off Pete's mound, realizing that that wasn't an opportunity, but he's found a ladder and is going to be able to get up here and climb, climb, climb. No eyes up here is good. Oh. It looks like Gravity oh, and Pete's mound may have started to find their way. They're both upstairs and out. And now we got to see if Oats the L is able to figure out exactly where they might be using Cook's ability to hear. Mm, and with... Uh, gravity already running around kind of making some noise oh that was a really good distraction oh my gosh was that the chicken yes so i think baiting out oats the l a little bit no no, oh, no and now gravity has to run he's trying to escape he used trying to buy a little bit of space for pizza man is going to jump back in the well since he probably feels like he has an understanding of the basement and is going to be able to fully reset Right, right. But now Pizza's kind of already stuck up there by himself, but it looks like everybody else is mainly running inside. OTL kind of forgetting that Pizza Man is upstairs. And that's he why him. I have to give a huge compliment to that play. You recognize, like, hey, I'm a little bit more comfortable than Pizza. Let me take my time. But Pizza's health is slowly draining down. He's going to have to find his way out here ooh, shortly. Ooh. Oh, no. He has to stop here, but again, gravity realizing like, hey, maybe I need to take the heat right now. All right, cool. And Peach is moving again. Peach is going to have to find a tool here. Now, he's in a pretty good position to actually go for car battery exit here on the backside of Family House. He's going to need to navigate here, keep going kind of in the direction he is towards the back of the yard, and he should be able to find. There's usually a toolbox or two back there to be able to pop open that gate, turn off the... Oh, I'm talking to Kenny. Battery and go from there. But it looks like the jig is up, possibly for Gravity, stopping him from opening the door. And with two killers on him, he can't be long for this world. And here we see Johnny securing the final kill necessary. Yep, I think that that was it. And that's going to be the end of Texas Chainsaw going on over to the gorillas just some good coordinated play and unfortunately in the numbers showing the situation there where hey if you realize maybe i need to take some of the heat i feel pretty confident in it mm -hmm. but when you have two three killers chasing you you don't have the wiggle room and mm -hmm. that wiggle room matters in a game like this where hey one or two hits is the difference between getting away, managing to survive, and just straight up losing the game. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And um, like I said, I, I really want to go back to, you know, watching the fact that, like, how how your mindset can get so linear when you're when you're focused on chasing someone. So when Pita went upstairs, O to the L followed behind him, went up the, I mean, not the stairs, up the ladder, uh, OTL followed right behind him, came up, they noticed that gravity was already outside. They went to go for the chase. Gravity goes down, uh, drops into that well. And instead of being like, I know that there's still someone up here. I know Pizza Man is up here somewhere. Instead, they all went right on back downstairs. Now, it makes sense for everyone to kind of go downstairs because they want to gang up on that one person. But that area, to me, is already so very big. And he could have, gravity could have still gotten out of there. Pizza Man still had the opportunity to make it out. Fortunately, that's not exactly what happened. So now we have Gravity, who ended up getting caught up, getting uh, jumped on by two of the uh, killers. And now we move on to NHL. 2v3 game, or 2v, it'll be a 2v3, mm -hmm. probably with a bot here. Um, but forfeiting the sports games, I think the Bucks have shown that they're not the strongest in sports so far. We got ourselves a forfeit. <sighs> Not the strongest of sports games, yeah. right? The Buck Bucks are still kind of defining the identity of that team, choosing to maybe elect to move away from it. And F1, this is one of those 1v1s here where you should have a pretty clear opportunity to play and to compete. So we'll go ahead and mark down NHL for the Gorillas. Uh, riveting gameplay there for out of the Gorillas. Haven't seen anybody skate, skate quite like that in the mm -hmm. UBL. But now we're on the F1, which is a very winnable game. Um, as someone that played F1 in the league for the very first time, uh, it is absolutely possible to win. Mm -hmm. um, you might, you know, you're probably going to get some penalties. You're probably going to make some mistakes. But crashing out really does just come down to knowing the controls and knowing how to position yourself 
in the race to stay competitive. Murs, I love him. I think he does a great job. One of my only criticisms in F1 is I think he plays like he wants to win the race and puts himself in positions where he has crashed out before. Yeah. For him here, I would look at you and I would say, hey, I want you to ride to run the race. I want you to show off, do your thing, take this as a victory lap moment, but dial it back maybe to nine from ten. Mm-hmm. You don't need to take these razor sharp lines, turns that could possibly lead to you losing the game. I think that it's worth going for when you need to, but recognizing like today I just need to play a solid game. And he's going up against Pizza Man. And another thing with uh, a lot of because it's, it's not only it's not only Murs who does that. A lot of the end gamers here do that. Um, and there is a little bit of an understanding. You know, it, you're racing against one other end gamer. You're not racing against the NPCs. You're not racing to see who has the better score out of all of you and the NPCs. It's you and the other racer. So even if you do come in that last place, if that other uh, end gamer is try- is doing whatever they can to get in front of the other NPCs, it's so easy to DNF. And not only that, it is extremely easy to get penalties. So... Um, looks like with that being said, we are going to have the standings coming up here in just a little bit for our road to Michigan. And as you guys can already see, we have the QR code for the tickets. You are more than welcome to use that scan that QR code to get yourself some tickets to come up. With grab us. yourself some tickets. Grab your grandma. Grab your mama. Grab your brothers, sisters, cousins. Play the whole, cousins. The whole family. And come on out to Grand Rapids at the DeVos Performance Theater and see us for the finals. You can see all of these games matter. Now, Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it out there because I think it's still fair. This is the Gorillas' last game. They could finish 5-5, and which does put them in a position to try to compete for that uh, third-place spot with the Ravens. Mm -hmm. But in the event that they do lose... That opens up the door for the Bucks to make playoffs, possibly being able to chase the Phantoms mm-hmm. and get that win. I've been loving looking at the conference and having both of you show up because nobody technically was out of playoffs. Unfortunately, we had the end of the bandage yesterday with their final game mm-hmm. uh, against the bots, but nothing is sealed yet, and I can't wait to see how much more the season is going to heat up. Absolutely, and with... Uh, the opportunity to trade between uh, trade players and to try and get yourself set up for the next season, it's coming to an end. Yes. And with that coming to an end, you know, we, I'm sure we're going to see something happen within this next couple of hours so that, you know, they, people can get themselves set up for the playoffs and pursue next season because next season is going to be a wild one. I agree. I think next season, and I, I started talking about this legitimately last season, but moving, but it feels like almost this new era of UEL has been creeping in and slowly mm-hmm. building. And we're cresting that mountain, I think, here, where there is this conversation again, Reaper's Eclipse. Oh, they're going to go back. They're going to take the championship. They're going to be this. But there's so many more teams now. You have the arrival of the X Gods mm-hmm. descending from on high, the change to the Trolls now taking second place, the Ravens surging and doing as the Ravens do, always threatening in that Southern Conference, and this Gorillas lineup that at the start of the season, if you and I talked and we said, hey, you're going to be seeing a Starsless Gorillas team surging at just the right moment mm-hmm. to try to go ahead and win. I'm going to go ahead and let you know right now, Murs is on top. <laughs> Any particular reason? <laughs> because he keeps spinning a stupid camera. But we got uh, Madden up next. Now, I'm already happy. Pizza Man already in the lead. Oh, I thought he was trying to DNF him. Okay, oh, pizza, no. pizza, I need you to slow down just a little bit. That's all right. I did the same thing. Literally did the same thing. It's not a license issue. Okay. Now, the big thing Pizza's got to figure out is that these NPCs are ruthless. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, not only that, with um, they, they, they make position. it. Hand it back over. Who what? ended up taking the position? There? If Murs doesn't hand the spot back over, Pizza taking some aggressive lines, trying to stay in this race. He's not letting Murs get away. No, he's not, but he's already taken a lot of damage. And this game does take into account everything that happens to your car. 
And oh no. He took out another racer there. I think Pizza Man might not be looking to race here. He said, let's play a little bit of Rap Fest <laughs> a little bit early. And hey, you mentioned that you're only racing one in gamer. What happens when we're not even one lap in and two racers are already out of the race? Hey, you know what? Forget what I said. Pizza Man, no, no. Oh, and unfortunately, Pizza Man accidentally takes himself out there, becoming the third racer. <laughs> And I think Murray's working on right, well, the race is over. I could, I could go ahead and uh, <laughs> crash myself. Like I said earlier, um, or like you were saying earlier, you know, with racing, uh, not really racing another, or uh, racing another in gamer, right? Yeah. And, you know, Pizza Man, he didn't listen. He didn't care, bro. He I was, think I'm going to take out everybody in this, and then it's truly going to be. Me and you. And if I think if you have the skill to be able to take and kill each and every single other racer, not kill, wreck their cars. Everyone's <laughs> fine at home. Uh, I think that's great. But, yeah, it is one of those situations where it's kind of terrifying mm -hmm. to have to deal with that. The game is so difficult because the NPCs, you can learn from them, but they also are like, hey, get out of my way. If you're, if you're not going to move it. Lose it. Murs playing his normal lines, doing really well, getting up to the front there. And I think Pizza Man maybe being not as used to some of those like precision race uh racing mechanics where, hey, in something like Need for Speed, a little tap of your control stick will make your car move a little bit. Whereas in this game, going two hundred miles an hour, sometimes you tap your control and the car basically is gonna want to do a three sixty on the track. Yeah. Uh so ultimately I think a good showing, and I still think that if I'm Bobby Yoggins, and you mentioned it for teams just in general, and I'm gonna, I want to start maybe at the bottom of the table. Um, for teams that are lower in the brackets, what trades are there on the field? I think if I'm some of the teams, maybe the Wolves, uh, if I am the, I believe the Phantoms, are you watching maybe these Bucks players if you think they're not making playoffs? Do you think that maybe Gravity or Pizza Man has the opportunity to maybe improve your team going into playoffs to turn that corner, maybe letting you get into the second round, third round, challenge some of these top teams? You should always be looking to make moves. You can't just kind of sit down <coughs> on your laurels. And we are going to be having a 2v2 in Madden with the Twins going up against Gravity and Pizza Man. Now, for... This for Madden again, the Bucks not really being uh, heavy on on sports. Mm -hmm. I and I, I don't see Kevin and Kenny being heavy on sports either. At least for not with Madden. I know. Yeah, I know they play FIFA pretty consistently. I know that they have a. They're, they're strong in the game. They're they're very strong in FIFA. Mm -hmm. I don't know if American football, uh, like you said, is their forte. But I'm gonna give you. I'm, I'm gonna make a point to you. You wanna? You wanna? Okay. People in the chat, I want you. I want to say this right now to anybody at home. I will match your channel point bet if you are willing to bet on the Bucks here. So, my co-caster is uh, is informing me of, of, uh, of <laughs> specific <laughs> ideas, but I'm asking, and I'll say right now, I will match any channel point bets. Uh, over here on the chat, just because I think it's fun. I Ten point blessings, right? Blessings. blessings We're not betting right? anything. We don't bet correct, anything. Correct. Not we here are, at the UEL. We are spreading those blessings here. Thank you for reminding me. I, you know, I forget sometimes that they're called blessings. Mm -hmm. they um, do. But yeah, I'm willing to because I think this is a game that is winnable. Okay, in the situation, Madden a little bit volatile. We saw the snow yesterday come out. Decided that incredibly. Was cool. That was cool. I see what you did there. With, that was cool. That was. I. Did, that was not intentional. Continue. Uh, and so, I I think that this is doable. I think maybe Gravity Pizza Man. Maybe they've been cooking a little bit at home. You never know what different players do have prepared. For different teams. What teams do you think you'll see for Madden? What teams do I want to see, or what teams do I think I'll see? Both. Teams we're going to probably see is I'm going to say the Ravens or the 49ers is going to be okay. One of these two yeah, teams. that's what we've seen almost all season. Uh, and then teams I would love to see. Let's go ahead and go with tried and true. Give me like a Commanders Cowboys game. We did see Dallas yesterday, didn't we? Yeah, Rex loves him for some Cowboys. 
Interesting. But uh, looks like we may have a little bit of have faith in, in the Cowboys. Uh, What's your team? So we've got a timeout. Um, for, it looks like from the Bucks. I think again, some of the sports games, if you're not familiar with them, the controls and the setup is a little bit more intricate. And so yeah. it'll take a little bit of time. I definitely get where you're coming from. Um, I don't think that the Bucks have uh, the strongest setup knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they're the ones that are setting it up, that may be the cause of it. Um, but, you know, they are already burning through a lot of their timeouts. They only get five timeouts, and at least in the first half, and then they have two for the second. But if they're not able to utilize their timeouts properly, I do feel like it'll get to a point where they have to forfeit games because they're not set up properly or they're not set up, you know, within enough time. And I, I that's the unfortunate thing. Like, setups are one of the most underrated part about UEL. Like, just figuring out how to set up games as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. Figuring out, like, how to save clicks, how to just save a little bit of time here and there does end up mattering because I can tell you firsthand, like, Two minute setup timers are no joke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Going from, we'll say just they like going from Madden here. Simply like, all right, cool, Vince. Uh, set up FIFA in two minutes. Got you on five, on five pieces. Who? Huh? I don't know who Vince is. Av, thank oh, okay. you. Like I, I see, see. This is this is the camaraderie that I need. <laughs> if I don't make it home, um, don't worry about it. Okay, uh, cool. No, but Av. Uh, like going from Madden here, four is a road next. And having to set that up in two minutes yeah. on five PCs. Yeah. Becomes incredibly difficult. We have the legend of the three man go dummy. I wanted to ask if the three man go dummy, what does the two man have to be able to do here to find a win? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it might require, like, hey, Madden's not working. Here, sit your controller down right quick and go set up the game. All right, cool. I, I, I can run the play. You'll be all right. Go set up that other game. I'll handle it. Uh, here in this moment, just don't press start. Just don't press start. We got, uh, we got intros. Yo, this kind of sick, actually. What? Why have I never seen that? And Wreckfest coming up mm. next. That's you. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> nah, you never are mind. good. All right. So we end up seeing the Kansas City Chiefs here coming in against the Baltimore Ravens. Um, it does look like. Kenny is going to be the QB, and we're going to find out for the Bucks who they're going to be and who's going to be QB there. Overall, I think it will end up... It, it, this is a good chance from the Gorillas' perspective going into playoffs. You might be able to find maybe a team member or a player that you didn't realize had the fundamental skills to take some of these games. A lot of the games... Looking at it, um, the Twins have a very interesting uh, skill set. And shooters, they're incredible. Pretty much any shooter in the league, they can go up there and compete. But they have experience in some of the fighting games as well. And when you start to get into the uh, UEL, what you learn is that players from different genres that may have never played can find where those skills cross over. Mm -hmm. And so looking at sports games, understanding or having someone, even as a coach, that can kind of explain to you how it generally works. I think fighting game players and uh, have the ability to trying to get feet under the ball there. That's all right. You're going to go ahead and move up. But having the ability to read a defense or read mm. an offense and kind of recognize what your opponent's <laughs> patterns are and what they, uh, how they want to play the game can help you, even if you don't understand the intricacies of uh, football specifically. Mm. And so I think we may see that today just as an opportunity um, for them to step up yeah. and, and take it, another win here. And we have our update here. It does look like the uh, Gorillas are going to be the Ravens and the Bucks are going to be the Chiefs. Uh, pizza Man is QB for the Okay, Bucks. okay, Pizza. Okay, Pizza. And we get an early game coming out of Kenny and Kevin. Pizza Man on the QB Maybe throwing a little bit of chaos in here. Maybe Pete's actually Pizza was on the trolls with a lot of really good former of uh, the X Gods now, mm-hmm. former trolls, uh, with a lot of good sports players. Yeah. Um, and the bandits as well with Rex and mm-hmm. Mad Gen- Genius and a few other sports players as well. So maybe having had a chance to glean and to learn some of these sports games and 
having a surprising level of understanding. I see both of them up on the line here, kind of trusting their defense to maybe make a few uh, plays and opportunities. But a nice QB run here, utilizing the Ravens quarterback's ability to use his legs to get a lot of distance. One thing that I wanted to just go back on what you were saying with, you know, uh, Pizza Man being the person or being the player, the end gamer that has been on, you know, all these teams or these two teams, you know, the, the trolls and also uh, the bandits and then going over to the Bucks. He's had the opportunity to have a lot of that knowledge passed on to him and I'm, I'm sure that he's able to use and utilize that stuff. I've even seen him, you know, working with Titus on, you know, how to, how to get better. He, was, he and Titus is literally sitting up there showing him what he needs to do. And I think that's the benefit of Pizza Man, having someone so young on your team. Being able to so absorb all of that information. Yeah. He's not going to double guess whatever information you're trying to throw at him and mm -hmm. what you're trying to say to him. He is more than likely, and you, every time I've seen him, just been like, cool, press this, and he'll press it. Mm -hmm. All right, every time he jumps, press this. Yep. And just repeat that over and over, and he's able to build up and use that muscle memory to find a lot of success here. Want to see looking through these defensive plays. What are you looking for? What are you looking for, Pizza? What are you hoping for? You're going to have to go ahead and set up a play here. They're both on the line once again, trusting his, uh, you know, uh, linebackers, his uh, safeties to go ahead and find an opportunity. That could be a pick, and it is. And here we go. We asked the question, and Pizza found his opportunity, and that opportunity was all he needed to go ahead and take control of this game. Pizza man shaking his head. I do this. It's just that easy to the people at home i'm looking at you to the believers please 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 recognize pizza man and gravity are here all righty then let's see here now looking at the play here um i'm gonna be joined here by a great great commentator I'm Duke Duke, but I'm here to watch some quality foosball. It's your boy, Third Anarchist. And uh, Pizza Man with the user pick right there in the open flats or the hash lines or wherever you guys want to call it on the field. Tell you about the slant. Uh, sl yeah, slant. My bad. <laughs> but let's see how Pizza Man goes to cook. Once again, like you said, coming from the Trolls, a strong sports team, he might have picked up some tricks. And delay a game to start off the first possession after interception is not a good way to go. Learning and figuring out exactly what plays you want to pick can be a little bit daunting. A lot of different options and maybe just a little lost in the sauce there for a second. But I think he'll pick it up pretty quickly from here. Just pick a play, run it, figure it out from there. Yeah, just, I mean, you just use your pick in a situation where nobody expected anything to happen, much less y'all to be, be in the game besides playing it. So just take your time, readjust yourself, and push forward. Yes, yes, yes. And... It looks like Merz we saw in the background was helping the Twins as well, who kind of pick a defense and showing that they are running a blitz here. Run the play action. Ooh. And Patty Mahomes gets a sack there. Looks like an offensive penalty, so it looks like that ball is going to be moving. Actually, no. Offensive yeah, yeah, pass interference. That's wild. We don't really see offensive pass interference called too, too often here in the league. It ends up, unfortunately, being another penalty, a first and 25 situation. It's Patty Mahomes, baby. There's a will, there's a way, and he'll find it. All right, so let's see what he is able to do here. Probably going to the air. I think a run would be a little bit surprising. Throws it into a lot of coverage. Ooh. Luckily, doesn't get picked off. I like Pizza's idea, though. He's finding these angles, these opportunities, and he's willing to go for it all. Yeah, another slant route. And uh, for you guys who actually don't know, we have third anarchist help uh, here to guest commentate for this game. Everyone. I'm battling back from number 10 commentator. I'll make my way back up. <laughs> and right here, we also just saw Pizza Man. Again, that's a little bit of those nerves, I think, now. Didn't let his feet get set to be able to get that pass off more successfully. Again, looking for a quick route, feeling that pressure of the Ravens defense. The gorilla's playing the Ravens. 
Kid, why do we have Ravens with Ravens and not the Ravens playing the Ravens, but the Gorillas playing the Ravens? Well, if there's an NFL team named the Gorillas, that would be totally... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that almost happened. If that had happened, I would have been like, yo, give everybody give Pizza Man his flowers. Everybody <laughs> give Pizza Man his flowers immediately. I was wrong. I was wrong. And here's the thing. That was a pass attempt to Travis Kelsey, which in situations like this where you need big yardage or or get rid of the ball, Travis Kelsey is your guy and just could not hold on to it. Now, Pizza Man is my goat. He's four going for, He's going on fourth and 25. We play four downs around here, baby. <laughs> Give us some time. Let the play develop. Scoop. Oh, gets it. Actually a great pass, but unfortunately the previous penalties making it difficult for him to get the first down in that situation. That's not him. It was Pizza Man. Oh, my gosh. Eleventh, you're eleventh now. You're eleventh now. Oh, I keep moving down. That's but that bodes really well. Pizza Man managed to get a pick here before, and I think if the Twins aren't careful, he could do it again. And it sh- to me, it shows that he's starting to get warmed up. He's starting to maybe figure out. They had a few nerves to begin with. Passes it over. Steps up in the pocket. Nice catch. That floated a little bit. That scared me for a second. But yeah. again, I was I was legitimately looking. I was like, if if. Pizza Man is able to get comfortable, same with gravity. If they watch some of these passes, I think they have the opportunity to get another pick. That's if the Gorillas choose to put the ball back in the air because it looks like they're considering a few different run plays, maybe not wanting to risk another one of those picks like we saw earlier. They might go for a read option just to see how they feel off the snap, but once again, the Ravens are a strong power running team with Lamar complimenting with short passes and slants and out routes, so we could see how they approach the playbook with Murray's backing them up. All right, let's see. Yo, I love the fact that they are playing such good defense from both Gravity and Pizza. At least they're staying on trying their best to stay on top of the ball. Yes, and that you know? is immensely, immensely important. Keeping that pressure up, funny enough, like forcing your opponent to make mistakes does end up mattering and, and ultimately can be the decision maker of a game. Nice spin move attempt there. Wasn't able to gain many yards. It's a third and nine now. I think the Gorillas might have found some success. Does look like they want to put the ball in the air. Maybe going to do some audible shift to play around yeah. as well uh, once we get out onto the field. That's the end of the first quarter. Let's see what happens. See the Twins can finally convert this drive to a good seven. I, I love the fact that the Twins are on the gorillas because given the opportunity to play together especially in something like madden or sports game a lot of the 2v2 is having them and just to see just how well they they work together you know um you know as brothers and people that you know, they don't each other all their lives you know you being did. able to see that synergy between them hopefully they can you know really really work together i mean with so many pairs of twins in the league being the actual blood twins you actually have to be a good pair of twins I just realized what you said. <laughs> so many twins in the league. What? You got Solo and um, Silver. <laughs> Solo and Silver? Yeah. <laughs> All right. And passes it right on off. Oh, I told you. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. go, go. 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 Come on. Come on. Ooh. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Man, I should have took that yards. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's a child prodigy. It's not deliveries the short order. He's in here, coconut. <laughs> a great play coming out of both players on the bucks here, finding their opportunities to take the ball away and put themselves in the driver's seat before the end of the first half. That's wild, bro. I am enjoying this immensely. Patty Mahomes drops back, steps up. Ooh, no, I, I love the confidence there. Travis <laughs> Kelsey just gets away with that for free. <laughs> that is Travis Kelsey. I love the confidence to just say, cool. My option is still Travis Kelsey right here on the side. I'm just going to throw it full speed. He'll catch it and we'll handle it. Pizza Man, again, had the time there to go through all of his options. <laughs> he let the play develop and was like, you know, I like seeing that decision making, even about, even showing that like he has paid attention when people talk to him about Madden. 
It's something that's really small that a lot of people will look at some of these plays, see that red route, and be like, cool, so I just throw the ball to this person. Yeah. Right? Got to gotta let, gotta, gotta let things marinate. You got to let players get to the end of the route, see how the fit. Oh, but he wants it all. Oh. No. Pizza Man is just going for the highlight reel this week. <laughs> and I am here for it. By the way, this just in Pizza Man has not played Madden since he was like six. <laughs> oh, so last year? That's crazy. <laughs> you will not do my goat like that. Hey, yo, Pizza Man, score right now just to show Please, AV. Please, shut me up. Where's he going? Where's he going? Whoa! Oh! I like that. I like that. I like that. Let's go, Pizza Man. Look at him. He's unamused. He's like, I should be doing this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing now. Again, good job, Gravity. The two teammates still finding and having opportunities to have fun here. But that is, this play is a C. If he... I, uh, right there, just a little bit quick. I like the idea. He's willing to challenge the Twins' defense to say, you don't know how to cover people well enough. I can get these... Really risky plays in and mm -hmm. still managed to get. Pizza Man showing his mastery of the slant here, and I'm loving it. <laughs> Your favorite route. The only route. Across oh, the body. Oh, oh it's so a, close. If, if, if one of the twins had actually switched, they had a chance to actually turn around and user pick that. So fortunately for them, that was still just the uh, computer on that defender. That was... But I love Pizza Man constantly threatening these plays downfield. He's not just going for the safe play every single time, but I think that ball's going right to There's the first no down. Way. He's Valdez Scantlin. MVS, baby. <laughs> Pay him. Bro. What you mean? Pizza, I told here's you. The thing, here's the thing. Pizza goes against everything that I ever talk about when I talk about Madden. This is like, oh, yeah. As you get down the field, do short. Do short uh, nah. Pizza is like, hey, yo, nah. nah. This is why I, I love Pizza Man. Manages to get the ball away there as well, avoiding the sack. I, I This is my thing. Pizza Man is playing the Madden we all played when we were his age. And that's what I love about it. He is, it's it's not about this, oh, yes, we'll be incredibly calculated and I'm going to do this. Yo, snap the, the ball, snap the ball, snap the ball, snap the ball. Snap the ball. Oh, that would have been encroachment. That would have gotten him a free five yards, but. But he's just hitting these oh, plays across the field. Don't matter. Now, the thing they have to be aware of is the time left on the clock. There are only 30 seconds. So either gonna, they're going to either need to kick a field goal here or get this playoff and score. And there goes a runoff. Let's see. Come on, Pizza Man. You got to convert this. Well, they'll be getting the ball back at the beginning of the first half. Yeah, but a touchdown half. would be immensely oh, helpful. Oh, no, sir. Incomplete pass. You got nine more seconds. <laughs> Pizza Man. <laughs> Now, the scary part about that is it looks like the twins are starting to read Pete's a little bit because yeah. that was a switch sent. Nah, I want to take one of these. I want to take one of these. All right, let's see. You can't let this play develop for too long. You got to give it up or get it out. Oh, no! let's time out, time out, time out, time out. Somebody call timeout. Time out. Time out. Pizza man. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. All right, so at home and to the rest of the Bucks players, uh, timeouts, use them a little more free. That's that's the only criticism I can give you right now. Yeah. I mean, he's out here slinging it. So, like, I ain't mad at him, but, like, a timeout right there guarantees at least three points. Yeah. And that is huge, especially the way he's been playing. They've been playing defense. Three points almost guarantees the match. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was not expecting this today. How nah, about y'all? Honestly. I was not. Honestly, well, not. this is both exciting, and I'm just looking. I'm like, he's finding some of these passes that I think there are plenty of Madden players in the league. They'd be like, no, nah, I, I wouldn't take that pass. Mm -hmm. But Pizza Because they ain't built like the GOAT. There's mm -hmm. two GOATs in this league, Billy and Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that is too funny. It's not delivery. It's not DiGiorno. It's pizza, man. It's, it's pizza. Go. Man. Here we go, kicking off. The ball going back to Kansas City. And I think this is also really beneficial because it feels like every play and every opportunity, pizza's getting a little bit more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it also feels like uh, G. Rabbit is finding his spot with how Pizza Man's running the offense. Bringing it back. Are we going to see the run back? Ooh, that that founds was, the edge. That was an interesting run pass. It did have blockers to take up that left hash line, but 
Hey, Pizza Man's better at Madden than me, so I'm going to let him cook. <laughs> let's see. All right. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. It looks like the Ravens are just now defaulting. They're saying that Pizza Man. They're packing the box now. Let's see if those uh, defenders back up. You oh, Pizza it. Man, don't go too far back. Yo! What do you mean? Don't go too far back. Whoa! Whoa! Up the field, up the field. Oh, oh, oh too much my lateral. gosh, bro. Too much lateral movement, Pizza Man, but great play. I also just love this. Can I just say how much I enjoy this? Yo, he, Pizza <laughs> Man is finding openings that no one else will find, bro. He's got the Mengekio Sharingan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. He almost got away with it. He almost got away with that play action pass. Uh, one thing I would like to see from Pizza Man is Patrick, Patrick Mahomes is known for having good legs. Not the greatest legs in the league as a quarterback when it comes to running. <laughs> hey, there's our man uh, Global back there getting down, even though his team's kind of getting pressured and Madden. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> always a good time here in the arena. Always a good time here in the arena. Middle of the field. I don't know if you that contested. Oh. There's no way that, that wasn't a penalty. You know what? You know what? I'm not going not to say nothing. Stopping was, at the top of the route. There's incidental contact. I can see why a flag wasn't thrown. My man was running into me. I couldn't move. All right. Let's see here. He's going for B again. Oh, no. Hey. Hey, pizza. Pizza finding these spots in the middle of the field, finding the gaps in the defense. But, hey, we play four downs around here, baby. <laughs> Y'all saying, no, punt the ball. Now I'm saying, I'm going for a touchdown. Let's get it, pizza. <laughs> it's global. <laughs> Somebody get him from the camera. <laughs> Flip the dreads. <laughs> <laughs> Truly a vibe. <laughs> I'm trying to tell people at home, please come on down. If you are near yeah, yeah, He just found out we could see him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Pizza Man, why? No, I, I actually really respect it. This is some growth knowing to keep punted all the way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, we'll take it back to the, we'll take it out to the, was it the 25, I believe? Uh, the 20, the 20, right? 20. Yeah, over there on the right-hand side, we can, you can see. This is. I can't read. You are good. Remember, please, everybody at home, to have your, your phones on hand. We have merch there. You can see the lovely Gorillas player, Carnage, there uh, right here. for merch. But he's modeling. Ooh. Nice catch and run. That was sketchy as heck, though. Okay, the Twins may be learning a little bit from these quick plays from Pizza. You know, you know, run the quick plays. Don't let anything develop too much. Don't let them kind of figure out what's going on. So the on. Twins are trying to rob the Pizza Man. They're like, yo, we see what we're doing. We like that. We need that. <laughs> but a good play to get a first down. I'm interested to see how they develop because they haven't had a chance to, in almost now, what, a full quarter? Mm -hmm. I mean, they've had chances. They're just giving them away. Uh, sure. But Pizza got the drive at the end, and now this is their first drive that we've seen in a while. A nice run play that doesn't go anywhere but one yard forward. Mm. Disgusting. All right, what we what we, what we going for? I, I think he took Hitchcock. I think we're going with Hitchcock. I don't think he's running. I think ball. the option read was working for them a lot better in the first two quarters. It was just converting on those longer plays or some of those questionable passes. So, excuse me. There we go. Nice pass. And that puts him seven yards up. So, third and two. Yes, so yes, yes. Ten seconds left in the third. So, do you do you just run the ball here even though you've been getting stopped? Or are you willing to put the ball back in the air after these last few it kind of depends how you feel when you get to uh, as you get into it because it's been back and forth with some of the passing and that so you can take the risk for the quick out route or slant or maybe something a little bit further down the field for a quick release. The running hasn't been the worst. There's just been some bad <coughs> options off the handoff that instead of bouncing towards the middle or following some of the defenders a little bit better. So let's see how they approach it. Three in the backfield. Short pass. And get smoked for a loss and of two. And a fourth and four. Now, the question is, is Merz, we see there back in, in the back on a coach, them saying, like, hey, this might be worth going for it. And it does look like they're going to take we the attempt here. Down to football around here boys. I'm going to expect this quick route. Seeing as they switched off the running back, I think they're going to go. Oh, oh, going to let's go. go, go, go. Straight go. down, straight, ah, straight, ah, straight, ah, straight, ah. straight, 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 straight. I asked no, you're not winning. catching them, bro. You're not catching them. Let's go. Pizza Let's pick. Let's go. The pizza pick of the day, baby. It's delicious. Hold that. 
Uh -oh. Uh oh no! No 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 not like this, not like this. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Please, that doesn't affect the game. That doesn't affect the game. It was, it was the touchdown. Everything was happening in the background. The play was over. Let's see. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Can we get back in the game? Yo. Game Master Hollywood <laughs> looking at the camera. Yo, this has literally been the best game this weekend. <laughs> Got Global back in the back again, bro. <laughs> oh, man. We got so many clips. It's too late, Global. It's too late. <laughs> I think he's just committing to it. Uh, we will see. Yeah, that. I think they're still going to go. I, still, I think they're still playing. I playing think because it happened immediately, at, it didn't affect play in any way, to your point, AV. Oh, it, they're it. going for two. Pizza Man choosing violence. Wait, Pizza, please don't run. This is not the time to run. Pizza, please. Run it, Pizza. Prove everybody wrong. Never mind. <laughs> Pizza man said, and when I leave, come together like butt cheeks. This is my game, dog. Oh my god! I just got up from my seat, bro. Pizza man leading got... the Bucks up 8-0 against the. Mom, mom, I'm why I'm witnessing a murder. Help! And to those at home, think. Billy the Goat managed to win yesterday, but I think Pizza Man is using this game as a chance. To say, don't don't do that against me. Oh man. There's a new goat in town. New goat. He's been here. Self rising dough, baby. Oh Fresh man. Rising tomatoes. dough. <clears throat> Look at the what the <laughs> hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey. Are completely tilted. At the top <laughs> right of your screen, the advantage meter is all the way to Kansas City. <laughs> The Ravens are done, son. <laughs> and I need people at home understand, in case you are worried and don't understand, they have two minutes to score and make a two-point conversion. <clears throat> the Ravens are so cooked bro, and confused. Bro. It's like Floyd it's a run play. reading I a book. <laughs> Everything's going everywhere. Nothing's right. Oh, the spin man. Oh, my God. Who is he spinning from? Pizza Man, what do you mean? Drew? <laughs> Drew? Whew. What a game. This is game four. I'm trying to. <laughs> people came in here today thinking, like, oh, like, yeah, okay. Two. The Bucks brought <laughs> what, the two. What is wrong with their their lines? Why are they all like. Because of the advantage. So the way this the game has a system where as you're doing better, you see at the top above both sides, yeah. you can build momentum just like in real life. Fans oh, start it. to cheer, mm -hmm. fans start to be loud, the stadium, all that pressure gets to you. And. <laughs> I my is like nah, bro, nah. <laughs> like let me pull <laughs> it. <laughs> this might be the best game of Madden all season. Oh, 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 the oh. oh my God, what is happening today, bro? I don't know. I do not know. But what I do know is Pete Savannah single-handedly led the Bucks to an 8-0 lead, and now the Twins are just kind of figuring it out. And I'm Whatever being, it is. being honest, if the Twins don't use their timeouts or don't get out of bounds, they have three plays left in the entire game. They have used one of their timeouts, as I'm looking at the top. So I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't, 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 don't even worry about it. You got to remember what button you pressed. You got to remember what button you pressed, buddy. Nah. And I, I want to give the Gorillas some credit. Pizza Man Why? on Sorry. three of their four drives has picked off the ball, and they're still <laughs> putting it in the air. <laughs> that is resilience first. And A nice job breaking up the play. I mean, there's not much to break up, but he was aiming at his helmet. <laughs> I do want to highlight, they did throw it. If you didn't see the stat there, Jackson does have three interceptions. I would not keep throwing the ball. <laughs> nah, man, we got this. Just need one pass. Just one completed pass for all. Uh, I, I'm try I was trying to figure out, like, what their lines remind me of, and the only thing I could think of is from Courage the Cowardly Dog. Return the oh! 
Too many players got involved in that. They both, the wanted it. they both wanted it. They both wanted it. Return the slab. Lay his arms and just like, <laughs> what's your offer? <laughs> Oh goodness! But again, oh, no. oh, let's, go. let's go! Run it! Run it! They're not gonna catch it! They're not gonna catch it! You got it! Got it! Oof, oof, oof. Damn! Oof. Pizza man! Pizza man! Pizza man! In case you thought the first one was a fluke, let them know. <laughs> Murs, talking about you want to lob the ball there. You don't want to bullet it. Don't don't coach him no more, Murs. It's okay. Game's over. No, I think this is this is a great a uh, great game for film. You you go back yeah, and look absolutely. at this game. So at this point, I realized you didn't know what the hell you were doing. What you doing with that control in your hand? Oh, there's a flag Yo. on the play. There's a flag. <laughs> if, if that worked, there's a flag on the play. <laughs> they get they get another opportunity. Offsides except, on the Ravens. Except, except somebody tell them to press A. Somebody tell them to press A. 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 Come on. Press A. Come on. Hey, press press A. I think that was the A button. Okay. There yep, we go. There we go. Hold on. Pizza Man is just going. I, I love it. I love it. This I love is it. Is insane. All right. Is he actually going for it this time or another one of the fakes? He said, I did it once. I did it twice. He did it. Oh, my God. I, no! right there. I saw the vision. You fat man. You fat. Fat man, oh, you failed man. us, you fat man. If pizza plays Madden the way it was meant to be played. The way it was meant to be played. And here we go. Can we maybe see a run back on the kickoff? No, nah, they're swarming. Not with, the, not with the wall of pizza in the way. No, <laughs> the wall of pizza. <clears throat> I, I'm spent. I don't know what they're using anymore. This is great. This is just great. I want to highlight, by the way, Pizza had, like, two good uh, field goal attempts. He probably would have made both of those fakes if he'd actually kicked the field goal. Don't Yo. do it. Oh, my. Stop doing long passes on Pizza, bro. Just stop. <laughs> just stop. Yo, and this... gravity, gravity is the perfect teammate. Holding Pizza down in these He moments. really is. He's just staying on the line, making, this, making the QB pressure, and Pizza Man's just like, yo, this is no fly zone. This is... A. I love they keep bringing up the play. <laughs> Ooh, nice hit. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like they keep bringing up the play, being like, all right, cool. So, so what what's the play that's starting? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Go in that general direction. Uh, <laughs> yeah, buddy. The line's still the lines are still moving. All right, let's see. Oh! He said one more for the road. Dog, there's the no road. way. There's no way. Yo, pizza man. Look at him. Yo, <laughs> look at him. he's to look the back. Him. He's chilling, bro. <laughs> Them young man reactions. That's those. Is that young man got so much life in front of him, but he used that future sight. He knows where his <laughs> life is going. Please tell me it's another fake. Please tell me it's another fake. <laughs> oh, he. Why? 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 Him, you better catch him. No. Oh. Oh. He set his feet once uh. again. Merz, you good? You good, Merz? Merz is so <laughs> unentertained, it's insane. <laughs> oh, and I want to highlight, I told y'all in the chat to put your points on the bucks. I told you. Hey, I, hey, I heard you say you matching, so I put in some points. So, you know, shout out to my boy Pizza Man putting some money back in my pocket. Get him. Mm. Oh, boy. Sheesh. I mean, this is a perfect game for me to guest commentate on. How about what y'all think? This is this is great. I have a headache. Yeah, emotional roller coaster. I'm out of dopamine. I'm done for today. <laughs> <laughs> great job though by the Bucks finding a 20 and 0 win. I mean, it's possible. They, they, they can't score. Win probably not. Win uh, score onside kicks. Onside kick. Just turn the sleep off. No, no. <laughs> win onside kick. <laughs> Kick it. Here we go. Getting 15 <laughs> seconds left. We're probably going to let this last play clock run out. And uh, Bucks are going to take Madden in uh, overly convincing fashion. A dominant fashion. 20 0.
Wow. And I hear it from the floor. That is a Bucks win. I want to thank Third Anarchist for joining us for a riveting game of Madden. Glad to be here, boys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to be honest. I, I am actually out of breath. Because, like, initially I was like, okay, like, we'll see. And he kept doing – he he kept finding each one of the routes that he needed. Pizza Man knows nothing about football. And? he No, but when, where, where I'm going with that is he's – and they still won. Yeah. He was just like, hey, y'all, I'm going to run back. I'm going to pass the ball. You do the rest. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, the ball's in the air. Let me go grab it. Oh, yeah. All you got to do is get your hands on the ball and run it into the end zone. That's all that, That's all football is. It's not complicated. You out here, everybody, oh, yes. Yeah, so if I run a slant route, but they pull the defender on it. No. Just catch the ball. Offensive deep. Just catch the ball. What Defense wins championships. Really wonderful game. But now. We are on to Wreckfest. And this is another 50-50 game. Mm -hmm. What does Pizza have more experience than anybody else? Right now, current experience than anybody else. Uh, being yeah. the best Madden player in the league. Not just that. <laughs> he rides school buses more hey! than anybody else in the league. Yeah, that's right. He knows how to wreck them. Actually... Couches. Let him hop on the couches, bro. Yeah, I'm I'm for it. Let him hop. One hundred twenty percent. I'm for it. The couches. <laughs> Once again, everybody at home, I'm going all in to y'all at home as well. We're gonna put points down on the Bucks. I need y'all to do it with me. This has actually become an incredibly entertaining game. I'm oh, not yeah. even kidding. Oh, like, yeah. It, it's funny because people are like, oh, like it wasn't entertaining before. I'm like, no, but like I think everyone this last few weeks we've had records broken consistently. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we were all kind of holding our breath here, right? Mm -hmm. To say, like, oh, well, how is this game gonna play out? But them winning Madden, especially when the Bucks as a team haven't been the most proactive team in terms of playing sports games. Yes. I think <clears throat> it, it speaks and it really this is the type of thing you saw both. Gravity and Pizza Man laughing, having fun during that game, and maybe coming into a day where they thought, oh, man, we're 2v5, how are we going to be able to do this? Mm -hmm. These are the games that be like, wait, 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 I can do this. Wait. wait. This is the the moments of the three-man go dummy, again, the two-man, this is where that myth will start to appear. This is a two-point game. It's anybody's game. And with an hour down, I'm saying right now, if an, with an hour gone on this game, if in the next three hours the right games roll and they're able to perform like that, there isn't a reason that the Bucks can't win this. Yeah, no, I definitely, <clears throat> I definitely agree with you there. I do feel as though when it comes to uh, their their mental when they came into this game, like we like we talked about earlier, they don't have they don't have that leadership yeah. right now, right? Like Pizza Man and, and Gravity are their own leaders in themselves. So, <clears throat> no fear. No Baba Yagans. Um, and it, that's re that's really the staple of the team right there as of right now. So far yeah. as what we've seen. So uh, and also, you know, we haven't seen Sparrow as well. In a little bit. Yeah, we haven't seen. Him so it just it goes to show that they already probably came into this game. No, they know that they they they, they may not win um, the game in itself. But, hey, we're still going to try our best. And that to me is the important thing because you have another season coming up and we're searching over here to wreck fest. Mm hmm. I see a few. <laughs> Yo, we already in there. Pizza already being hit. Yeah, but Pizza just turned around and said, okay. Oh, bro. no. Okay, keep hitting me, bro. Why do you think it matters? Now, I don't think Pizza knows, Pizza Man knows to reset. Ah, he. I don't think he knows how to reset. Um, That's fine. He's taking some damage, but true. Okay. <laughs> okay, I get y'all not happy about Madden, but leave the man alone, bro. Uh, pizza going in the wrong direction. Nah, I think he just figured out how to get the reset. <clears throat> but now in front of him lies the world of gorillas. He dodges one, says, you got me at the start. You better do it again. And blue team is currently up only by two points, though. So this is very winnable. 
Nice job by Pizza. He takes a lot of damage. Gearbox's damage isn't going to be able to really move. And it might just end up going out here. Gravity stepping up to help his teammate. You love to see it. Giving him some space to maybe start moving once again down the track. Global looks like he's taking out. <laughs> laughing, having fun at this point. Maybe going to go set up some Guilty Gear. So this is still in a winnable situation. All right. <clears throat> And let's see where we going. What I think is crazy about this is the fact that both Pizza and Gravity are still in this game. Oh no, being hundred percent like five on two buses, you would think they would absolutely be. can just throw bodies at you, and you just can't do anything. About right? It. No, that's fine. But like the fact of the matter is that they still like this game hasn't ended yet. Yeah. You know, Pizza Man again, not really knowing how to reset, or not maybe not knowing how to reset, which is fine. You know, he gets hit by multiple buses, but then is still able to pull out and he's out of here. Sorry. No, not don't use him to kill his teammate. No, and we fun. got a double kill. No Halo pushing Pizza Man into his teammate, ending the game there, giving a W on over two. What's that play this in? The gorilla. I'm gonna kill him. You gonna what? Not nothing. It was nothing. Anyway, production <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but here we go. First fighting game of the day. Now it, this with uh, Guilty Gear being okay. Yeah, Guilty Gear being the next game up. Three v three. As you know, it was gonna be three v two. Again, with Pizza, I know that we're going to see uh, Faust. Yep. Right? And, you know, Pizza, again, being being that end gamer, being able to adapt, being able to utilize all of the all of the coaching that he's learned, you know, from, from the past, from other teams, I do feel like at this point he does have a little bit of a fighting chance. Um, and Gravity, last time we saw him, was actually uh, – shows that he's put some time in Guilty yeah. Gear's gotten extremely – uh, far on the scale of like where he started. I've, I've seen him really grow as a player um, in something like Guilty Gear. And I think, yeah, you have to go over against Global. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to look at Global and I'm going to be honest, Global, don't get a big head, brother. Don't don't come out here and be like, today's the day that I'm going to bring out my Milia and you get too touched. Well, th that's the thing. I don't think that, you know, and I would hope that that wouldn't be the case uh, for for Global um, in this in this certain scenario, like <clears throat> that's one thing that I that I dread about, like a lot of a lot of players, not necessarily like in gamers, but people who are just who get a little too cocky when it comes to, hey, I'm about to come in here and I'm a sweep. I'm going to play with a character that I typically don't play or either, you know, the character that's not really optimal. And for of all the players for that to be global is also huge because in their last few games, <laughs> global has had incredible clutch situations oh, yeah. to put his team over the edge. Finding these wins and finding these opportunities where it's like, oh, well, I'm dead. And then managing to come back and keep his team in the game. Mm -hmm. But again, the fighting game player, I always say this and I talk to, to players in the league about it. Every fighting game player has the urge to show sauce. To oh, yeah. Show oh, yeah. the sickest combo to have it looking amazing. And sometimes the response is like, please don't. Please, please. Yeah, just. bro. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't I don't need to see a YouTube video. If I wanted to do that, I go on YouTube and watch it myself. Right? I don't need to see a YouTube combo. All I right. First, to I'm, I'm to people at home. Uh-oh. To people, people, people at home. Does Global Play I mean, I, Global Play Sin. Like, I know Global's going to have dabbled and played Sin. And Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel coming up next. Super excited to see that as well. But the scalpel starts... And it looks like Global just decided, well, if he doesn't get to play the game, I can't throw the game. Playing a very strong Sin Keys. He really is. And Pizza Man doing the thing that he normally does. Uh, again, I feel like Pizza is really good um, in these situations against players who don't have a lot of knowledge in fighting games. And Global able to take that life. Um, Pizza Man, in my opinion, is it can definitely be a gatekeeper for a lot of the fighting games, uh, especially with the knowledge that he has. But Global able to just dominate here. Pizza Man not really knowing what to do, how to handle the pressure. And we see that now uh, because 
Pisa is so used to being on the offensive, he doesn't know how to defend. Yes, and this is one of those things that, again, speaking the global as a, as a player and to his skills that he's shown since last season, he has always been a player that I think a lot of people last season underestimated just how good he was, especially in the fighting and sports games. Uh, and this time, he's been able to show out this season to really show how good he w is and what he wants to be able to present. And this is a situation where he is just straight up knowledge checking. Mm -hmm. Each and every single one of the Gorillas players. And we get the new character. First time Ab is going to be seen on screen. If there was someone that was going to do it, I knew it was going to be Global. So for you guys who don't know, it does look like uh, Global, uh, the Gorillas are going to be player one and the Bucks are going to be player two. Yes, and because uh, he did win that, still has lives, he's able to switch characters. This is the newest character that just recently came out. It's a very feast or famine character right now. Uh, she's in her normal mode and what Ab, uh, Abba does now when she activates she basically becomes the best character in the game She's a terrifying force that can be very belligerent, but otherwise She's really slow. She's a lot easier to deal with and control and actually in the Giovanna matchup I feel like Gio has a pretty good time here being able to fight, but he goes back into his jealousy rage mode outside of that I want you guys to see what I'm seeing here even though that gravity doesn't play this game very often. Gravity is actually keeping up with this Giovanna. Regardless of if he's losing or not, he knew when to burst. Yeah, I've been saying every time I watch Gravity, I can tell he's been putting more time in and getting better. And I think he was even determining there that, hey, when when the key looks the way that it does right now, I have the speed opportunity to get in, to run my pressure, to take my opportunities, and is learning where to block. But fighting a new character for the first time, especially one that just came out, can be difficult. And you can see the damage that can come out of the character once you get started. Nice job bursting, getting him off, and resetting back to neutral. Trying to find an opportunity there, but Global looking for the his first sweep of the day showing off two different characters there in case you didn't know he has a sin and an abba ready to go saw some great gameplay uh i'm happy i'm happy bro I'm, I'm honestly this has been uh even though we've only seen what six seven oh six games so far i really think that this has really shown um even though the the bucks are at this deficit there's still an opportunity for them to win games, yes. right? I think that really, really helped them out here. And they have a really good attitude towards, you know, this match altogether. It's not like they're just like, oh, screw it. Like, I don't want to play anymore. Like, they're still playing these games like they want to win. And I really have so much respect for both Gravity and Pizza for being the two that came out. We saw this last season with the Wolves, you know, or with the Wolf, with TOG. Yes. With, uh, and, and not only that, with... Uh, True Hunter as well, right? It was just those two. True Hunter wasn't able to make some of the games. It was just TOG. And so, like, for you to be able to put that type of commitment towards the team and still sit here and, you know, get beaten all of these games says a lot. These two, you know, players on the Bucks are so, are, in my opinion, are truly committed to coming here playing these games even though they're not going to be in the playoffs that doesn't matter it i it just shows you know they are willing to take those extra steps to become in gamers and i think what's important is like they at this point going forward the these two have now been like look i played a game 2v5 okay i've won games mm -hmm. 2v5 mm -hmm. going forward going into next season i only have room to grow and mm -hmm. to get better and pizza man has now proven that it's not just like, okay, well, like, oh, people are coaching him. He won Madden working with Gravity, and, like, they didn't have, like, a sports game player all over their ear telling him what to do. No. He was figuring out it as he goes. Something like Yu-Gi-Oh! It's not super complicated. If you have the idea of how the game works, you can find those moments to jump in and to take some victories. I'm actually interested to see what both of these teams play, what decks they go ahead and run, because I know the <clears throat> Bucks have been cooking up something. Oh, yeah. But I want to see... And a forfeit from the Gorillas. No Yu-Gi-Oh! will be played today. Maybe worried about what the... what We saw this actually, funny enough, come out of Eclipse a week or two ago where they also forfeited Yu-Gi-Oh! against 
the Bucks maybe recognizing just the caliber of player and the knowledge they have on that team and immediately going in to Forza as the next game on the list. Yep, Forza, a 5v5 in this situation, in this scenario, it's going to be a 5v2. Um, so I'm really, really interested just to see how, you know, what they'll do here. Um, I do believe that obviously we're going to have global, I think, I think we're gonna have global figure and um, x-ray kevin going in with this for this and so oh wait no all everybody of every, all of them yeah. tripping I yeah everybody tripping. in the building everybody in the building everybody everybody playing yeah four would be would be mad really really interesting uh because i think well if they have to have all those cars set up and the pc set up we i'm sorry you you it, here's the thing and this is just this is just what where my where my mindset is, right? We've we've given Pizza Pizza Man his flowers. Pizza yeah. Man has been doing his thing. He's he's done his thing before, you know, as an in gamer. But I I really at this point want to highlight, you know, Gravity. Gravity came into this. Uh, this is his first season. He's a, he's a rookie. He has improved so much from the time that he showed up till now. Now, it's been a very very tough season season for the bucks but gravity has shown so much more improvement um, especially with fighters he doesn't yeah. play fighting games he when i remember talking to him in the combine and then during the draft i remember him specifically saying like i didn't say and show everything i can do maybe not wanting to try to oversell himself like yeah i'm a godlike gamer but has come in has worked hard has been willing to just say cool set me down explain to me we can figure it out i'm willing to put in the time and the effort to get better. And yeah, fighting games are that. When he first came in, he's like, yeah, I haven't really played Guilty Gear, but it seems fun. And I literally can tell you, Global had this, well, like, okay, hold on. I can't just swing here. I have to like think about what I'm doing. And it is incredibly impressive. He is playing exceptionally well. And if I am the Bucks, I'm looking at these two like, okay, these two, throw in fear as well and we start to have that core that three-man core that a lot of teams are looking for to start to build around and to figure out okay cool where do we need to strengthen these other areas so that maybe these players can flourish to the best of their ability yeah no i i definitely get exactly where you're coming from there and i mean it's not to say that i don't have anything to say about the gorillas but the gorillas i we've seen you know these these end gamers here before a lot of what this storyline is is pushing towards is again the uh, towards the bucks for me right so i like highlighting the bucks because the bucks have literally been through you know hell and back when yeah. it comes when it comes to this season um you know you formerly were the gm the coach of the bucks and it things have changed so much okay. it looks like the bucks have forfeit forza but back to what i was saying yeah like when it comes to when it comes to uh oh wait we'll wait for the wheel spin sorry no you're fine i think i agree and i think the forfeit on forza is smart having three cars just sit there puts a difficult situation and the fighting games keep on a coming and i keep on a rolling but i do feel as though um like, like you said like i said you know once once you were no longer once you ended up you know, going over to the Cobras, and then you had Psycho, you had Havoc. They decided to, you know, do their own thing. Now they're on the uh, X Gods. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen uh, Cowboy. I haven't seen Pharaoh. So that is the biggest thing about the Bucks from last season that I know some players remember. A lot of the players are still in the league. They're just on different teams. Situations have changed mm -hmm. because again. A lot of people, Gerns is on this Gorillas team. They, he he has his future, but they are now speaking to what you're speaking about. The Bucks are back in kind of that season one phase mm -hmm. of figuring out what the team identity is. Mm -hmm. And it can be extremely difficult, but the big thing for a lot of the players is to always remember like, hey, what do I need to pay attention to? What do I need to focus on? How, how do I want to be defined as a player? To Gravity, if you're watching this back at any point, I would tell you in your first season, figure out like what categories you both enjoy and you're strong in. Mm -hmm. Work there, and then you can always bring up the other categories as time goes on. 
one of the things is like a lot of players will try to do every category at once. And it's like, it's 33 games. Mm -hmm. Most of the best players in this league didn't come into the league playing 33 games. Oh, absolutely not. They came in being great at one, good to great at, yeah, maybe two, good to great at a few others, maybe having touched them before, and it requires development. And this point is where I think people will look back on this and be like, I knew Gravity was good because I remember the 2v5 game. I remember the game where Gravity and Pizza Man together managed to find these wins, managed to find these opportunities, managed to take some of these games. And I think that is incredibly important. Yeah, no, and and one thing that I I really like about him is that, you know, he is taking these losses on the chin, right? Like, he's just like, ah, you know, it it sucks. And And being in this situation, it makes you want to, like, give up. Like not be a part of the league or you know not want to be on this team but you know you you keep at it you keep trying to build your team it's kind of a, a lot what i saw and it's not because you're sitting beside me but like a lot from what i saw on the cobras the cobras had you know their their first season last season um and you know they were up against some really difficult opponents really established teams not a lot of expansion teams that they went against but they looked at that they started to build on their team, they've gotten a little bit better. They they're they're stronger than they were last season, and unfortunately for the Bucks, it's not the same. But we are in this Tekken. We got Pizza Man going against O to the L, and my guess here is going to be if O to the L is playing the same character he played in Tekken Seven, the Eddie Gordo, the newest DLC, will hey, be let's go. O to the L over on the side, and then Pizza Man will be here on the Kazuya O to the L. On this Eddie, Eddie just came out. A lot of different. How he plays is not the same as he did in previous Tekken games, but he still has some of those strings that are really annoying and difficult to deal with if you just don't know what's happening here. And it looks like O to the L has done a little bit of work to take that first round already almost perfectly. And using now the assist system to go ahead and find some of these moves if you're not always exactly sure what is be happening and i'm gonna be joined here once again with the third anarchist i need you to understand eddie eddie's already a menace and my man went into overdrive but he's finding these buttons and finding these opportunities to kind of poke pizza man out of every single option he wants to go for Yes, I absolutely agree. And again, O to the L does have some legacy knowledge. Like, I played him last season on Eddie, and he clearly understood how the character works, the fundamentals, some of those strong tools that Eddie has. And if you don't know how to deal with that, Eddie feels like you're just getting kicked. Don't ever growl in the viewers' ears again. <laughs> All right, here I'm trying to say so. Gravity looking to get started, but Gravity, who may have been working on this, I think one of the things that sometimes slides to the wayside is character knowledge. And a character that just came out this past week really is difficult for you as a player to figure out. But he gets up with the springboard, ready to go ahead and fight back. But but O to the L picking up exactly where he left off with Pizza Man. Taking a quick first round. You want the grips? I want the kicks. I'm rooting for O to the L here. This Eddie gameplay, new DLC, ready to go. And Gravity said, all right, cool. My download round's done. I'm looking and I'm ready to swing myself. Finding these openings. Mm. And there Let's we go. go. First round. O to the L's lost his first life. Let's see how he adapts. I think he realized more three. More foot. Oh, that, I'm loving that grab. 
came from so far away. You can see under his health bar, Eddie does have a new mechanic dealing with the wind, and it opens up some new moves for him, changes how some of his current moves work. Again, a lot of knowledge that you have to be able to adapt. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Gravity on his last, last life. life. Ooh, combo. You got this gravity. I need to see more drag bars, Brent. There we go. Got one on his neck. See our nice job, buddy. I like. One more run. One more run up. Oh, he didn't get the second grab. But he manages to immediately get the launch following it. I think as long as he's able to find these moments to stay on top of O to the L. Then finds go. another round, final round, final life for both of these players. And OTL activated the simple controls again, so we might be seeing a more aggressive, simplified Eddie to come after the, the king of grappling. But realizing now, as he jumps over each one of these kicks, maybe like realizing the game plan of gravity, O to the L said, it's time for my sweep global. You took guilty gear, but I got to show off a little bit too. Oh. And takes... Tekken only losing two lives. Once again, wicked work. Eddie on simple controls. <laughs> wicked, wicked work. Oh, man. I'm out, boys. Thank, right, you, thank sir. you, once again, for sliding in. Smash Bros. More fighting games. More fighting games. Hey, yo, indeed. <laughs> what? Anyway. I don't understand... <laughs> But what I know is that we play with items here in the Lincoln Smash. Mm, we do. We do. And items are all high. <clears throat> I can't. I can't. Like, my brain heard items on high, and even I short-circuited, even after being in the league all season, just there for hey, a look. second. Items can change the entire flow of the match, and I feel like Pizza Man has shown his reactions to be able to handle those items. I think that this is going to be a Bucks win. Honestly, and here's the thing. Even in Tekken, we, we I literally just talked about this man. Gravity has shown a lot of, like, he's, yeah. he's impressed. He's, he's improved so much. And I feel like Gravity also is a Smash player. I, I, I get the Smash player vibes. I think he might have something cooked up here. And if any of the gorillas come in again thinking of an easy win, we saw what happened in Madden. <laughs> we saw what happened in Madden. So, what do you think... So, uh, well, obviously, everybody in the venue is playing right now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny because normally we would be like, all right, cool, lineups, and how are you going to position for the game coming afterwards? But in these situations, I don't know, Do you would you feel more comfortable or less comfortable knowing, like, well, I'm going to see the same five people. I don't have to worry about it. Like, I don't have to worry about who I'm going to play in this situation I mean, for I, both teams. Honestly, it just, it, you you get a lot more reps in that way. And I mean, in a two man, you get even more reps. Oh, they so, you, <clears throat> 30 games worth of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it just goes to show like just how important it is to, you know, have a strong lineup or not even or, or having a weak lineup. Like having a weak up with the with the with, with a two man, like one thing one or two things is gonna happen. You're gonna sit here, you're gonna lose, and you're gonna learn nothing. You're not gonna you the only thing you're gonna do is beat up on yourself and beat yeah. up on your team. Or you can take the loss and learn from all of the weaknesses that you have. And then, hit, and here's the thing that I like about the league. There are so many people who are coaches for other teams who are willing to teach other people how to play the games so that you can learn and grow as an in-gamer. For example, I love using this example. Um, the X-Gods versus Eclipse. Yes. When Cordy... Lost to Chicken Tap in and F one F one okay and it was a it was a really good race but at the end of the race Chicken Tap literally walked over to Cordy and he's like do you want me to tell you why you got so many penalties and yeah. he literally like and Cordy wasn't like nah screw it like screw you guys blah blah blah, blah. he was just like why yeah. and Chicken Tap broke it down. You were doing this. This is considered this. This is how this game works. And for him to be able to take that information in and, one, learn from it and then be able to utilize it. He, he hasn't, you know, really, I don't think we saw him play F1 uh, the last time he played. But, you know, it's not like he just threw that off like he did. He actually 
wants to learn. And I that's what I love about it here at the UBL. Yes, and I completely agree. Even uh, beyond that as well, and we are seeing Gravity and Kevin active here. Player one being Gravity. So we're getting this Captain Falcon once again coming out of Gravity up against Kevin's Dark Pit. Th we mentioned like the new era and how UBL is changing. Um, even with the uh, addition and as a player, like we are starting to get and see more teams participate in scrims. Yep. More teams looking to play each other to teach, to learn, everyone wanting the gaming and the level of the league to go up so that, you know, both better competition and steel sharpens steel, right? Yeah. If you're able to get these games, the better my opponents <laughs> are, the better competition I have to get better and Correct. to truly become the greatest in the world. Both of the players here trying to get their opportunities to get started. Gravity having an early lead, already getting Kenny towards that Auburn number, but Kenny or Kevin, excuse me, who? One of them brothers. No, Kevin. I'm, I, Kevin doing a great job of equalizing it up and taking the lead now. But it looks like Gravity, we're, we're over here at uh, Ness's Drugstore, you know, the neighborhood. <laughs> Yeah. Classic map. I mean, honestly, it, it goes to show that there's not a, a, a lot of knowledge coming from either either one of these players. They're, they're, they're missing a lot of each other, which is which is fine, right? It just it just goes to show that they are willing to play this game out regardless. And how in the world did he manage to get that smash ball? That's crazy. All right. Now he's gonna take the opportunity to use it, as does everyone, because why not? It looks like gravity though was just staying away, saying, Hey, I'm not gonna give you the opportunity to use yours the smash ability trying to find no! his long range and that's gonna send gravity kevin off the map before he even has an opportunity to look <clears throat> for the dub yep and we got global figure going in next and of course he's gonna be playing terry i didn't even get a chance to say it before it happened And gets hit again with the same thing. Honestly, Gravity doing a really good job of catching them off guard. And they, they, like when you play uh, other players who are not really used to the games that you're playing, what in the world was that? Oh, that was the moon. That's the moon from Zelda. That's the moon from Zelda. Oh, he coming in hard. Oh, no. He coming in fast. What do you do in this situation? Oh. Don't get hit. No. And unfortunately, their gravity's high percentage meant that once he made contact with the moon, he didn't have the survivability compared to Global, who is coming in fresh. But guess what? Greninja's on First the field. First off, I knew Pizza Man was playing Greninja. Oh, I did? knew it. I knew it. He it's, looks it's like he plays Pokemon. It's a ninja, bro. It's And it's a ninja. It's a frog. He ninja, looks cool. And he's Too moving. bad that stuff around his neck is, I mean, yeah, the stuff around his neck is his tongue. But, you know, yeah, I digress. That's sick. What do you mean? No, it's not. Tongue That's, scarf, bro? That's disgusting. Tongue scarf, bro? Anyway. Imagine in the summer, you're hot. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> All right. Pizza Man doing a lot of teleporting, bro. I love it. Nice time. Both what players playing for this healing item while Global keeps <laughs> swinging away. <laughs> Global playing baseball, it looks like. Managing to catch Pizza Man. Let's see, can Global find control of this Smash Ball Pizza? Also playing oh, for Oh, Pizza! Oh, but not able to Global get it. Global with the power, guys! Into I, the cutscene. Teddy Ball Guard. Oh, and Global takes it. Super Smash Brothers. Ultimate does go on over to the Gorillas. And King of Fighters next. With Global available. And uh, in case you didn't know, he does also play Terry, Terry Bogart. I was gonna say, he does also play Terry Bogart in Global Figure, is what I was going to say. King of Fighters. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. The, you know, he's. Uh, it's one of those situations where Smash to me is one of the harder games. Any of the fighting games where you keep your percentage. Unfortunately, KOF being one of them are the harder situations mm -hmm. because it means that you, in this case or in Smash's case, you almost need to perfect multiple players mm -hmm. to keep the game super competitive. Correct. And in those situations, it's just a lot of pressure. And that pressure sometimes causes mistakes when if someone can just be like, all right, well, I might lose anyway, so there's no reason to worry about it. Mm -hmm. You see that success sometimes because it's like, cool, I'm just going to play like normal. Nothing's different. Mm -hmm. And then you find those perfect. You find those opportunities. <clears throat> 
Yeah, no, you are absolutely correct there. Uh, we've got this. Uh, King of Fighters being another 3v3. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing a little bit more of gravity, honestly, in a lot of these fighters. He, I mean, I'm, so most of the fighters have already rolled, but like, I, I feel like I've seen him do so well, you know, and the, granted the situation that he's in going against Global Figure, who is literally one of the one of the better fighters in in the league yes i you think know. uh one of them again he's in his sophomore season mm -hmm. but he's already come in and i know a lot of the fighters in the league uh, heavily respect him is able to play pretty much every one of the fighters on the wheel mm -hmm. and play it to a above average to like really strong level competes in tournaments um and we can't forget like remember global figure actually used to be on the reaper so he used to be there with hollywood cat um, and I think the only, in, you know, now now he's on the gorillas. He's using his talents there, really showing them just how strong of a fighter he is. Yes, and Fortnite coming up next. Pizza, pizza. You can't escape the pizza, man. All right, player one here is going to be the gorillas. Player two is going to be the bucks. There we go. And we have the Yashiro starting off up against the King of Dinosaurs here coming out of Pizza Man. Pizza Man showing homage to Mr. Fear. You know, he's not here right now. Yeah, but maybe the teammate has showed him. Maybe Fear has taught him a thing or two here. The Yashiro jumping around, moving, looking to get an opportunity to come in hot. So as we have two Meat Mountain designators here, I think it's only perfect that we call upon the patron god of meat himself. I am third anarchist. The disciple, an apostle. This is a beacon of the gospel of the meat mountain. And seeing King of Dinosaur here without fear has been quite a surprise. But Pizza Man, once again, picks up information very quickly from people. Oh, blocks out of combo. And that's the other thing that I think is important. He's Pizza Man's one thing that he's learned from all of his fighting games is just. Funnily enough, is just strong use of normals to control space. I don't need to throw fireballs and do all this other crazy stuff all the time. If I just, when you run up to me, jab you out, and I oh! win my round. And I put my boot through your chest. Hold that. Let's go, Pizza Man. Let's do it, buddy. Points to Merz says, you're next, buddy. <laughs> Merz is like, I don't know how to play this game. Good. Pizza Man does get diffed. A global <laughs> walking away. So good luck, buddy. The global, like, you all right? You all right? You, you okay? You just got to get your touch here. Pizza sweep. I believe. We must begin the chant. Getting a button check here. Always nice to see a button check coming out. And players, just make sure everything is normal. You know, for players at home that maybe used to Wi-Fi, change that delay, input delay offline. Change it to, like, you know, four or five milliseconds. Get you a little bit more comfortable than normal. The Wi-Fi warriors of the world, Jacqueline, Dr. Lovejoy. And here we go. Uh, if he had a little bit more health, he probably could have challenged. And also only going in the second round with one bar is kind of a rough spot to be in. Very difficult to deal with King in those, like, neutral situations when you don't have the health. But here we go. My and my can be a menace in this game, especially if you aren't ready. Able to use a lot of her movement tools and aerial options to ultimately lock down the game as we're immediately seeing gravity doing okay gravity gravity got a little bit of my gameplay i'm liking to see this is taking advantage of some of the slides i would like to see some fans coming out good grab reestablish point breaking there's the auto combo for the level two and this is something that merge is showing me that he's worked with global maybe talk to him just relying on this auto combo i don't need to come up with some super sick combo the game has me on lock for one mm -hmm. but look at the work fundamentals normals is how the bucks are winning kof right now there's a level one let's see Murs with a nice empty jump but gets thrown Ooh. nice shatter strike oh. isn't able to confirm it into a kill but one more hit and there it is and there we go global figure now again this is what i was talking about gravity really showing a little something as far as fighters goes he's a fighting game player now whatever yeah. game he came in as would whatever his his best category is throw it out the window he's now fighting he's now fighting right. and what will global do against this newly crowned fighting game player <laughs> that, that was nasty by the way with global's cross up there something really slight but b Jeanette, i think he's gonna be looking for an opportunity to hit him with the 
Stiletto. Nah, he, he ain't. And Global just keeping it simple. Somebody asked Global where the sauce at. <laughs> Sauceless. You ain't no KOF player. You're going to get exiled from the sauce community. <laughs> I know you got more sauce than that, buddy. Okay. But going ahead and cleaning it up for his team as well. Once again, some strong showing showing that in these fighting games across the season, they've improved, giving a lot of uh, hope, I think, as well for next season. You know, fighting games, one of the biggest categories in terms of shifts season over season. Yeah. Um, yes, we're going to have some mainstays, the, the Street Fighters, the Tekkens usually. But as these games kind of shift and move around, you do get these scenarios and these opportunities to kind of start to move that knowledge. And if you're able to grow this much in a season, next season, like you said, he could very much be that fighter player they're looking for yeah. with having fear already on the team, having another fighter already starts to bring out a solid core. But here we go, Fortnite. And I think you asked me at the top of the day and I'd forgotten Fortnite, but if there's one game that I think Pizza Man can 1v3, especially without Carnage being here. Especially without Carnage being here, I think it's Fortnite. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I do. I do feel like for, uh, Fortnite. I feel like Pizza Man would do really uh, is is more comfortable in uh, playing Fortnite. Um, and you know, uh, if you could, Strix, can you let the well, let the wonderful people know how how do we play Fortnite? You know, in the so U E L. We the have a a custom trios map mm -hmm. where you get uh, materials in each one of the categories randomized weapons on the ground with a few options to choose from when you spawn your goal here is going to be to kill the enemy team uh and when you start out so it tests your ability to do you recognize all the different weapons that have ever been out in fortnite do you know what this weapon from season three does or the weapon that came out yesterday does some teams have this incredibly aggressive style where they're going to push out and run up on you and be like yo I'm not going to even let you get a chance to play the game whereas what you see out of the top and the better Fortnite players like mm -hmm. Pizza Man is a strong willingness to lean into Fortnite's unique mechanic, the building mechanic where you may think like I can shoot. The gorillas as a team have a lot of very strong shooters. But if I'm always putting a wall or always moving around you and you're not able to track exactly where I am, that becomes incredibly difficult. Now, my question is here, without Carnage, their, their premier Fortnite player, how far is the rest of the team here? I'm seeing X-Ray, Kevin, Kenny, and O to the L going in here. How far have they come along to be able to handle a great Fortnite player like Pizza Man? Um, I think that this will be a really contested game here. With both Kenny and Kevin being uh, really strong at a lot of the shooters. Um, o to the L, I feel like is more of a fighter. It makes sense as to why they put MERS and Global, you know, off because you know those. I feel like right now Global and MERS are the more well-rounded, you know, uh, in gamers on on the Gorillas route right now. So I do feel like um, that with O to the L kind of being more of a fighter gravity and pizza really have the better advantage here um and with pizza man you know again not having a license <laughs> i feel like pizza man is going to be able to take this one. Oh, 100 i like we've seen it before where even against some of the strong fortnite teams i think he i believe they won against uh eclipse last week in fortnite I think they managed to take it. It was really close, and at least they took it to all three rounds of the game if they did not win. It was one of those situations where, if I remember correctly as well, the rounds that Eclipse were able to take really came off the back of all three of us are just going to jump pizza. <laughs> we're not going to let him play <laughs> the game. And see, again, that that leads me to to that the next point, right? Like, it's as an, as an end gamer, um, you kind of know – you know who's really the best of you know what for whichever whichever game is being played like we see a lot of at least for rocket league if one person is good at rocket league the goal for the rest of the team is take that person out demo, demo that person right now demo that person aim for that person um and then for something like fortnite i do feel like for fortnite you know if they really want to to if the gorillas really want to take out the the bucks, the first thing you need to do do is go for pizza. 
Now, I could be wrong because gravity could also be super strong in this game. And if gravity, even if he's just uh, understands enough about the game so that when they push for pizza, he holds an off angle on pizza. Like, oh, three of y'all going to push him? Cool. Then I'll shoot one of you from behind. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, it's one pizza's dealing with uh, 1v2, mm -hmm. and y'all have to still worry about me. I think one of the other benefits with the game mode we play is instead of trying to split the loot between three players, the Bucks players can actually look at it and be like, there's two of us. What do we want? What do I want? What do you want? How are we going to be able to split this up so everybody has the tools they need to succeed and to go for the route. It looks like we do have a timeout being used here as well. Fortnite, a little bit temperamental, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we will be taking a little bit of time to get that done. In the meantime, I would love to take another look at the road to Red Michigan. Line. Line. Because we are getting close to this, I think there's one more week after this mm -hmm. followed by like the makeup week and we can see here how the tables are starting to play out so the gorillas taking a win here if they're able to win mm -hmm. um are now kind of creating this clump in the middle of the northern conference we saw the ravens against the x gods well, they're expected to play each other one more time uh in the playoffs and the gorillas are going to be looking to play the phantoms going into eclipse and seeing where they can kind of chip away to get better and to get stronger and i think training some of their pieces here is great it's great to see where kenny kevin oats the uh, you kind of mentioned global emerge being kind of these foundational pieces for the mm -hmm. team um seeing where and what stuff you need to work on in that month of kind of a, of uh specifically games we still have matches going on but specific season games will have for those at home as well i'm going to keep telling you until i see every one of you do it i'm watching you Go ahead, scan that QR code and grab your tickets. I hope you are. Well. That's weird. No, I'm watching. I'm watching. You see, look at the Cobra. Everybody else is looking inward. Cobra looking out. That's me. <laughs> I'm looking at all of y'all. I'm just watching. Watching. You thought it was you left your fountain on. You just heard a mm -mm, No, sir. Um, it's going to be a really electrifying game on uh, June 8th at yes. the DeVos Performance Hall. It's going to be incredible because people don't realize that Nothing is for granted. Again, I don't know how many times this season is one of those seasons where I know both Eclipse and the Reapers are incredibly confident. Well, they've both made you know improvements. They've grabbed players. They've they've grown as a team. Mm -hmm. But I think both of them are not taking anything for granted. All right, and we are going right on in, and we are looking at Pizza Man. And Pizza again picking his loadout. Notice he has. Free pick of the litter. Gravity already going up, maybe getting some early scouting to help Pizza play exactly the game he wants to play. And Pizza looks like he has a close range uh, loadout here. He doesn't want to necessarily play too far from a distance, recognizing if he can get in there and get some good shots. Already, I like some good shots. They didn't land necessarily, but threatening, showing like, hey, you don't just get to move out for free. Mm -hmm. And Pizza Man doing a really good job of like putting himself right at that spot where he can go behind cover. It does look like that the uh, gorillas are looking to make a uh, way for them to get up a little bit higher so that they can be able to take those shots from uh, the bottom. Oh, a nice job recognizing like, Hey, I don't even, I understand these mechanics better. You, I don't need to shoot you. If your builds aren't connected to something, they'll just come crashing down and you'll take fall damage for free. The storm is going to come in here soon, forcing them to push out mm -hmm. as the Gorillas player surges forward. And as I mentioned, this is kind of what Pizza wants. Pizza wants to be able to compete at a closer range. He wants to be able to take these isolated fights. He doesn't want to have to fight three people. Let me take you on 1v1. Y'all can't beat me that way. Look at his movement here. And I love the fact that Gravity is giving him so much support in this situation. Oh, no. So he's got two. He's already lost a lot of his shields, but that doesn't matter to pizza man so he's got a lot of pressure on him and who is this one of the twins has locked him down has knocked him down where's gravity is gravity going to be able to get over here to maybe show some support get a little bit of help over to pizza man or is gravity down i think that was pizza that went down and now respawns have been oh, yeah. disabled so i think this is going to be a first win a yeah. first round win going on over 
yeah. to the gorillas, managing to maybe take out gri- gravity. That support early on that you were calling out allowed them to defend some of those pushes to drop them from the high ground to get the damage out there. But that extra man advantage once Pizza was put into a 1v3 situation, maybe not having the loot that he wanted to be able to take these fights and yeah. close it out. I mean, honestly, and it, a lot of what you were saying as well is kind of what initially happened. He put up the wall over on his right while he was shooting at somebody else. So you can't really do any damage to me if I have this wall up. All right, now we are going into round two. All right, let's see. Popping in this time, we're going to be spectating gravity. He runs up, grabs a few different options. Got the explosive God gun? Glue, goo, goo. My oh, man got oh, goo. Okay. Watch it. You shoot the goo. Oh, that is disgusting. Put that down, Gravity. That is nasty. <laughs> why Why don't you like goo, bro? I no, just... you're, you're a parent. You're a parent. You can't have fun no more. No, I can't. Mm-mm. You can't enjoy the goo. So, and I don't know why Gravity, gravity looking to push out. out. And this is one of those things about maybe him thinking that maybe, like, just trying to take more space. Maybe he feels like they got trapped in their base last game. Honestly, Gravity did. That was actually not a bad move. I don't. I, I don't but, agree with him pushing out so far right there by himself. But I do like that he built up some type of fortress for both him and. Pizza. Oh, but really playing the distraction oh! for Pizza Man to take out one of the players. I was not expecting that. Okay, Pizza. And immediately in this moment, I think Pizza realized, hey. Playing defense of a man down is not going to get you the win, but if you get me in a position where I can fight, I can carry this. And we question it like he's not building anymore. Why is he just running forward? And I think even the Gorillas players were surprised to have Pizza Man just oh, appear yeah, behind him. Oh, yeah, he caught the them. man in the back with a shoddy. That's two. Ooh, let's go, Pizza. If Pizza can get this heal off, this will be huge. Oh, is he? he's not healing, though. He's not healing. Oh. Oh, no. And unfortunately, what he was trying to do was trying to flip the stairs to buy himself a little bit of extra cover to get down to a safe spot to heal. And unfortunately, wasn't able to take it there. But some great play. You can see those ideas brewing and how they were going to play. And the teamwork still showing up. The teamwork and the ability for them just to be like, hey, the first round we played super safe. Uh, Bro. Again, it goes back to the linear play style, right? Gravity did exactly what he did in um, Texas, right? So Gravity got the attention of everybody. He fell into the well for Texas, and Pizza was up upstairs, like, hiding away, right? And then he does the same exact strategy where he builds, you know, to catch their attention and kind of pushes up. Some, hey, I'm the guy you need to be shooting at. And then Pizza's just like, hey, guess what? Behind you, shotgun. And that is where I'm going to look at the gorillas. If you're watching this back, gorillas players, I need you to work on communication and, like, target selection. Mm -hmm. In that game, if I'm the gorillas players and I'm like, how do I lose this? Mm -hmm. Pizza Man goes off. Mm Mm-hmm. I need to ensure that Pizza Man does not get the opportunity. And we saw there... That if he manages to flip that stairs mm-hmm. and get down the floor and heal up, he'll take that 1v1. Yeah. He he was more than comfortable to say, okay, cool. I don't have to deal with someone shooting me from either side. I just have to outbuild you and outshoot you. And I believe I can do that. I feel like in that situation, what Gravity was doing, I understand that he wanted to kind of get a lot of their attention, but he had a lot of their attention as he was building. I really wish that he would have continued to build as he pushed forward and then hid behind the build that he was doing to heal up. If it didn't require his death for P- if Pizza Man got that kill and he was still up, yeah, it's a two v two, right? Instead right. of a two v one, and now both people aren't looking at one direction. Call of Duty Wars on another two v two, and another one of those fast paced shooters. What I miss, okay, well. Another one of those fast shooters that I think players like Pizza Man and Gravity, some of the newer, the younger players will have something of an advantage in, Mm -hmm. and they'll be going up against it. It looks like Kevin and Murs. Who do you think the Bucks are going to put in? I'm going to go with uh, Pizza Goat. Pizza Goat. Okay, Pizza Goat. I think you got to put him in there. Uh, And this amazing underrated player. He's been playing really well all season. Fear? Um, as well. Nah. Oh, okay. Actually, actually, it's going to be it's Gravity. People don't know about him. I think he's a, another one of those sleeper picks. I think the the 
Bucks have found a really great piece to start to build around going into the future. Yeah, man. Uh, this is this is a really interesting game. Honestly, uh, I'm really impressed with you know how well the Bucks are doing with just the two of them, with both Gravity and Pizza Man. Um, it definitely shows that they are willing to continue to grow as end gamers. Um, they are also willing to uh, take the losses and learn from those losses yeah. as well. So, and neither one of them looks too like sad and, and mm-hmm. like oh, well, they, they're they're still trying in all of these games and trying to find these opportunities to win, which I think speaks really highly of the mental game. And developing like, hey, it's going to be rough a little bit, but we will start to find those wins and start to find those opportunities. Yep. Honestly, I feel like in this situation, had they had one more person, I think that the the Bucks would have been able to take at least that Fortnite game and potentially been able to some win of some of the games, fight, some yeah. of the fighting games. Um, so you know, just just having that additional person. Look at you, fear. Um, but I, I think any, like, f- f- hilariously enough, just the man sometimes matters more than, like, the actual individual. Yeah. We saw Gravity with, like, limited time also starting to cook in some of those fighting games. And I think if we were if given the opportunity, just like, hey, I have somebody else behind me or in front of me, maybe I'm able to take the dub. Maybe I'm able to find the victory. The setup timer, though, is coming to an end. And as it does, we're going to get a timeout used here by the Gorillas to hopefully get us into this Call of Duty Warzone. Now, a new map, really, it's the original Warzone map, has come out. Um, and so I'm interested to see how many of these players have taken the time to maybe gone over and like reacquainted themselves with the map. We saw amazing performances out of players so far this season and this weekend even mm-hmm. dealing with the uh new map and and really showing that hey an understanding of how the map and these rotating maps work Mm -hmm. can be the difference between winning and losing yeah absolutely i mean honestly this has been um a really i I mean i just i see the difference in in the score but it's not like all of these wins were easy wins for the for the gorillas one thing that against the two man you know in this moment one thing that i'm gonna call the entire league out on The entire league out in this moment is the league judges games by their box scores too heavily. Oh, yeah. They'll look at a 2 and 10. They'll be like, oh, well, it's a 2 and 10. Oh, two people showed up. Yeah, that's why. But are you actually paying attention? Because if next season I hear somebody say, well, I didn't know Pizza Man or Gravity played Madden at all. Like, they didn't. But they did this last season. Mm -hmm. They managed to find their win there. Oh, I didn't know. That they played this game or did this pretty well. Yes, I understand watching every single game. It's it's commitment. Mm-hmm. You're a player. Uh, is my response to that. But just in general, we should be able to personally, as I like, sit down and look at this. It's just this isn't just a game where like, oh, it was pretty free. It was pretty free. It was pretty out there. And overall, I think that if we could really quickly, I want to highlight one more time uh, on the road to Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to go ahead and highlight just how close some of these races are. Just like legitimately how each one of the games is going to end up mattering uh, on in the grand scheme of things. We'll, We'll get the road to Michigan up here in just a second. I always love this. We, we got to mess with production a little bit. You know, you know, we always have to mess with production just a tad. Um, this timeout, you know, takes a little bit of time. Call of Duty ends up being a little bit difficult mm-hmm. um, just to get through and, and get set up. Activision always wanting your phone number. Mm-hmm. They want you to get, give me your phone number. I'm like, why? Act, I don't want to talk to you, Activision. Let me just go ahead and exist quietly for once. Yes, absolutely. Um, man, what a game. I think that going, if I'm saying in the first half, right, if I'm looking at the first half and we're down two to ten, a bunch of close games played, as the Bucks, Gravity, for people at home that don't necessarily realize, Gravity is doing lineups for the first time, mm-hmm. doing setups for the first time as a rookie. This isn't the first time doing lineups. Hmm? This isn't the first time doing lineups. For him? Mm-hmm. Oh. He's, done, he's been doing a lot as a rookie for his first time being here. 
the seat. He's pulling the strikes. He's a great player, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, no. Like I legitimately speak with gravity. I, I when I talked to him, I had uh, a lot of confidence mm -hmm. in like what he was going to be able to play. And the first season is usually the roughest. Uh, and from here, I think that like the Bucks going in the next season um, with a good drafting will be able to find some success. I thought we just got into it to uh, bodies being caught. Nah, in the lobby. In the lobby, Murr's laughing, having fun, ready to play. Rocket League up next. Murr is immediately turning around laughing. And here we go, dropping into that Call of Duty War Zone in 2 1. Let's get started. I believe, as well, this is the original map, so we will be seeing that. Gravity putting his headset back on, ready to play. Gravity OG, X Ray, Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood in the lobby, too. And Adventurer. All right. So, uh, AV, what's your favorite gun in Call of Duty? So we're gonna go ahead and drop in uh, to this map. <laughs> and Mers uh, is a Mers is a strong shooting game player. Like, just to cover all of the abilities of each player. Um, Gravity has shown some strength in shooting games as well. Pizza Man again right. is one of those shooters that he should be good in. And the X-rays. I think we're in for a good time. Um, but once again, I call on the heavens to uh, maybe get a little bit of a Call of Duty player's knowledge here. Uh, it's your boy, third at it again. And we've got Merz dropping in on Stronghold or Lockdown. Uh, I didn't see the name <laughs> of the area properly, but uh, dropping into the prison area to get an early start. This is the far Anyone? side of the island. There's a helicopter that's usually that's pretty contested. And the radar dish that Merz oh, is in tends to be a little bit of a hot spot in some of the earlier circles. So we'll see how he progresses with this. But some quick loot and good movement. Looks like somebody already got on or around the helicopter right now. There's none in this game. So, uh, looks like. Um... What account are you? Or are you already right? down? Do you want to loot this in? See if anybody's gotten any kills on his end. We can loot this in? Not yet. I think he's really feeling the pressure to kind of play a little more aggressive and try to make plays happen. Um, we see it a lot of times out of rookies just trying to get something done, especially if they feel like the game is uh, in a at too. I don't want to call it stable, but just in a state where they right. feel like nothing is happening. Mm. Yeah, that's the worst part about some old nurse jumping in the room. He gets lit up. Maybe a little bit distracted there. Was slow to aim on the target, even though once he came around the corner. He but... forgot it's not Halo. <laughs> and now we look at Pizza Man. Pizza Man sees an opponent there, is on the move, moving to maybe help his teammate here. Swapping like weapons. Man's on keyboard and mouse. Not hitting that shift key at all to get some of that extra uh, sprint going. But we'll see how he approaches this fight because this is another contested area. This is the middle of the map with these two buildings. You'll see a lot of teams going back and forth here. And this is where uh, Timmy Toucans uh, tends to run people over with uh, ATVs, by the way. So you might see some vehicle shenanigans as this game progresses. And this is the other big thing. And you mentioned the mouse and keyboard Call of Duty being unique in that you need to switch your control scheme. But it looks let's like go, pizza. pizza. Pizza, get your kill. Confirm. Oh, never mind. He realized oh, there's yeah, another let's target. Go, pizza. Uh, oh. Pizza looking like he maybe picked up two kills there. It didn't look like he finished the first one, but he definitely got the second one. So hopefully it wasn't another teammate. It's it. Double kill. Right, let's go. <laughs> Excuse me. I think he did get two. I believe so. Here we go. Dropping back in. Kevin. Floating on over here to the water tower. Getting the high ground. It gives you a really good vantage point over the main part of the prison and the backside. So those sight lines are pretty decent. But not having weapons to really support that. Not a really good spot because the loot up there is kind of questionable. Yeah, we can see here, unable to find an actual weapon. Uh, exactly what you're pointing towards, like now has to move maybe into some of these more contested areas, hoping to find something out of this loot box here. Ram 7 is a solid option. Looks like it has a barrel of a magazine, so extra rounds and a little bit more stability going on. And oh, that was a teammate. I, <laughs> I bet all of us, all of us looked at him like, I'm, are, are we going to click or are we just going to... Looks like he picked up a custom Manetti or the M93 Rasta for all you old heads. Yeah, he sure did. Guns. Yeah. yeah. 
All right, clearly. So <laughs> I want to ask, because this is a newer map. It, it, it's an old map, but it's a newer map for Call of Duty Warzone 3 coming back in. How does this map flow and, and compare to some of the other maps we've seen so far this season? Um, a lot of the other maps have... Uh, it's probably similar to <clears throat> the Japanese island map. I can't remember the name right now. Where it's a lot of skirmishing through the outsides. And then a lot of the concentrated gameplay is going to be in the middle. Prism being a really big hot spot because a lot of the time the circle does contract towards that and then start pulling to the other side of the island. So it's a Sheikah, there we go. It's very similar to a Sheikah, the way all of the gameplay goes, but it oh, tends to be a little bit more aggressive from the beginning because so many people play in prison. Because of the, oh. <clears throat> did he not see him up there? He, he did not. People don't look up in video games. Come on now. And I also want to give uh, compliments here to Kevin doing a great job of just putting shots down range. He's always just ensuring that he's getting this damage. Since we do do a kill race and a point system, any damage you're able to pull out ultimately can lead to points for your team and your ability to be able to play the game. A nice attempt there isn't able to pick up the kill, but still able to get a few more bullets, which will help his team in the long run. In this particular situation, uh, he, he, he just needs to slow down because he's he's doing a lot of twitch decision making and it's not really helping out, not to affect the screen, but he's kind of just running and doing things. When he went up to the high ground, he could have played it up and then tried to re- Oh! oh! Got him. <laughs> Pizza Man just built different. Give him a slice of death. Pizza see. Man was just looking at the sunset, bro. He was enjoying mm -hmm. himself. He I'm, was. Who dares interrupt my solitude? <laughs> he got himself a sidearm. All right, and let's see. Still using this hallway, looking to maybe take a few fights, making a little bit of noise, hoping to maybe bait out that player's teammates. Let's see. Pizza Man, once again, not using that sprint button very much, but I am mad. I'm with the MCW with the 2.5... Oreo scout not, uh, mat, uh, site. It's like an angled hand grip and a drum mag. So good mid to long range setup with that. And Switch peace that. finder keeper. <laughs> <laughs> that just threw me off completely. It's one of the. It's oh, one of the next from one. Behind. Unfortunately, getting baited out by the team there. Uh, I think that ultimately are. having to push out into the open air. Uh, right. Ultimately ends up playing into. Unfortunately, yeah. PC Man's. Uh, downfall, but to your point about kind of what you mentioned when we were watching Kevin there about playing super fast, I think even though he's not utilizing his sprint, generally speaking, Pizza's managing to find these fights and trying to take them 1v1 wherever possible and just using kind of the gun skill that we've seen from him to, like, win the trades. Yeah, like, if it's working for him, I ain't mad. I just feel like sometimes getting a little bit of extra movement and getting, getting into a fight faster or getting into a corner sooner or cover sooner does make a bit of a difference. But like you said, he's been picking his fights well, I mean, very well. I, mean. I think that's only the second fight he's lost, but he's won almost every other straight-up fight. My man, do you have an X-23 sniper? He's a Halo player. He's a Halo player. The pistol is the sniper. Not, you know, the 50 caliber sniper rifle. No. All right. Okay. Need you to understand. I told y'all he forgot that he played. He not playing Halo. Don't do it. It's okay. But really locked in here, looking to make a uh, move up. Feels incredibly confident in his ability to play. I like the movement. Okay. Managed to get a big hit. Gonna look to maybe drop down from above and uh, take this fight further. Or expecting someone to chase him. Manages to link up here with Kevin. So I'm not liking someone's positioning with the sniper, especially inside the prison, where your sight lines aren't that good the higher up you go. So I would like to see him probably taking the low oh, ground sure. and Kevin taking the high ground to look with each other. And as you see, the tracer's coming from somebody oh, at the edge of that corner, so this is an opportunity for him to push up and... There you go, take the Nice down. Lines. Where? Did that make... Hello? The entire team is coming out? Unfortunate. That Spanish for unfortunate for Mers. <laughs> Oh, and oh, oh, did, good drop shot, good drop. Wasn't able to catch him coming out of the bathroom. And that's both of the Gorillas players down now. Did they not know he's still in there? Kill him, kill him. Gravity there finding the go. opportunity to go ahead and get his kill. And ah. that'll end it, but here we go. It comes down to points. So people at home, every single kill is a point. Every thousand damage by an individual player is a point. So looking at the top there, uh, Gravity has one point. Adventurer, who we're watching on MERS, looks like we'll have two points. I think that is a Bucks win. I think. Let's I go. The power of pizza will ascend you to victory. We will give you an answer here shortly. As soon as that scoreboard is updated, hopping out of the game. Yep. 
Uh, well, yep, and that is a Bucks victory. Let's go, Bucks. Good job, you guys. That's three. And remember now, like that is a win in a sports game, a shooter, and a strategy game. Yes, Yu Gi Oh was an FF, but it is still a win nonetheless. And that automatically bodes well. I think, yes, best case scenario, you're winning all in one category. Yep. But the shooters have been pretty contentious. The sports games have been close, and I think a lot of people might have expected as well, with really the fighting games being the one area where their premier fighter and Mr. Fear not being here, I think, is going to play a huge role either way you, you look at it. Yep, it sure does. But we will be back in 15 minutes. We are going into the half. We will see you guys after halftime.
Dripping water, A2O in my timepiece, VVS. A blinding light, make them look Chinese. In the form mode, pick me up, be my dime piece. Don't start no trouble, two glocks, them bitches sign me. Blue bills, what we chasing every day. Run them over, if they try to get up in your way. Tell her hustle hard, I want the cream, I get the cake. Hustle hard, I want the cream, I get the cake. See they glare, but they know to stay up in their lane. Smoking moon rock, cookies only, I'll take to the face. Niggas wanna rock, Cyclops red beam will make a shape. Now the block is high, oh, what niggas dying every day. 20s, 50s, 100s, when all of these in abundance. When it comes to the women, these hoes know I can't love them. Only chase and chase the back, just so the head can't get enough of it. Try to take my money, S and W, leave you suffering. Why they wanna kill me for the cream? Only thing I'm trying to chase is my dream. Is my dream. I'm a stacky, stretchy, flipping, hating on me because I'm different. It won't hurt to get the digits, yeah, I mean. Dripping water, A2O, in my timepiece, VVS. Yes. A blinding light, make them look Chinese. In the form mode, pick me up, be my dime piece. Yes. Don't start no trouble, two glocks, them bitches sign me. Yes. Blue bills, what well, we chasing every day. Uh -huh. Run them over, if they try to get up in your way. My tell way. her hustle hard. I want the cream, I get the cake. Hustle hard. I want the cream, I get the cake. Hey! 
logging and games, we lit the squadron. Balling, dodging, these news they hit, we got them. Falling, groveling, we lit in any room. Server a tent, then when they see us, we stand. We never leak till we end, leak till we champ. Once we logging and games, we lit the squadron. Balling, dodging, these news they hit, we got them. Falling, groveling, so we lit in any room. Server a tent, then when they see us, we stand. We never leak till we end, leak till we champ. Speed them advance. For the moment we in it, we kill it and leave no chance to hell we claim. That's not how we move in the wheel of games. Ultimate gamers and still the change. Shaking the industry, plenty she's winning our team. We some killing bees, killing these new bodies too. We be playing trees, load the artillery, hold the hostility, boosting these trophies. We doing, we in it all in on the blind opposition and misery. Leaking they dwell, call us the winners cause we never fail. This is the team that's making a way on the streams, growing and hanging below. Ultimate end game must leave a million degrees. Yeah, this is where games go pro. All right, everybody, welcome, welcome back <laughs> to the UEL. My name is Strix, and I'm back here with AV. And we are getting into the second half of the Gorillas versus Bucks, three to ten, with the two men still coming out here putting on a show with Rocket League coming up. Hey, next. man, listen, let me tell you right now, both Gravity and Pizza Man have definitely impressed me so much being a two man and at least getting themselves uh three wins one was a forfeit but uh they still were able to win madden which was a crazy good game and then call of duty being able yes. to pull that out and then the other game was a forfeit from the bucks which i mean from uh, the yeah for the gorillas which was Yu-Gi-Oh. um which Honestly, makes sense. Like I said before, Yu-Gi-Oh is a very heavily coached game. I do feel like, regardless of of the fact that it's just the two of them, I do think that they had uh, the opportunity to actually win that legit without it being a forfeit. And I will even say, going into half, one thing that also impressed me was as I was, you know, handling everything during half, uh, Peace Man ran up to, to Hollywood and was like, "Hey, it's our setup, right?" And he and Gravity started pulling up Rocket League on the PCs they needed to and making sure everything was set up and ready to go, showing that their head is still really in this game. They're not counting anything out, um, and they're ready just to play and I think continue to maybe put on a show here. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Even when I went up to uh, Pizza Man and I asked him, I was just like, bro, what was going through your head through that Madden? He was just like, I was just pressing buttons. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying, pressing buttons in the five picks 
three pick sixes. Hey, man, he did his thing. And also, you know, Gravity, I, I got the opportunity to talk with him as well. He's he's a strategist. Mm -hmm. He knows strategy games. He he plays a little bit of Overwatch. He does play Super Smash Brothers, like you were saying. Um, so a lot of the fighting games and everything, mm -hmm. he was not, he did not know how to play a lot of the fighting games coming into the league. And it's like I said, he I, I thought he was more of a shooter, but he's not. He does play Fortnite. Um, he does some, play some Fortnite, but not really strong in it. But you know, comes in as a strategist, and typically what we see with strategy players is more of Excuse me. Uh, more of strategy when it comes to strategy. Obviously, we don't have a, a crazy amount of strategy games, but he is like a lot of the strategy game players typically turn into really strong fighters or either really strong shooters. I th I agree. I think that they're <clears throat> it's a very uh, strong multi genre skill. The strategy category specifically, the skills that come out of that. Um, it either lets you like in shooting games, how do I take fights? How should I be positioning myself? What is going to give me the best chance of winning? Mm -hmm. um, in fighting games, it actually comes down to coming up with like the game plan and how do you dissect what's happening? It's really funny because I look at all the categories and on the wheel, you start to see those interdisciplinary measures. And one game I would love to actually see is StarCraft. But I was out there and talking as well, and Global specifically also called out the CTR, maybe wanted to show off some practice. So got a few different games and maybe to look forward to here in the second half. With setup being on the Bucks side, we got to make sure that we can get these Gorillas and the Bucks players in. It'll be a two versus One. whatever. I think they're just going for the reset yep. here, maybe saying like, hey, Global, you've been putting in some practice, show off a little bit. Depending on game mode as well, that could matter a lot. Mm -hmm. um, Personally, I would take Heat Seekers if I'm the Bucks. If I see one person, I take Heat Seekers, and like you can have two people defend mm -hmm. uh, to the best of their ability, and uh, it just goes faster and faster every time it gets hit. But um, like like you said, the the gorillas are just putting in Global Figure um, just so that they can go ahead and get that full reset. So depending on the next game, they have each and every person that is available without leaving anyone out. I mean, with the Bucks, they are there as a forfeit. Yep, I knew it. As soon as I saw the Bucks go up. So, um, the Gorillas starting this half off with a forfeit for Rocket League, giving the, uh, I think I said Gorillas, uh, but. Yeah, yeah, you said it right. Gorillas. Okay. Gorillas forfeit. And then, you know, giving the Bucks the opportunity to get their fourth dub, Dragon Ball Fighters, uh, a game I would personally forfeit with Global Figure going in. <laughs> Global just has some magic in this game, man. He We have seen multiple times where he's on one hit gone but never forgotten and managing to take and claw these wins back with that super saiyan four go gogeta gogeta mm -hmm. vegeta and gogeta i gotta remember the difference but yeah gogeta you know red the monkey looks, man the one who looks more like goku they really look the same i hey. this whole this whole thing about yeah one looks more like vegeta i'm like so one has a widow's peak is what you're telling me no they don't exactly no they don't <laughs> that's the difference between the two no, they don't the hair all stands up the same <laughs> Uh, but I would actually be interested to see here. I know, I think Gravity maybe has touched Dragon Ball Fighters before. He's played it a couple of times, I know, in the league. So the ga the type of um, games or the type of uh, fighters that I really see uh, Pizza Man play fighting or playing mm -hmm. um, are more of those uh, range characters or zoners, as what the, the fighting game community would typically call them. So uh, when they play King of Fighters, I didn't really agree with the dinosaur choice because I feel like for pizza that he's not really big into being too too close to their opponent uh to the opponent so he typically is not like a grappler or anything that kind of stands more for you know Mr. Fear he kind of goes for those type of uh fighters or characters so I felt like in in the King of Fighters um matchup I felt like pizza was kind of out of his element when it came to you know, playing against someone who's relatively like a, a wrestler or, or a grappler. Kind of, yeah, like to your point, those ranges that you're normally comfortable in, like, oh, you're half screen or further away. Mm -hmm. I use these big buttons to stop you from coming in. And maybe a character like Whip might be a little bit more useful. She has some ability to get you in and out of those ranges as well, but at the same time has the ability to just kind of take up space with her attacks. Um, and... It is a little bit more comfortable because when you're in close to somebody, it's kind of this scramble where everybody is trying to swing at each other. 
but I am interested. It looks like we might be actually getting some Dragon Ball fighters. So I'm really happy to see here. Oats the L also remember that sweep we had from him in Tekken 8. Mm -hmm. So maybe bring in some of that fighting prowess now into the world of DBFZ. And we might get a chance to, to maybe just maybe see something special here. And I'm happy and I want to see uh, Kenny and Kevin. I think, I think they both play some Mortal Kombat. So they do have some mm -hmm. fighting game prowess as well. So we might just have a great game on our hands. You never really know what could happen in some of these fighting games yeah no you you really you really don't know but regardless if you do or don't like if you're going to be a player or a in gamer here at the ueo um one thing that um we see a lot of is if you don't play fighters yeah there's there's no way you're going to be able to, like this like so many of our in gamers here don't, typically don't play fighters but like fighting games are a huge part of what the uel is it, fighters and shooters if i were to give just some really quick for, i agree first of all you're one of the you're one of the two almost every person in this league either has experience in fighters or shooters and i think that comes from the current makeup of the wheel as well we have 33 games on the wheel if i take the fighting game and the shooting category that is 15 of 33. Almost half of the games on the wheel fall into one of those two categories. Eight being fighters, seven being shooters. So you have to have some proficiency in one of those two genres, generally speaking. I think there's a lot of value in having racers, sports players, and strategy players because those are the games that are less typical, right? Yeah. Um, most notably, obviously, Billy the Goat in StarCraft has almost guaranteed a strategy game win for his team every single time mm -hmm. it's up and available um some of the sports players have proven basically 1v3 1v4 are able to find these wins as well for their teams and so when you have that presence it's super useful but you have to be able to play at least some in one of those two categories maybe not always both there's a i love a running joke that like hey most fighting game players aren't great shooters mm -hmm. uh and funnily enough, most shooters aren't just immediately great fighting game players, but part of this league forces you to realize how you can flip those skills on either side. Well, I, I feel like, you know, with that with that mindset, it, it again, it goes to show at like who's truly like an end gamer, you know, here. Because you you have to realize that when when you say, Oh, most fighters aren't shooters and the most shooters aren't fighters, that kind of defeats you as 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 a like a, a gamer who uh, doesn't who's not able to adapt, especially in a fast-paced setting like the UEL, right? So if you can play fighting games and then you can't swap from fighting games to shooting games, you've already you you've already kind of lost. Like at that point, you're you're a liability um, to the to the team. And in my opinion, and, and that's just that's just how I and feel about that situation. I think I agree to to a limited extent. And I say that to a limited extent as we get in here. I agree because I think some players are recognizing. I'm not going to be a Billy, a cat, a Hollywood, a, a jury. I'm not playing all five categories to a top tier level. To a fighter, to a fighter. Immediately going right back in. And I, we will get you here in one second who's on which side. I'm going to take a wild shot in the dark that glue. Oh, we see the Janimba actually is X ray Kevick. So we see Kevik here putting in a lot of pressure. Zamasu coming out. A very difficult player to actually play and and to understand. And so the gorillas do manage to take out one of the Bucks. Believe that to be G Ravity first. And now we're gonna be looking at Pizza Man, I think, on the go Jita. Yep, you're absolutely correct. And Pizza Man already going in, shooting that Kamehameha right across the screen. Not able to really handle that pressure that is going to be coming from Kevin. I'm not calling him Kevin. His name's Kevin. From coming from Kevin. That's my um, boy Kevin. Okay. Nice job using the movement oh. to avoid the stomps. And again, not relying and not doing anything crazy. We talked to this about Pizza Man before. Having these auto combos and these opportunities to just be able to get damage and make sure. But this grab from Janimba is going so far. And that being both of the Bucks players down last. But not least is their third player game ending there the third pc was unfortunately had to be in the game for it to start that is a, another <laughs> we still got a timeout going <laughs> with 
a sweep by X Ray Kevick. Shout out to him, DBFZ, on the board for his team. Street Fighter Five. I know you really enjoy we Street Fighter Street Five. Fighter, we were playing Street Fighter Six, so uh, you can only get to five via six and six to five. Shut your mouth. But anyway, um, honestly, when it comes and when it comes to Street Fighter Six, we are going to see. I, I feel like we're going to see a lot of um, modern controls coming from, you know, the from the Bucks because modern is is a really good way for for people who don't really play classic who want to be able to compete you know with with uh modern controls you do take a little bit less damage a lot of the options that you typically have with uh classic are not really optional there so i mean it's there's still a learning curve it's not to say that oh it's super easy but you know modern controls does make it easier for someone who wants to get into, you know, competitive fighting games. Yeah, and to that point, as a player and someone that has, like, talked to people about class or classic versus modern, I think the biggest boon to modern, and for people out there wondering why you should or shouldn't play modern, or why should I tell my teammates, modern lets people get the mindset about fighting games correct. Mm -hmm. When someone jumps at you, and in this case I'm going to use Gravity, who plays Guile, what do you do? You flash Flash kick. kick. When someone is full screen, what do you do? You sonic sonic boom. boom. Versus worrying about how do I do a charge input and do all of this, the idea of simplifying that down to a button impress or a, a, a button, a few button sequences, it has shown incredible boons. I will give a big shout out here to uh, Reaper's Cuddy um, out there. He's reached the top rank in the game using modern with his character. If Kimberly, if you. Take the time to learn, this is how I should handle fighting games, how I should think about the game, mm-hmm. and worry less about, oh, I have to hit this button to this button to this button. You can still compete with people that have been playing the game for years that may be worried more about, oh, I can do this super cool combo that requires me to hit these tight links, but I haven't thought about how am I going to win the game or how am I going to get to that combo. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And, you know, the crazy thing is, speaking on Cuddy, you have to remember that he started out playing Ed, who was the very first modern mm-hmm. control player in Street Fighter V. And he took that information and he just turned Boom. it into Street Fighter VI, right? When he got over Street Fighter VI, he was like, I just need to find the character that I feel the most comfortable with. And that's and that's where he was able to get to you know, the highest rank that there is. And it shows just how dominant that you can be just by playing on those modern controls. And a lot of the fighters that we play now have changed over to modern controls. It's it's one of those things that fighting games for the longest time were a genre that just, you had a lot of information you just had to learn and pick up on, along with mechanical things. Mm-hmm. Like, you, can you do a quarter circle, a Z motion? Can you do all these different things? But part of making it more accessible has meant that, hey, I think the deeper level of fighting games, which is how do I outthink my opponent? Yeah. Like, fighting games, and you mentioned strategy players being good at them generally, is because it becomes a situation of how do I put myself in a position to win. And here we go. We have the Canon Classic versus the Modern Ryu, which is going to be Pizza Man over here on Player 2 side. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Pizza, I feel like, is playing, like you said, on Modern, and Pizza is just going to do exactly what he needs to do. He's going to press whatever button so that he can try the best to get himself out of that corner, stop that pressure from hitting him, and then he's going to throw Hadoukens. He's going to throw projectiles. Boom. And all of this damage ends up mattering here. OTL using the Ken to great effect, though. Mm -hmm. And Pizza Man just being able to block. um, He sees an attack incoming. He knows to press back. He did lose that. So Pizza Man is now out. We're going to have Gravity come right on in. And I believe Gravity, like you said, is going to be playing Guile. Global looking to maybe stare down. Gravity maybe trying to put a little bit of pressure on the player here. But once again, those sonic booms immediately come out with Gravity setting up his positioning and where he wants to be on screen. But immediately O to the L figures it out, but goes into the power up super. Mm -hmm. And if he can re-establish this space, it'll be great for him. But O to the L looking for the confirm. Nice block. It was slightly late. But the throw to immediately challenge. 
I want gravity to set up with these sonic booms. Force O to the L to jump. And using the parry to nullify those projectiles showing that O to the L's played him some fighting games, and that'll be a O to the L sweep. Mm -hmm. Ending off the Street Fighter Six. All right. So um not very much to talk about there. Um, like I said, when it comes to you know Street Fighter. As you guys saw, you know, using the modern controls definitely helps you get the, the get the combos that you want because of the auto combos. Like that's something that like in gamers and and just all fighting game community just to be just to to realize is that sometimes you have to put your pride aside when it comes to when it comes to playing other people and being able to do an auto combo. If you got to do an auto combo, bro, you got to do an auto combo. The amount of people in this league that I've talked to and even had to have that entire moment of like, look, I give myself one or two times. And some days I'm just like, cool, my execution is not there today. I'm not. If if you as a fighting game player are saying that you beat somebody because you can do a quarter circle and they can't. What happens and all of a sudden you can't do that and you lose? Are you the better fighting game player when all it required you to do was, hey, they're jumping in, they're throwing I saw, again, credit to O to the L there. Like, he was jumping over the fireballs. He was blocking what he needed to block, and he was punishing with effective tools. Mm -hmm. Yet, we're not talking about optimal punishing, but he's winning the rounds. I've said this to one of my teammates, and I only bring this up because getting frustrated, things weren't necessarily going their way. And the only thing I said to him was, hey, optimal combos are the ones that help you win. Mm hmm that that is all it is. I yes, we can talk about optimal and this and that. In the UEL, a lot of the times when it's not this battle of inches, but a battle of yards, it matters that can you just hit a combo? If you can hit a combo, great. If you can use that auto combo to good effect, great. If you can anti air effectively, great. That's what will be the biggest boon and I matter. agree with you there. And with that being said, speaking on if you're going to, uh, is, is not based off inches, it's based off yards. We're going to go ahead and get into this need for speed to see how many yards whoever the racer is, is going to get. Are they going to get away? I just thought about would I want to be cops or racers in a 2v4? Racer. I, yeah. Uh. Here's, here's the reason why you would want to be um, a racer um, in this situation, having only two people, mm -hmm. right? Uh, as, I mean, regardless, it's still hard. As a racer, one of the things that you, you're you going to want to do, like your biggest goal is to get away. Now, now all you really are are focusing on is trying to get away, and then you have one other person trying to distract or whatever it is. The rest of it is really the cops destroying themselves because they're going to put a roadblock up. Somebody's going to put a roadblock up, and either one or two things is going to happen. You're going to get through that roadblock. One or three things are going to happen. They're going to get through that roadblock following you, or they're going to put that roadblock up and hit the rest of the roadblock. Yeah, and we've seen that. That sometimes I actually I I, I, I was I was a little bit skeptical. Because it can be really difficult if, if those, if like you have three cops on top of you, mm. how are you going to get out as a racer? But the idea here is like, don't put yourself in that position. And, and if you're the person running, let them have mistakes, take good turns, set up yourself in, in situations and call on the best ally in need for speed history, the mm. pedestrians to maybe uh, just park in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I agree with you, actually. Thank you for, oh God, I didn't even, I, okay. Now well, I want to see if we're going to be able to see that. And it looks like you might have just called it out that the Bucks are going to be the racers. They seeing in that strategic mind you mentioned gravity having, maybe seeing the situation and having that same insight. Yeah, I mean, it, if you go as a cop, you also have to realize that, yes, your only goal is to catch the racer. But with with you only being two of you, it's so easy because you have to do so much damage, not only to yourself, but to the other team. And if you don't, you know, if you DNF, if you can knock yourself out too early, then that just it's, it's too many complications that you would have as a cop than as a racer. As a racer, your goal is either you can get away or you can get caught. Airby. 
A, a or B. With the cops, it's I got E, you know. My goal is to catch up to the most wanted. Now I have to do damage to the most wanted. And, and I also need to watch out for all of the obstacles, even my own. Yeah, because legitimately, it's like, all right, hey, you're two of you, right? Mm -hmm. How many spike strips are you going to use on the other three racers? How many EMPs are you going to try to waste getting there? Are you going to burn your turbos just to catch up? Yep. And every single mistake you make brings you closer. Now, I think you found the key that the Bucks need to need to open the door to victory mm -hmm. uh, going into to need for speed, which I think we'll be getting into here shortly. I'm guessing it's going to be a technical uh, a, a technical. It might be harder to get a bunch of bots in for. Uh, the need for speed. I wonder how that how that's gonna like work. Um, and My wor imagine one of the PCs without a player on it is most wanted. Well, I mean, what they can do is one of the two could then switch over to that PC. We're about to find out. <laughs> hey, and let's go. So, funnily enough, Need for Speed is one of the games where I don't think you need the bots to start it. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, but here we. Go most one, it seems to be Pizza Man and Dead by Daylight coming up. A game where they can absolutely send in one player if it is their setup, and it should be most wanted is PC7, which is Pizza Man. And here we go, Pizza Man moving down the streets. We see the lights in his rear view, and we're gonna see this first big turn. I think is gonna decide a lot if he can make it pretty clean, he'll be able to get out here and doing a good job of avoiding nice drift. And Murs is hot in pursuit. No need for speed. Tries to hit him. Oh, and the screen by gravity. Yo, he is keeping up with Pizza Man. He is making sure that the other cops do not catch up. He did fall short there, but that is all right. Um, Really, really good. Honestly, really good job by Pizza Man right now. And the, the, the big question here that we're going to see as well is you mentioned that roadblock. The roadblock's been called in. So the first question is, does Pizza Man make it through it? Clearly, it doesn't look he is. But can he keep going? There's a lot of officers around him. Oh, it gets busted by PC1, which was Murs. Murs, I saw, I saw the way he was looking. Murs was like, nah, you're not getting away there. Don't even got a license. I, I've already verified that myself. And no honestly, license. I, it's something that I, I really love to see, and that was Pizza Man, even though he got busted, he still turned around, smile on his face. He I'm thought sorry. it was funny. Things happened. He ran into the roadblock. He ended up doing a lot of damage to himself and putting himself at a really, really bad spot. But, the, okay. And that, but that also shows good sportsmanlike conduct from everybody there. Um, like I say, they can either destroy themselves or he can destroy himself. And ultimately, the gorillas show why they are where they are. The lack of destruction on that road to Michigan. Yes, do Going it. That was good. <laughs> that was good. That was smooth. Yo, we got that road to Michigan, and then oh. it just fades right on in. Oh, oh look at that. Yo, Strix. No, uh, the gorillas. Transitions, though, transition of the year, good sir. No, Take gorillas that. are doing everything in their power to really clean up in these last few days. This road to Michigan has been heating up every single week. Every game has been huge every single game has had an implication on the standings and where people are going in um and all of these games matter because hey what happens when if the gorillas make that miracle that cinderella run and end up in the finals and they could be sitting across from any one of these northern teams in the dead by daylight match one happening now one happening on june 8th in grand rapids man it's gonna be a really 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 fun time um, and especially if you want to meet some of these players, some of us at the UEL, you want to understand like what we do, how we do things. This is the perfect time for you guys to come out, get to meet us in person, get to know a lot of these players, a lot of the production, a lot of everybody who's a part of the UEL. But AV, how would I do that? Oh, you can actually do, you see where it says tickets here, right mm -hmm. in the middle where that QR code is? You go ahead and scan that QR code. Get yourself, it'll take you right to where you need to go for the tickets. Get yourself some tickets. Come on out. Come enjoy this electrifying final game. These guys are competing for 100,000 
dollars this season alone we have the drafts coming up uh relatively soon so i am really looking forward to seeing how everybody is going to do at this game all right i am enjoying it uh and we will have a lot of fun going forward dbd is going to be a very interesting game uh dbd uh and no the tickets aren't pay-per-view you'll see the little qr code also pop up on the screen go ahead and scan that Ticketmaster, come on out to grand rapids and join us but dbd is a one versus four game so this ends up playing out to the bucks favor ultimately gravity as long as he's practiced and put some time in on killer should have an opportunity here to really put some pressure on to the gorillas who've shown themselves to be a pretty strong survivor team in their own right uh, DVD, the way it works here in the league, if you're wondering, you pick either Survivor or Killer. Then after Survivor or Killer, you then go ahead and select uh, Map. Who, whichever one doesn't pick Survivor or Killer gets Map, obviously. And uh, thank you for uh, swinging on a back bot. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, um, but yes, in DVD, um, the big things here, three was the magic number back in Texas. In this, it really comes down to two. If two Survivors get out, the game is won by the survivors. Mm -hmm. One survivor makes it a point situation. Um, and if there's all four killed, the killers go ahead, goes ahead and takes it. Goodness, goodness me. I just also want to. Uh, so we have, uh, it looks like gravity is going to be going in as the killer. Did you already mention that? I'm sorry. Yeah, I had you're, to step oh, away fine. for a second. Um, but one thing that I would like to uh, let everyone know is that. Um, I actually found out in the midst of me running around that uh, Pizza Man, for the first time today, drove a real car. You know, you saw how he did that turn in Need for Speed? He learned that today. I don't know if that's scarier. <laughs> <laughs> if if, if the, the, the fact that he did it in real life and then came and did it in Need for Speed <laughs> might be more terrifying. <laughs> I tried not to pick like, right, cool, yeah, So, yeah. I mean, he obviously doesn't know how to watch out for other cars, which is why he got caught. Mm, but mm, he true, at least true. knows how to make a turn. That's that's always the top tip. That, that shows you what the real life experience and to the people in the league, you might start worrying because every one of these races is only going to get better and better for Pizza Man <laughs> from here. He did a great, great job and again i'm super impressed by the bucks and i'm i'm mm -hmm. you know i might have a soft soft spot in my heart for bucks players just of course general. of course just in general and this dead by daylight that we might be getting into now i'm noticing you mentioned it for the bucks so i'm gonna go ahead and and say something here hey gorillas why do y'all have the same number of timeouts as a team with two people both are down to one timeout left and we know what happens when those timeouts run out forfeits so the way it works here at the uel each team has five forfeits per game each time that you use a forfeit you'll see those numbers count right on down it says ff that was a weird transition thank you sammy oh my god i'm going right. to kill mars so oh. much i cannot believe that this I get it. I need you to it's right not on. even centered yeah. properly mars i'm gonna kill him what do these what do these these things mean that I'm looking at? All right, so, Bro, um, so before the game, you're able to burn different offerings to uh, <laughs> change uh, small little things about the map. Sometimes how far hooks are mm. apart. Um, sometimes where the hatch has a chance to spawn, you can really push it to a specific direction. Mortal Kombat coming up next, and we'll get a chance to see exactly what killer gravity is playing here in one second. We are going to be on the newest map in Dead by Daylight which opens up a lot of doors to possibilities. Maybe you go ahead and see that new, <laughs> new killer. I can't stop looking at the photo. Oh, no, but we're actually I, on a police station. Okay, Raccoon City. Very, very interesting. And, ah. All right, he's using, what, what, what killer is this? This is the Huntress, and he's using the build where uh, he can instantly down people with her hatchet, but only has one, one hatchet axe. to throw. Oh, okay, okay. It's a very high risk, high reward build. If you're really on point with these hatchets, you can actually snowball a map and a match really quickly. Moving around has his first target in sight. Let's see if he's going to be able to hit this. Not Isn't able. able to. Now he's going to have to reload before he's able to throw any more 
And I think the gorillas might just want to go ahead and get this chase anyway, trying to maybe distract them while they work on something else. A uh, big swing isn't good. able to get there. Nice job not contesting the pallet. You should be getting bloodless. I think here mm. manages to stun him and slide over, but does get a hit in, which oh, does ensure that he gets the first down of the game. Go ahead and yoink. Okay. And so that, that is definitely global. Um, and I think in this situation, this is definitely something that global typically does not play. Mm. So, uh, I mean, it's, it may be lack of knowledge here. So that could be the reason why he kind of put himself in that corner. You saw that he was in a really, really odd position there, right? And it's probably because, again, he doesn't, people may not know this map. Yes, and there was a lot of progress already on that generator. Now, my question is, does uh, Gravity know he needs to go to a locker to refill these hatchets? He's had quite a few opportunities to go ahead and refill it, even in that moment, kind of knowing that the, the opponents are going to be able to get themselves off the hook, jumping down here. Following this blood has a clear line and understanding of exactly where the survivors are going. If you had a hatchet here, that's a pretty nice angle to try to take a shot here. A lot of straight, narrow hallways for him to be able to use, uh, the, to throw the hatchet. And with him not having one, I think that's putting him in a really bad spot. Don't get taken to pallet town. Here. I'm happy there that he just committed kind of to this pallet and said, hey, I'm going to, like, swing early. If you're by this pallet, there's a chance you get hit. Once again, looking, checking, making sure nobody is around is going to go ahead and pick up Global once again. This is Global's second hook. He only has one more opportunity before he is out of the game. One generator being done now for the survivors means they are in a great position. All right, let's go ahead and see here now traditionally with the huntress i don't believe you take both of the eerie add-ons maybe gravity is is cooking up something a little bit different here he has one survivor on the hook and if i was the gorillas players i would honestly be telling my teammates like hey that first save while it's good and if they're able to reset is fine but they actually could have left global on there you have about a minute between stages mm. and that extra minute gives you time to pop another gin now two of five Already done. There was a mistake over there on one of the other gins. This gin that he kicked before they managed to get as well. He knows that someone should be somewhere around here. Has eyes on him. Is not going to let him get to this pallet. And is just going to play this game of cat and mouse. Now they're moving to another pallet. They're Don't just going to keep <laughs> running between the two. Swinging a little bit early. I think just a little bit jumpy here. And we have Murs here. Please get off of his feedback camera. Him with his cat running away, trying to get home to his furry friend. It's, it, it's different, it's nice. but he's found another player, and it's Global once again. If Global goes down and gets hooked here, that's one player already out, setting up gravity for a possible win, but these gins are being done so, so quickly. Didn't manage to get the hit there, managed to stun. Now Global's off to the races. Running and running and running. And running, running, and running, running. Back down into the basement. Is he still being chased? He looks like he's managed to lose chase here. But I'm guessing here, Gravity should be seeing these scratch marks. Should have an idea of at least the direction he went. But maybe they just have him on duty to just kind of... Hey, you're getting tunneled at this point, buddy. Sorry, but we might just have to let you go. We need three out. Starting to work here on one of the last gens. One of his teammates, two of his teammates come in here. Maybe you're going to group up to go a little bit further. And now we're back on the killer. And now he's found three of them. This might be the worst situation possible for the gorillas. Two of them now have damage. And looking once again to get to bait him out here isn't able to get the swing here probably a big stun but isn't able to throw the pallet before he goes down this is amazing he's getting his first hook on the second survivor remember global is still in a very dangerous situation 
if he gets hit one more time now and goes down, that's one player out. They have to come save this other player. That means only two can be working on these last two generators. I'm just really surprised at the fact that he hasn't gone for another hatchet to be able to throw. Like we said in the beginning, it's gotten to a point where he's going down all of these like linear hallways. He's, and so he has the opportunity to actually like throw the hatchets, but he doesn't. It's it's something that I, as someone that has played DBD and learning more and more DBD, uh, DBD players, I love them. Um, but sometimes they're in the kitchen a little bit too much. They cook a little bit, <laughs> little bit, little, little bit too much. And uh, I think Gravity here might have had a really big idea with the build, or maybe whoever worked on the build had a big idea, but was unable to really finish up exactly what they need to do. Now with the last generator being done, and they healed up the person that was on the hook, they're looking to try to get all four players out here Gravity willing to take these swings now has bloodlust. Great job baiting out the pallet and baiting the jump over. He might be able to get this player. That is X Ray Kevin, I believe. One has to run twice. away. Let's see. Can he do it? He might he looks like he maybe had lost him there for a second, but they're back at this door. He's led him to his teammate trying to open the way out. But now cutting off, I think they, what they're trying to do, this other door is open. All four of the Gorillas players might be able to escape here. That's one. Can I get two, three, and four to get to that door, please? We saw two players there. That's two out. One more player. And that is game from what the Game Master just wants to make it across the threshold and are out. That does instantly in the game. But I think they're going for all four players. Oh, looking like the game is actually done and signed, sealed, delivered. Those players, unfortunately, will see daylight for the hopes of the Bucks. But MK1 coming up next. And we've seen in these fighting games, they've been a little bit closer maybe than some people might expect. And managing to dodge having both of the twins available to play it could be a boon for them. But having Global Figure kind of there as a as a good another option does put them in a tough situation. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. I'm going to go back to the Dead by Daylight. Um, I, I think that uh, Gravity was really uncomfortable with the build that he had. Um, maybe it's not something that he typically plays. I don't think he plays Dead by Daylight. I think that what ended up happening there is he, he made a build, but he didn't understand how to use the build, right? So again, we know that the Huntress typically has the hatchets. Huntress, the strategy for the Huntress, at least from what I've seen, is to get to make sure that you have a hatchet in hand at all times. Right, because you th it's a it's a big threatening tool just as much as using it. Because mm -hmm. think of some of those times where they went, "I'm gonna run to this pallet," and you just step back and you go, "Cool, throw the pallet, mm -hmm. do it, do the thing," mm -hmm. yeah. and I just throw it at you. But once he used the one and wasn't refilling, all of a sudden you lose a lot of power, and that's the identity of those colors in DVD, right? Yeah. He was just chasing, and at that point, not having any more hatchets, you you don't have the ability to threaten. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that. DVD is a game that you need to play a little bit yourself. Learn. They are already in more. Are they ready to go? And it's a smoke versus smoke matchup. We'll find out who's player one and who's player two here in just a second, ladies and gentlemen. Um, looks like player one is Kenny and player two is Gravity. We got UFC coming up next. And Kenny with the early lead here, dealing a bunch of damage. Yep, I'm just we just sitting over here watching the YouTube video. Yo. So these are the bread and butters Yo. of the smoke. I tried to tell you that they play. I tried to tell you that they play. MK is one of those games that uh, they have a strong understanding of. Both of the twins do and have the ability to really play. And MK is different than a lot of the other fighters, funnily enough, in feel and how the game flows. I've seen a lot of players that are great at other fighting games or even good, either not enjoy or not be amazing at Mortal Kombat. That's a 40 Two percent combo right there. Almost half the life gone in one singular combo. He nice finally breaks the breaker, but is now gonna have to find an opportunity. And I think he got put right back into the blender. Yep. I don't think that gravity really knows very much about 
Oh, you can continue combos after somebody died in Mortal Kombat. It's, this Mortal Kombat is, is the most instinct. It's the most disrespectful game. I'm trying to let you know. They could combo you forever <laughs> and then be like, cool, now I'm going fatality. And now we got Pizza Man going in. I do believe Pizza Man may be choosing someone who, uh, again, yeah, he feels more comfortable with someone who's going to give him that range, somebody who he can, he can use to zone, um, or Omni-Man. Okay. And so, like, we we see, and that's typically what we see of uh, Pizza Man. Yep, he's going to try his best to zone, to freeze, as Sub much as he possibly can. Yeah. Sub-Zero is a, a solid choice for people because, like, he has some good just trap high-low 50-50 options that you just have to deal with. Uh, against a player like Kenny, it's going to be big for us to see how well is he able to. They do have O to the L in the back as well. Uh, I think the other issue with Mortal Kombat that I don't know if they have anybody to tell them on the Bucks, mm -hmm. it's a button-to-block game compared to every other fighter that we have, meaning you have to hold that, that button if you want to block any of the damage or options coming at you. And I think this is one of those situations that Peach Man might not be as familiar, but gets the Fatal Blow off. It ends up getting blocked. Again, I don't, and I, I, again, just knowledge, uh, game knowledge right now. Pizza, he may know that Sub-Zero is in the game. He knows that uh, Sub-Zero can freeze. Um, he has those projectiles. I don't think that he knows how to use them. Yes. Uh, and I mean, you can, you, it's, it's, it shows in the gameplay now. He's only able to do may, one, maybe two things back to back. Um, and it's just how he, he looks uncomfortable. Right with with his with the way that he's playing right now. I think that is a lot of Mortal Kombat. Funny enough, Mortal Kombat, it, it feels different, mm -hmm. which is the biggest, I think, difficulty most people find in playing it. Playing something like Guilty Gear, I mm -hmm. think you can kind of, you have a little bit more freedom in hitting buttons. All right, all right, all right. We he's get already it. dead. We get it, Kevin. <laughs> already dead. Is he gonna? Are we gonna see the fatality now? No. No. Kevin goes ahead and just ends the game off. Yep. And, you know, it with, you know, with Mortal Kombat, it is a game that, as you saw, something that Pizza Man is not really familiar with, um, puts him in a really tight situation there. Very uncomfortable game to play um, for, for him. I do feel like uh, with Gravity, he went in expecting a different type of feel when it comes to MK. MK, right? So, I mean, it's one of those games, man. I I I used to play a lot of different fighters myself. Mortal oh. Kombat was one of the games that I never truly uh really had a good understanding of or really wanted to learn. That's really interesting to know. So we're gonna get to see you in that pro versus staff game, right? You absolutely will not. So <laughs> these end gamers do not know how to trash talk, and I am not gonna be a part of that. So <laughs> anyway, outside of that nonsense, uh, UFC coming up, and UFC is a game that, funnily enough, can work to your benefit. Um, the biggest thing is gonna be somebody that is helping Pizza Man maybe with stamina management. But as long as he's able to go in here, I think he'll be able to find those opportunities to win. Hey, listen. Mm -hmm. Pizza Man don't need to know about stamina management. Pizza Man is the strongest. All right? He's got this. It's going against Murs. It's an easy dub for Pizza Man. Pizza Man, I believe in you, bro. Murs, you got a cat to get home to, bro. <laughs> Yo, don't even, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, this should be hopefully a good matchup. I want to see how much time uh, Murray has put into the game. A little bit sad to see not see Global go in because, uh, you know, uh, the, strat the, 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 excuse me, the sports game that is UFC might just want to be a fighting game. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. It's pretty like much. throwing hands, but in real life, let's go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But um, again, this, this match in itself has been a, a really good match. Honestly, with the Bucks being able to at least get four wins with two people, two end gamers who have one pizza man has been here for a little bit, and then a rookie on top of that. The improvement from the both of them, you know, and regardless of the team that they're playing, they still got four wins, even in uh, a five v two deficit. Yes. 
And they're finding these wins. And I, I think I've said this before about some of the Bucks gameplay, especially in these games where there are even numbers or some of the, the less just team reliant games, they've always been able to perform, mm -hmm. which speaks to the level of talent on that roster, mm -hmm. right? When I look at the Gorillas, it's not just that they have talent on the roster. They've had time to synergize and gel and figure out how each other plays. And all of a sudden, you go from five individually talented players to one organized, coordinated, and talented team. And Pizza Man and Gravity are like, hey, when you just play us, when we go raw skill for skill, I can beat you. Mm -hmm. And here's, here's another thing that I like to, like to talk about as well. Like, so many people have given up. So many of the, the in-gamers who have been on the Bucks this season, a lot of them being rookies have given up on the team hence why they're in the situation that they're in now right and one of the biggest things is i'm tired of losing but my question to you and to all of the end gamers out there have you truly exhausted all of your options out there no because and I, I've, I've heard it uh from from a lot of the the bucks but i've also heard it from other end gamers you yeah. know regarding like I'm just tired of losing. I 100% get it. Like once you go from season to season to season to season, when it, you know it's all all losses, right? Um, that still doesn't mean that your team is bad. That just means that you need to work with your team more, or it's just not working out. If it's not working out, then it's not working out. But my like, are have you truly exhausted everything? Have you exhausted the fact that it could be? You as a player, it could be your team as a player because nobody's going to look at themselves and is like, I'm doing wrong. That's one of those situations that there, there's a common thing that's been said kind of in the league um, with players coming out and saying like, oh, well, like nobody can 1v4 this game, 1v5 this game. And I'm like, we're in gamers and we're meant to be different, but I guarantee you right now I could go grab any quote unquote professional Overwatch player and they'll 1v5 any game in this league, period. They'll, they'll 1v5 Overwatch especially. The issue is finding the way to do that in every game. Yep. In those fighting games, guess what? If you individually as a player become good enough, at this point, we've seen Global now go into teams of fighters and manage to find wins, right? The idea that it's like, oh, I am, and I think the real answer here, if I'm being honest with you, is that what they don't want to admit is I'm not having fun anymore and things are becoming difficult and it's not as fun when I'm not able to do the fun part anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not just the, ha ha. Hey, hey I, I get to just like style on people. I get to make a highlight reel. I'm getting the highlight reel made of me. Mm -hmm. And those are those moments where yeah, you have to go back and don't just figure out where the disconnect is. If your teammates aren't up to snuff, work with them to in those areas that they're weak. Mm -hmm. And then realize that if you want that to be the case, and I say this to anybody, if you want to be the anchor, if you want to be a pass to herb level player, if you talk to her about any game in UEL, the buck stops with him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't his teammates' fault. It wasn't the game's fault. It wasn't the rules' fault. It wasn't any of that. It was, I wasn't good enough. I didn't perform well enough. I didn't perform to the level that I needed to. Yeah, I can't necessarily win all 33 games by myself, mm -hmm. but the games I was in for that I lost, we now have, I can say, uh, multiple players have gone 15 and 0. By the way, in UEL, if you win 17 games, you win. Mm -hmm. There are 33 games on that wheel, meaning there were two players that were able to almost secure a game by themselves. There, there are players that have gone 13 and 0, 10 and 0, 11 and 0. Like, what I'm saying to you is there's room to improve, and everybody in a perfect world wants to play for the winning team. Yeah, 100%. And, the, like, here's, here's the thing. Here's what I love about Global Figure. When uh, the Gorillas first started out, um, and they were, at least this season, and they were taking those L's literally back-to-back, -back, like, Global went and was just like, what can I do to make my team better? Right? He asked those questions, and he didn't ask them to me. I'm not going to tell him. I don't know how. But um, 
you know, he went, he, I think he went to Hollywood. And he was just like, what can I do to make myself, to, to make my team better? It's not more like, what can I do to make my, to, to, to get these, all of these guys to be, but like, what, what, as, as someone who's good at fighters, what do I need to do so that I can make the rest of my team catch up? Yeah. You know, and being able to take on that type of leadership role is what a lot of these teams need instead of everyone, not everyone, instead of a lot of the end gamers being, yo, I played my games. I played my games, but you still lost, bro. I did my job, but you still lost. You, you did your job to lose? It's Come on, man. This is the thing, this is the thing about the gaming. That, that is the biggest change from when you step in this building. And I'm going to say this to the gamers because not all the gamers play organized sports, right? Yeah. Not everybody played yeah. it growing up. But like there's that whole cliche of there's no I in team. We win and we lose together as a unit. The idea that I think I have to – I want to say to people is just like, Cool. If you, I will look at you and say, if you tell me I did my job, I'm like, oh, you won every single game you went in for. Oh, but like in Overwatch, I'm like, hey, as a tank, you can dictate the entire pace of the game. You can create those situations. In as we see right now, UFC. Have you been paying attention to how much people have been getting submitted this season? Are you? Do you know how submissions work in UFC? Do you know how to fight it? Can you step into a ring with the likes of Cat, with Nexus, uh, with these top players in the league, Billy, and know that, hey, if they try to submit me, if they try to end the game by doctor's decision, do you know how to deal with that and Halo being the next game coming up? And if you haven't, no, you haven't exhausted all your options. Nope. Uh, so it looks like the Gorillas are in the red gloves and green shorts. So Gorillas are going to be, is that McGregor? It sure is. Um, and then the Bucks are going to be Thompson. Yeah, Thompson over there. All right, perfect. All so, right. um, neither one of these guys being sub like Pizza and Murray's not really being someone who I could see, you know, playing UFC or being a part of. Well, not being a part of UFC, but you know, being in for <laughs> UFC. Uh, but interesting to see here a lot of spacing between both of the uh, both of the uh, end gamers here, right? And pizza, man. I'm I'm already liking the footwork I see here, but the small thing that's happening here, that pizza not having a coach here to maybe tell him, mm -hmm. is that his front leg is taking a lot of damage. Merz is throwing these body shots, but realizing pizza doesn't know how to swap these legs, which means that leg, that shin is gonna break if he keeps taking all of this damage shot after shot. Now pizza trying to trade it back. Murr's looking for a big shot there, wasn't able to connect. Yep, and it shows, like, the reason that he doesn't have that coaching is because I don't think gravity knows as well. But Murr's knows. Like, yes. he keeps going for that, like, and then and then Pizza, what is he doing? The same thing. Yes. And that's the big thing is, like, Pizza's like, all right, well, you're doing this and it's working against me. How, do you, how are you going to defend it? Mm -hmm. I'm going to kick you back. I'm going to yep. just keep kicking you back. Mm, right there. Gets him again. Ooh, Ooh. and a big shot to the head. But uh, <laughs> immediately, I love this little, the work here from Pizza Man, just finding these opportunities to immediately trade back each and every single shot. Merz has his plan, using McGregor to go ahead and get this damage, defending himself. Definitely has some practice on the game, I can tell. It's, it's. I don't know about, never mind, these kicks from full screen, I, never mind, I died. <laughs> I was, I was. He a, thinks he's Dalsim in Street Fighter. Oh, but oh, that, nice that red means he's in a little bit of danger, a big counter shot, putting him in a bad spot, and... Pizza Man, if he can find a few more of those, oh. might just be able to win this game. And there's a forfeit what? from the Bucks? I don't think the game was set up right. And they're still going. But uh, it wouldn't be from the Bucks, right? Oh, it's five rounds instead of three. Oh. Oh, I think it, yeah, I think it is miss, unfortunately, miss it up. I'm, let the players, our players are currently playing it out, trying to at least get some more experience in the game, I believe. Well, that is unfortunate. But what was the next game? I missed that. Production. <laughs> Halo, Halo, Halo that's Infinite. That's right, that's right. Murs would be pretty happy if he is available. I think, no, he's definitely going to have himself available for the game. Now, the only reason this is a forfeit as well is if someone called it out, because technically their player has an advantage. Mm -hmm. it, honestly, Pizza Man doing a lot of what I'm, I'm used to seeing him do. Just 
Yeah. Keeping that distance, going in when he needs to. Now, I need some people to work with, like some fighting game players to work with Pizza Man, because Pizza Man's like spacing and neutral understanding is actually kind of there. You can see mm -hmm. what he's going for. He's using his feet to kind of cause these big whips and then getting back in range and responding himself. And actually, we'll get, uh, we'll come back to us. I believe that with this forfeit already being, you know, Dunzo Sunzo. We're going to go ahead into uh, Halo here in just a little bit. And like you, you were absolutely correct. Merz is going most likely going to be going. In oh, he's, he's not going to miss a chance to play Halo. I'm going to be very honest with you. He not, especially not a chance to catch a clip. Uh, but the game mode comes down here. I'm trying to think about what game mode I would end up choosing. Um, you're probably going to go Slayer. They have less targets to kill. They basically have to kill you 25 times. Now, if they push together as a team. You're going to be fighting for your life, but that's better than trying to capture a flag or hold the oddball yeah. 2v4. You might be able to force some advantageous fights, um, and you have more targets to kill ultimately. Ultimately. Um, and, yeah, bit unfortunate FF there. I think that was one of those winnable games, especially with the way Pizza Man was playing. The way Pizza Man was playing, I had a pretty strong confidence that Murray was going to have to do something different in the grand scheme of things to be able to get something mm -hmm. there he was whiffing a lot of kicks and whether he was trying to bait pizza man in or not pizza man started to find those shots that could have easily led uh to a big knockout i mean and it also goes to show your um goes to show like how tough it is for two people to be able to like really set things up within a certain amount of time and set them up properly right so mistakes will be made and right now when it comes to the so the bucks have no more timeouts right so the only thing that they can do right now is forfeit games which is an unfortunate situation but it's something that has to be done setups are and I'm, I'm saying this now because i think it is important um i know the 21st of this month um 21st of april we're gonna find out the wheel for next season um this month and now once we find out that wheel uh Sometime between now and the start of the next season, we're going to find out the rules. And I would implore most teams, spend like the first week just nailing down that setup. Yeah. Like the moment you get setup rules, go in and make sure you find out everything. Ask the questions that need to be asked and worked on <clears throat> ensuring you can get these games set up and down don't just assume because you've played overwatch 400 times a hundred thousand times you know what to do you need to be able to do it with your eyes closed and assume you're not always available That's if right. i'm like oh hey f1 came up vince knows i set up f1 i don't ever have to think about it yeah you're absolutely right chris uh, I don't mind it as much as you do. Uh, AV knows how to set up F1. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, um, <laughs> now, I you do. will be put in situations where you know there's going to be a two-minute timer, mm -hmm. and I'm watching you play Halo, and I'm like, <laughs> AV, when you get out of this, I'm like, hey, AV, I'm happy that you won or lost. Uh, we need to set up F1 in the next two minutes. Please, please, please save us. Versus, like, having it all set up and the plan uh, put together. With that... Uh, will reveal that's coming up the beginning of um, or you know this month or towards the end of this month what uh, is there a specific game that you're looking forward to like hopefully seeing for next season um I funnily enough like I'm one of the few players I think that I like shout out to Titus uh, CEO I like the chaos that Titus brings it's oh, 100%. the best it's the best thing when people have if I had a hope for a game League is really fun. I've played League for years, but hilariously enough, there's a MOBA that's been coming back recently called Predecessor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as a huge fan of Paragon, as a huge fan of Paragon, um, those that don't know, Predecessor is a like fully 3D MOBA. Yes! <laughs> and the yes. biggest thing that has always made it a success is it's not only available on PC, but on console as well, fully cross-play. So if somebody's chasing you, you can literally jump over a wall. Not just like, oh, haha, I don't know what to do. No, if you understand your character, you can do it. And I would love to see that as like a league replacement. You um, literally took the words right <laughs> out of my mouth. <laughs> oh, I just... Uh, 
There's a lot of games that like because Titus always finds interesting games. Yeah. Like one game I'm always said I never got to play was Split Gate. That game seems so interesting to yeah. my brain. Yeah. It's like a shooter with chess built in with mm-hmm. time loops and like, oh well, if I throw a grenade here, he'll be there in two seconds and land yeah. on the grenade and those types of games, finding those unique experiences is something that the UEL is always great at uh, doing. And so I cannot wait to see what we see on the 21st. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. That was honestly going to be the game that I was going to say. I, I, I love, dude, I love Predecessor. I have it. I, I just recently started playing it a little bit. I'm still trying to understand uh, some of the mechanics and the builds and things like that. But um, I said split gate and uh, Lemnus, not split gate. Yeah, Lemnus gate. Rest in peace, Lemnus gate. There. Time loops. Well, well, I mean, regardless, both games got shut down. Did they? Yeah, I don't. Think... Oh, Split Gate Two, I think they're still working on that. Oh, okay. They but... might be. Yeah, they they might have had a new one. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But um, that would be one of the games that I'd be really interested to see. Honestly, I'm just excited to see what exactly we are going to get. Just in general, like whatever whatever games that we do happen to to. You know, the, whatever is going to be revealed is what I'm looking forward to. I also just want insane games. Like, Call of Duty, Halo, Gears are fun. Mm-hmm. Even as a StarCraft fan, it's mm-hmm. fun. I could also bring up, there is actually a new RTS coming from the StarCraft devs that has been in beta, that has slowly been getting better and better. So, you know, Billy might have more a bigger playground to play with people in. Um, but in general, I think for me... I think there's so many different games. Like, this came up last season, right? And while the, they're getting their game set up, I could throw out some games to you, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, in the strategy category, why don't we have uh, Armored Core five, uh, 6? Let people build mechs and then go into don't a 3 3 and go crazy. Don't do that. In the don't, shooting don't category, do don't yeah, don't. Ace Combat, let people get in a plane and fly that around. And Like, there's so many uh, hey, unique agree. games that I'm like, Find me, uh, what was it called with the dodgeballs that we played a couple of seasons ago? Knockout City? Knockout City. Find me the Knockout Cities. Find me mm-hmm. the uh, Roller Champs. Those games that are like less traditional, and you really get to see the end gamers cook with the creative, uh, the, the, the creative juices, right? Yeah. The creative uh, freedom and that, that flexibility you mentioned earlier. That is where a lot of the end gamers to me shine is where it's like, all right, cool. You're playing against uh chicken tech and mortal Kombat. How are you going to win? He knows the frame data. He knows the characters. What are you going to do? Somebody's like, no fucking but what if I just no jump out of left field? I think that. And here we go. We got, we're watching the gorillas here. Uh, one of, I think the stronger, stronger, Halo teams in the league, they have some Go great on, team play, and nice. here we go. I think we're watching Global Figure now, all pressing up mid here in Bazaar. We saw this map recently as well. All right, here we go. We moving around the settings. Global realizing maybe something's a little bit wrong, but we got Pizza Man here playing doors, doing his best to not push too hard. But this is what I was most worried about when it came to dealing with this fight if they just push us four players it'll be really difficult for the gr- for the bucks to really be able to do anything without well, you really utilizing like the grenades super well well yeah no i definitely get exactly where you're coming oh, from but what i just saw or what i just witnessed on the buck side like pizza man started to turn around mm-hmm. so that he could uh like get away but gravity was still kind of like falling behind right like he was just like oh there are people here and Pizza ended up turning around and still helping him out. Yes. And so it's four to one. Like, uh, once again, one of the big things about not having a bunch of extra players sometimes means that they will be like, they have less kills to be able to get. So if you can take some of these fights, as long as you're trading one for one, the score will remain relatively close the entire time but that's really hard against this gorillas team watching their play for those that don't notice is you see them in a lot tighter formations and really team shooting a lot heavier if there's an objective up they're going to be moving together towards that objective they're not going to be running off by themselves even if they feel like they have the ability to they're always going to be taking 
these fights together all of them are, are together in this bizarre area now three are pushing doors with global hanging back just in case to cover this top area now moving up there as one of his teammates is there as well they're trying to find these bucks members but it looks like this might be the woods because they can't seem to find the bucks like, again it, it is there's only two of the bucks that are there so they're just gonna really again they're gonna be in a spot where you know it's really you're not gonna be able to run around and just find them I mean, you, you would have to, but Let's see here. Oh my God. What the heck weapon is that? That is, it's the electric one. I know that's really good at disabling vehicles. Uh, I, it's name escapes me because Halo continually adds and changes the names of weapons. Uh, Global looking for his opportunity there, backing off as the shields get low, recognizing like, hey, the only way we lose this game is if maybe we give away some free kills. The scoreline has now ballooned out to an eight-point lead in the favor of the Gorillas. Three of them hopping up top here, pushing onto this lone Bucks member, mm. trying his best to find a fight and is unable to do so, grabbing the commando, having control of pretty much all the weapon uh, spawns, <laughs> limiting the Bucks opportunity to have any extra tools to kind of hopefully create some of these victorious situations. I think Global keeps trying to use the grappling hook and he keeps pressing the melee button. He still thinks that he's playing fighters. Uh, I'll go one step further. He doesn't actually have a grapple. So whatever key he's looking for does not currently work <laughs> for what he is hoping. Boy, he was looking up there. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, we, we going up or... But I think that they're playing well. A nice shot there. That could have actually, if that was, that was unfortunately one of the Gorillas members, I guess for fans of the New Jersey Gorillas, maybe a benefit there. Doing a great job of controlling here. Him now, uh, Global that is, con uh, having control of this dash, giving him a little bit extra mobility. And they're now playing, it looks like, off of the spawns of some of these power weapons. Just trying to ensure that, the Bucks don't get control of it, and we see a fight down here in Bazaar. One of the teammates moving, catching him as he tries to position himself back around the corner. Yeah, this is a really hard position, uh, a really hard situation for the for the Bucks to be in. Um, typically, whenever they have a, a gunfight with one, then the other three come come running. And it's it's one of those. This is one of those games where if you're online playing, it's just say, hey, yo, one v one me, bro, mm -hmm. bro. You, you 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 every time I fight you, you got three of your teammates showing up to fight with you, nah. And uh, we're in gamers, bro. We we play to win. They realize the only way we lose is if we take the ones. We're gonna take these two v ones, three v ones, four v ones. We're gonna force these spawns to keep on flipping, and that's another good thing that the gorillas are showing off here. Their understanding of how the spawning system kind of works in the game and staying mobile to be able to do this. But now we see both of the Bucks players staying together. I mean, uh, you're uh, yeah, you're right. It's it's a hard <laughs> it's a hard situation because like it's a situation of if you stay together, you're more likely to run into all of them, mm -hmm. and like you might be fighting a four v two. If you separate though, there's just as likely that you run into a three v one. Which one's better? And you sometimes can feel like, oh, I just need to win my gunfights, and it's just like, well, that's super oh, difficult okay. unless you manage to go there. Managing to trade it back, but it looks like they were able to get a kill at the very least, ensuring that they, the gap does not get any wider. No. Plasma pistol in hand. You see gravity sliding around, repositioning, maybe moving back here to Pizza Man. And I will say, it looks like maybe the gorillas don't realize those extra two PCs are in the back. I didn't think about this during mm. setup. Being available as kills to kind of run the score up quicker. Oh. None of them checking back there just to see if anybody is sitting there. Maybe showing, just saying, hey, we can win this if we just focus on those two players. Uh, we're under an hour here left in the game. And the, the Gorillas, I think, really wanting to show off some of that work they have in Halo. Whatever weapon he switches over to with those little spikes on it, I hate it. Uh, the Needler. It is, you don't really have to aim it. You kind of just point it in the general direction of your enemy, and it kind of tracks them and explodes after a while. It's a great gun. Oh, never mind. I love it. Uh, Yeah, you know, I know you, you can't aim super well. So no, 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 no. I'm not an end gamer. I just run production. I've seen you talk about Titanfall. What are you talking about? For those of hey, you know, Vince is better than all y'all. Challenge him to the wheel. No, do not challenge me to the wheel. <laughs> Charles Chris to the wheel. 
Who is that? I don't know. AV. That's Strix. Thank you. Uh, but anyway. Ooh, an unfortunate shot there from the center shot leads oh, to his own okay. demise. And we see what happens when the ones happen. His teammates surge out into the middle to maybe try to make up for that kill. But they're a little bit late to immediately trade it back. And now they're in pursuit of this Bucks player who continues to move, trying to oh, force it. And oh. once again, when the ones were fought, the Bucks came out victorious. So maybe, just maybe, the gorillas realize they need this man advantage well i mean honestly in that situation as you saw you know he was able to at least take one maybe two people down and then uh he kind of got put by himself after you know either pizza or gravity was already down so you know it's it's really hard to continue to the the gunfight even with you know with even with having your shields and things regen after a certain amount of time he is not able to get a kill here. Swaps to the needler hey, that's out of go. ammo. I hope that was pizza, man. Swaps to the needler that was out of ammo. I don't think he meant to put that there. Uh, It didn't do anything, so it's fine. And now getting hit from behind. He's trying his best to react. It Let's looks go, like pizza. Pizza man's ability here. Of just staying alive long enough, and I think that's the eight-minute timer yep. coming to a close, ending off the game with another win heading on over two. <laughs> over to 2K. Thank you. Over to 2K. There we go. Halo is the last game. 2K coming up next. And y'all may not believe it, but I'm going to say it right now. You didn't believe in Madden either. Yeah. Listen, Pizza said he was just pressing buttons, bro. Hey, Look, well, I, hey. see, I see it like this. Put Pizza, keep him in the paint, give him a big man. Nah, put him on Kobe. We saw what QWERTY did. Hand him Kobe. Let that man press one button square. <laughs> All green. Buckets. As long as he's on fire, bro. And we Global got figure's about to become loco hero. <laughs> Gone. 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 I'm all in on Pizza Man. Everybody in the chat, say it with me, Pizza Man. Pizza Man, baby. Pizza, pizza time. It's pizza time, the pizza sweep, the pizza pick. My man has done so much today that uh, I'm happy again. I, I, I can't, I think, stress enough how good both of the players on the Bucks have been playing. Again, the Gorillas are coming out and showing that, hey, we have our systems. We're a well-oiled machine. We can perform with the best of them um, and wanting to make that name for themselves, right? They've had some tough games more recently and they've managed to come out for these wins. But the idea that going into a 2v5, uh, we see that the Bucks are finding their opportunities. And 2K, one of those games, 2K in, a, in the way we play in the league, definitely comes down to uh, how well you can shoot, really. Offense seems to dominate. We have some good defensive players, and we see some good defense from time to time. But we ultimately, it feels like the team that's able to shoot a little bit more consistently will end up taking it. I wonder if we're going to see a meta comp. You mentioned big men. Um, we've seen Embiid being a little bit more played now in the league by multiple players. Um, beyond Embiid, um, there is that from the shooter. Shout out to QWERTY over on the X Gods, putting up, I think, 18 points on his last performance um, with Kobe. Uh, we saw Kareem come out from the X Gods as well. Um, you know, you still see a few of these other players. We've seen what Kevin Durant this season. Uh, we've seen Jokic. We've seen uh, Dirk Nowitzki. We've seen a wide variety in 2K this season, which I think 2K moving to a 2v2 format has allowed. Really opened up 2K players to kind of flourish a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Where 4v4, uh, we saw cherry pick cutters on full effect oh, usually. Man. And uh, teams just didn't know how to stop it. Cherry pick cutters, bro. That my was, man, my yeah. man was I Cutter was amazing. A shot went up and Cutter's turned and just started running and was like, Hey yo, I'm open. Mm -hmm. Ball. Um But it's always interesting. That's what's interesting going into each season. Like we, we don't know how the wheel is gonna evolve and what all is gonna happen and how these teams are going to evolve. Uh looking at the Bucks, remember they have another draft ahead of them. Um with the position they're currently in, they are more than likely going to start with that first overall pick again. Um, and having that first overall pick puts them in a position to control a lot of their fate. I think they do still have an extra pick in the first round as well. Yeah. So, again, if we just say, hey, um, fear, gravity, uh, pizza man, 
Uh, I know Sparrow's on the team. If you if you can get two or three more players, then we're in a great position to, you know, have that competitive team. I always say start with a three-man core, find your three players, define it, and then go from there. So we have uh, Leonard Murray. Leonard Murray, and we'll tell you who in just a second. It'll be 0-2. The L and global figure going up against Gravity and Pizza Man. Everybody here in the league, we get our players all set up. We get our, our control set up. I think that's Jokic. Hello. We get uh, Jokic. We got Kobe in here as well. And looks like they're, everybody's got everything set up, and they're just going to go ahead and reset and let the ball go back to original. Owners, that ball is not going to count. Didn't go ahead and check it. But an all right time going ahead and restarting. So let's see where we got. We got Kawhi with Jokic. He's going to give the ball back. And let's see who is starting. So we have Global on Jokic and O2L on Kawhi. And for the Bucks, I'll tell you here in one second who is who. I'm hoping to see Pizza on the Kobe. Give him the opportunity to play. And it looks like Gravity is on Jamal Murray and Pizza Man is on Kobe Bryant. So we will have a great time. Pizza moving, looking for his opportunity to get a shot. Hands up here by Global, just trying to keep him out. Unfortunately, isn't able to get the shot to land. Global goes back, resets, takes a shot. Good defense, but unfortunately, Global is able to, to make it in. And we saw this in Madden a little bit. It took the Bucks a second to get a little bit more comfortable. But with a little bit of time, I think they're going to be able to find an opportunity here. I think Global is really trying to not let what happened in Madden happen again. He is playing some of the most aggressive defense, manages to get the second rebound, is going to bring it back out again. Is he going to take another shot? Where are we going to move here? Drives in, kicks back to O to the L. O to the L runs in and goes ahead and lays the ball in the hoop. All right, Bucks, let's see. Let's go ahead and get it started. I think Pizza Man remembering some of what he may have learned when he was playing on the Trolls. Really controlling a nice inside lane. An early shot. Unable to get it to go in, but ready to take it back again. Global with the second rebound. He's moving in. Goes in for a dunk of his own. Oh, right. The big thing, though, is this is still four, only a four-point Lead. This is a couple of possessions away from being able to. And again, Global might have heard my joke because he is really playing some aggressive defense and a nice quick play. Great vision from Pizza to find Gravity under the hoop and Gravity finishing the play. You were absolutely right. Pizza went with Kobe. All right. Look, they let him quarterback <laughs> in Madden and he, he, he five picks. I'm putting him on the playmaker and letting him... <clears throat> Make some magic. Yeah, let it happen. So a lot of what's happening, though, is I'm seeing a lot of separation between the teams because they're both uh, they're both on one person. Yes. Right. And that's giving. And when the ball is passed, they're not able to get over there fast enough to stop them. Takes Ooh, that shot, shot. All the way out there. No, sir. Bring it right on back. No, do Ooh. not shoot that. Please don't shoot that. And this is one of those big things that I would say right now, if the Bucks are looking going forward, you mentioned the big man. I think having a big man would help here mm -hmm. in just getting some of those rebounds because I think initially getting used to taking the shot, Global Wide Open misses the shot, and Pizza Man with the rebound. Pizza, Pizza Man, go, man back, realize, no. realize, Pizza, go back, go back, go back. No, 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 don't take the shot. Don't take the shot, don't take the shoot. shot. It's going to bounce off. That's going to pass the ball back in there. It's one of those small things just to realize you got to reset. You got to go back over the key. Global running in, getting another layup. Here we go. Gravity starting off, passes it to Pizza Man. Pizza Man with some space. Both players chasing down Pizza Man, trying to stop him. Pizza Man, pass it. Pass it. Bringing it back out. Oh. A nice play. The vision oh. was they're looking and finding the angle, catching gravity on the inside. Wasn't able to finish, though. And we OCL, pump fakes, kicks it on over to Global. What I don't agree with is having pizza so close in the paint, right? I just don't feel like because they already have some 
uh, big people in there. A little bit late on the release, but good idea. I'm happy he's still taking shots. I think if yeah. when you're scared to shoot in 2K, it's a lot worse than just being willing to make a mistake here or there. Mm -hmm. It will absolutely allow you to get better over time, and you'll start to find that rhythm that you need. Mm -hmm. And the Bucks don't have, like, a, a big man at all, so they have two. Like, and a nice play once all again. Right. All right, I'll shut up. <laughs> the I'll vision, I'm just saying, like, talking. they're finding these options where the gorillas are being overly aggressive and stepping too far forward. O to the L stepping forward. Finds his moment, mm -hmm. takes his time, and that's the same thing I want to see out, out of the Bucks players. Is both of them like they managed to get in? Yeah, I was about to get so upset. Uh, it, I actually thought that might have gone in. Global taking the shot, mm. all green. Every now, time. It does look like we have someone that is cold. I think gravity is cold right now, which is not looking too good. I would not have him going in for any shots unless they were super easy ones on the inside, but it's not going to. Pizza with a nice attempt. I can tell he's getting that shot down before some of the shots were early. Now he's a little bit late. He just has to find that middle ground. Mm. Right, let's see here. It's going back to them. Gravity with an open lane. Is he going to go ahead and take it? And that he does wild. manage to make the contested shot here. I think Global's going to take this three. Yep. Yep. And that's just the awareness of Global to... to he, they've been playing inside so much. Mm -hmm. He has the opportunity where they're worried about that inside game. But Pizza pulling them around the floor... Puts up a quick shot. No foul. We're on the blacktop. Played a little bit differently. Your global resets. I think he's going to look for this three again. A nice job of just staying in front of him. He has to pass the ball now or take the shot. Looks for O to the L. Who has an angle on the basket. And this is where, again, some of that veteran leadership could help out here. I think 2K is a very teachable game. Yes, there's some stuff you're not going to be able to figure out super fast, but you'll be able to. Nice job forcing Global to pick up the dribble here. Global's going to have to find an opportunity, and since both players are standing next to each other. Wow. Okay. I didn't expect that to go in. I'm going to be very me, honest Me with either. You. I, me either. All right, let's see. Pizza looking for his opportunity. He's been finding these passes. Oh, Manages to beat let's his go. man and lay it in. You know, he's he looking at global like take it global. You've been wanting to shoot all day. Take the shot. It's just uh, and a nice job yeah. forcing the miss. Nope. Nope. Take it back. Don't even don't even try it, bro. It's not worth it. Thank Boom. You. Kicks it back to global. Global puts it up wide open and it's gonna go right on in there. One more point here for the gorillas. But, but that's a said good. not not so easy. Yes. Right. And now they just need to start getting these stops. If they can pick it, pick it up fancy. on defense, they will be able. Looks like they found maybe their offensive foot global using these dribble moves. Okay, global, you're trying to be fancy. Good. I'm glad he was. And old to the L gets what in the <laughs> world? <laughs> I think gravity said nah. You, you, no clips, no highlights, and a nice pass between two. Nice oh, patience. Kicks out. And I think with that, that's going to be uh, that the game of it. 2K. Once again, we knew that sporting, sporting games, sports games aren't their biggest mm -hmm. strength there. But both players showing that, hey, some of the ideas are there with some more time and a bigger chance to develop. I think both of them have already proven. A, we came into today wondering what was possible for the Bucks, And I now, and Pizza especially shows that, Hey, I think with the proper coaching, Pizza can consistently dominate and play against the top players in the yeah, league. Yeah, absolutely. No, and I definitely agree with you there. And with that being said, we're going to get that road to Michigan up one more time uh, before this game comes to an end. Maybe maybe another one more time after maybe, this. Maybe, just maybe. Again, guys, we want to remind you that we have the tickets on sale right now. All you have to do is scan that QR code, come out there, come meet some of these end gamers come meet some of us end gamer production team get to know us get to know what we're about this is going to be a really exciting 
uh, exciting game. Yes, I cannot wait. It's super exciting. And if you have never experienced the finals or experienced esports, especially in an arena, a performance hall, it is going to be an experience unlike anything you have seen before. Uh, I definitely recommend teams are looking great this year. And I think with the playoffs, things are only going to heat up more and more. Oh, yeah, 100 um, percent. I am. What's the what's the next playoff game? What's the actual playoff? game? Well, that's tomorrow, right? So the the first playoff games, funny enough, after we finish uh, the last week, next two weeks will be the last weeks. Then we have like a two week break until May when playoff games officially start giving these teams a little bit of chance to perform. In the meantime, though, we have the game reveal. We have staff versus pros, rookies versus sophomores. We have a lot of opportunities for uh, players to, to highlight and get a chance to be seen as well and still get a chance to play uh, some more games. And then playoffs happens. Teams will have a chance. You'll know who your opponent is, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are uh, the Cobras, since it's my team, um, we more than likely are right now looking like we're playing the bots. So we have a chance to look at the bots and like, all right, what do we think they're going to do? Mm -hmm. Plan, perform, do some of that uh, studying and practicing that maybe you were talking about a little bit earlier. Oh, yeah. No, you're absolutely right there. And it does also, it, it'll be a good at least the playoff game would be a really good game with the, uh, the Cobras versus the bots. We saw last season that the bots and the Cobras played. The Cobras actually ended up winning that game. So this is uh, this will be a true testament to see just how much they have grown. Uh, both teams have grown with the addition of Lucky Saturn and Swag King, who mm. came out last uh, their last game and really showed that he is a dominant player a dominant end gamer uh really strong uh individual on a lot of different games there and we're getting pokemon set up here as well again before we switch off please 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 everybody at home av told you go ahead grab your phone scan the qr code head on over to ticketmaster grab your tickets and join us in grand rapids michigan at the devos performance theater on june 8th for the finals find out who claims season seven's hundred thousand dollars season eight season eight i, I was we, so confused uh, season seven was it season eight it's crazy to me to say that a few months ago we were talking about a hundred thousand dollars and now again we're playing for a hundred thousand yeah. dollars it is amazing this pokemon game could be pretty interesting pokemon's another one of those one v ones that anybody well, can win and that you're absolutely right honestly uh gravity even said himself that that's one of the games that he is more he he is strong at so i think this would be a really good game for uh the bucks really get them in that momentum of potentially trying to win some other games here. But Pokemon can be a really long game. How long does Pokemon usually go for? So Pokemon, depending on how long each team, I think that most teams could probably go like 10, 15 minutes um, easily. Uh, if people are really playing their outs and thinking about each turn, each turn itself is limited to about a minute, a little over a minute in time. But it it's one of those games that, if you make the right decisions, you get a few protects, that timer starts to stretch out. We play three-minute quarters in Madden, and that takes 45 minutes in some cases. So you can't really count on, oh, Pokemon is going to be a super short yeah. game. No, I, I definitely agree with you there. And with this game, usually I have, like, an MVP for each team, mm -hmm. right? Like that's, that's my thing. I mm -hmm. like having an MVP. MVP for the Bucks is both of them. Both, both Gravity and Pizza have really, really done everything that they can to win these games today, and I am truly proud of the both of them. Yeah, I I think if I was leading the Bucks, I'm looking at both of these players and be like, you've solidified your spots as starting players mm -hmm. and being able to consistently come back and perform. If I get you some help, I know that we have a team ready. Yeah, 100%. Um, for the Gorillas, I am actually, who, who do I want? as my MVP. I'm going to say Merge just because he goes home to his, his pet cat. I appreciate it. We don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> what do I, you mean? I will not agree with you there. I got to talk to Merge. The kitty no. is so cute. I'm going to go with Global. Just because he was dancing. Yeah, his dance, dance was actually, it was it was, yeah, it was, it yeah. was a pretty good dance. Dance master right he, there. He said he was having a little bit of fun as well. Again, I also like O to the L. I think coming out, a lot of people don't necessarily, haven't seen too much O to the L, but coming in and sliding in, getting a sweep of his own in Tekken 8, performing well across the board where his team needs him to slot in, showing that they do and they maybe have some more depth than maybe people are starting to expect out of the team, mm -hmm. and that will ultimately end up being 
huge. We do have a timeout here that should be coming out of the gorillas because I believe the Bucks are out of timeouts. Maybe having some difficulty getting Pokemon set up. Tech, I believe it was a tech timeout. Uh, and you know what's funny is as soon as uh, I as soon as Pokemon spun, I saw Rex himself out there. So Rex is not gonna let this game be played. Rex always is happy to have, it, sure the have it get run and get played. <laughs> So it'll be, it looks like Gravity versus O to the L. O to the L has been a strategy player since I spoke to him last season. Mm-hmm. Um, notably, I always remember like he came up to me. He was like talking, wanted to talk about StarCraft and and asked for a little bit of help. And that ends up mattering to me, especially for a game like StarCraft, people mm-hmm. that want to do it um, and learn more about it. So hopefully maybe he has something cooked up, something a little bit different. And it looks like we are getting into game here. Oh, and man, while we get, get into the game, we will go ahead and spin the wheel. Rex sent out ooh okay we have two teams and whose pov we're watching gravity's wow. pov valorant coming up next the 5v5s have found a way to roll today. we're looking at the bucks pov so we're looking at gravity okay so using currently using uh chin pow and tornadus the genie's yeah, tornado. He's the air one. Um, usually able to get a lot of uh, effective damage and just play for tempo. But this uh, Calrex we saw from yesterday dealt a lot of damage and ran away with the game. Right, and we saw a lot of like the follow me. Right, so he's yes. trying to use sucker punch here. If there's that follow me, I feel like it's going to miss. It's the really scary situation where you have to make a call here. And I'm looking at if you're using tornadoes, you want to get that tailwind set up. Give your team priority allow it to move a little bit quicker making the decision to actually pull out the caloric shadow just to keep it safe and going into the okie dogie the what okie dogie he's a, he's a dog don't you see okay do you not like pets sir it's mm. not even that man it's, it's okay so look, at, look anyway anyway back to back to Pokemon. <laughs> what move was that what did he get hit by uh I was not looking. I'll be very honest with you. I was I was looking at you because you don't like dogs. I don't. It, you confuse me, sir. But just keep it at one fifty one, okay? Now next. There's over a thousand. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> so here, looking possibly at the sucker punch. Thing isn't super effective on the NDD. Um, maybe wanted to just take it out before too much time is going on. But instead, choosing to protect, play it a little bit safe, and gonna bleak windstorm. Now bleak windstorm. Is a good option. It can hit both slots, but it does have an opportunity to miss. So kind of a big risk, big reward. Ogie Dogie went ahead and avoided it, but some damage getting out onto the Indeedy. And a luring voice coming out of the Indeedy. Nice job on the protect, recognizing the Chin Pao could be in danger. That Indeedy didn't do a lot of, ooh, didn't take a lot of damage. And it looks like it was hurt by the Rocky Helmet. Interesting that he still stayed on one health from that. Yes, I thought it was a focus sash. I both look both of us did, and the fact that it ended up being the Rocky Helmet does mean he trades some damage back off of that ice punch. And now I want to see where exactly Gravity is gonna go from here with both of his Pokemon on low health. Maybe opting into still having the Tailwind up, so he can opt into maybe trying to get as much damage. And uh, OTL thinking the same thing, withdrawing. The Ndidi being in a dangerous position, bringing out a tornado of his own. That sucker punch, unfortunately, is not going to work because no attack came out. You called that before. Bleak Wind Storm goes off. More damage to the opposing Pokemon and Drain Punch into the Chien Pao. It survives. I, it does I, have a sash. No, no. Chien Pao, Chien Pao has a sash. There's no world where you oh, don't run Chien okay. Pao with a sash. Uh, I'm going to be very honest with you. That's upset. one of those situations where I'm like, Gravity might have the best damage calcs out of anybody in the league if he had two things live on one health without Sash. You knew exactly, exactly, exactly. The fact that he got two Pokemon out, both were one HP, and one was off of Focus Sash, and the other one was from a Rocky Helmet. And now my question here is, are you going to look for straight-up damage, or do you want to try to set up Rain Dance? My big question here is, I, since we didn't get to see his team, we don't necessarily know if it is a rain-based team or not. Icicle Crash being used to great effect to go ahead and take out the opposing Tornadus before it's able to get set up. And this Bleak Wind Storm does hit, doing more damage to the Okie Dogie. Can it go ahead and respond, taking out the Tornadus yeah. on the other side? So 
Now the big situation for the Bucks player is they need to get as much done while this tailwind is still up. They're going to be moving first. They're going to have more opportunities. Oh, and we see God. it peter out. So the situation is neither side is going to have tailwind unless they brought a second setter for it. And now we have to see where you're going here. Going into Hisuian Arcanine. Fire and rock type here. Right. Okay. Uh, this is a, he's from ancient times. It's a whole thing. Uh -huh. And Chi Yu. And Chi Yu is, I'm, I'm, and I'm trolling here, is a fire Pokemon? It is a fire Pokemon. Oh my God. It is absolutely fire Pokemon, and it is a glass cannon. I'm telling you right now, if this thing gets off, it's heat wave. You will see a lot of damage. That's why you see the Chi and Pao going into it, and extreme speed. Hoping to try to pick up two possible kills here. If he does elect to go into it. But the, with the Chi Yu, um, mm -hmm. I do believe that... Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Never mind. Chi's dead, though. I'm trying to tell you, that is a one-hit KO. We don't even get a chance to see what move was picked by O to the L. High horsepower coming back in and trading back onto... So the the psychic terrain ultimately dealing with the priority move there, meaning that Ogie Dogi isn't hit and doesn't take any damage. And so now got to swap in. And this is the scary part for me that I wonder how much gravity knows. Ogie Dogi, I believe, has poison type moves, which is super effective into in D -D -D. Uh, into uh, oh. the grass Pokemon here, Rillaboom. Took me a second to remember his name. But a good job understanding how they come out to overwrite that psychic terrain. Never mind. Yo, that's wild. The psychic terrain, the second psychic terrain got, or the gra uh, grassy mm -hmm. terrain got overridden by the psychic terrain, which still means that Calyrex, uh shadow that's in the back is still a threat with expanding force. Very smart move to use that fake out to try and get that and get that Pokemon flinched if it does not kill him. And once again, trying for another priority move here, you have to recognize Psychic Terrain stops that ability. If you are a grounded Pokemon, Psychic Terrain means your priority moves do not work. Maybe playing into some of that knowledge and seeing if they understand this Poison Jab should do good damage. And by good damage, I mean kill. And in a situation where I thought the Bucks had full control, we're in a situation where they're down to their final two Pokemon. Mm. And we're going to come in here with the Urshifu and the Gold Dingo. <laughs> and again, the game is not over just yet, but it is on a knife's edge, and the Bucks can't afford any more mistakes. So they have the make, it, make rain. it rain. And what are you going to go for on this other side? I didn't see what item as well the Urshifu had. And you're also probably going to want to use your Terastalize you, at some point in this fight before it gets too close. Once again, going for a priority move, which could be disastrous. Trying to make a decision here. Maybe he doesn't understand what's going on with the psychic terrain. I don't think so. It is something that matters. Ends up electing for surging strikes, guaranteed to critical hit, hits three times, manages to take out the NDD. And now the big question here. Mm -hmm. Make it rain, baby. Make it rain is a great move, but each time you use it, it does lower your stats. Oh. So the oh, special no, attack why fell. Why make it rain? Uh, because at this point, he didn't know if it was going to kill or not. Mm -hmm. I think that was why he was considering using the priority move. Now, make it rain, does it hit both Pokemon or just Yes, one? it can hit both Pokemon. So he can continue to use it, but each time he uses that, an iron bundle coming out. Shout out to my Iron Bundle people and Calyrex. And the big thing with Calyrex is it still has the threat here of expanding force, but we already saw that that Gold Dingo has Shadow Ball. Mm -hmm. All right, Quark Drive, Speed. Now, the question I have is, is this Iron Bundle going to be fast enough? You're going to want to kill that tower. Now, like, the game is really close to being done anyway. Mm -hmm. If these hit... I want to see how this speed plays out because this could be a pivotal turning point for the entire match. I feel like Iron Bundle would end up going first because the speed was increased. Uh, this is where the Pokemon player nuance really comes in mm -hmm. because 
you knowing exactly what the original stats of some of these Pokemon are and how these boosts work can literally be the difference of a few points of you going first, you tying, and that protect will keep the Iron Bundle alive. You made the right call, AV. And this expanding force is also going off first. This is going to be big damage. The Urshifu goes down. Excuse me? And then I think that also increases the attack or the special attack of that Pokemon. Yes, that there you see next. special attack going up. But does the Shadow Ball get the KO in return? This is going to be a big... It does. You need to understand, it's a game of inches at this point. Is that leftovers? It is leftovers. Hey. All it's right. Just... It's hey. just these two Pokemon. Yes. Whoever dies first, the game is over. Now the no, big no no, 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 don't make it rain. Now here's the big thing. Iron Bundle had to protect last turn. Mm -hmm. Which means it, it can go for a second protect here, but that's incredibly dangerous. Terrasalize. Into what is going to be the question here. That's a ghost type. I didn't see what did he click? Did he pick Make It Rain or he Shadow Ball? Make, he, no, he clicked Make It Rain. And he oh, used Hydro Ball. No, he missed. It avoided the he attack. Missed. And Make It Rain. Let's see the damage on this. Oh, it doesn't pick up the God. kill. No, it doesn't. If he would have just used Shadow Ball, bro, that would have been it. This is a... Oh. Okay, battle. No, nope, just go for Shadow if Ball, If he had bro. gone for Shadow Ball, legitimately, he would have called out to... Did he click Make It Rain again? No, no, no. He said he clicked Shadow okay, Ball. He okay. clicked Shadow Ball. Okay, I was scared. But the issue is that Hydro Pump is hitting this... Oh, that's it! And, and, and the Bucks win! And the Bucks win! That's there a we Bucks go. victory in Pokemon! Oh, my gosh, bro. Look at that head pop And off. as you see here, Rex has been defeated. <laughs> Pokemon goes on over to the Bucks. Great play. He asked for it. And guess what? Gravity delivered. Hey, bro. And I'm looking at Rex shaking my head, bro. How'd you lose, bro? Come on, Rex. You supposed to be the Pokemon GOAT. No, but actually you know like a really close game. It's because they had Speedy. Speedy told him what to do. Mm, yeah. Mm. Speedy's a better Pokemon. That's what I want to see. If For the staff pros game... We need to make a gentleman's agreement right now. Rex has to play Speedy in Pokemon. It's crazy the staff going to win that game. Anyway. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. I got my boys. I love you, Rex. But you just got defeated right there. Got defeated. A right rookie there. came in and said, hey, let me show you. And, and you, know, you know how it goes. But congratulations to the Bucks on that. When I, that was, that was a match. Honestly, I thought the Bucks were going to lose that and. I'm just saying they've won two strategy games, two sports games, and a shooter today. That's crazy. But we have Valorant up next. Of course, the Bucks are at a disadvantage. Uh, it is a five. No, nah, I'm gonna be very. Sorry. I'm getting out of Valorant. I, I'm, I'm not playing Valorant two v five, unless you are cracked. And look, Pizza Man been shooting all day. Pizza Man, Pizza Man been going crazy. He has been going crazy. Uh, and so has Gravity, so we never know here. They might just say, hey, yo, knife fight me in the mid five times, <laughs> win and take all. Honestly, man, uh, this has been a really good game, regardless of what we've already looked at. What we've yeah. already talked about. Again, I think you look at the situation, and there are real wins here. Like, people don't understand that as well. Like, sometimes we have games where, like, a lot of forfeits play a factor, but what happened? Nothing. I just I had a thought. I thought you saw something. I was like, please don't tell me the gorillas forfeited two e five Valorant. I'm a I'm a walk out there personally, and no, me and Merz gonna have have no, some that's words. Not, that's not I'm gonna game. look like Merz during uh, Madden. I'm just gonna be like Matt Merz. What's going on, bro? <laughs> what's happening, bro? Bro. Oh Madden. man, it has been it's been a fun game today. I did not think that this was gonna be the outcome. Well, as far as like open rosters for Va Nah, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I'm letting you know. Oh, oh, my man, my man, my man took off the headset. The open rosters is there. Vet, this is Darth Av. Yes. What? In all seriousness, um, I am. That is something that I was not expecting. 
I'm just saying, like, if this is something I'll say about Mer- Murray is an incredibly great. He's been a great GM, and he's also like uh, fun to play against because he's never just trying to like. I don't want to say like destroy, uh, like showboat. Mm-hmm. He's willing to like create situations and have fun mm-hmm. and recognize like cool. Oh, hey, y'all want to play? And so I think legitimately, it's why in Wreckfest I was surprised. I thought we were going to see couches. I'm gonna be honest with you. I right, thought we right. were just gonna be drifting and enjoying. But in this moment, I think like. Great time for his team to get some practice, maybe having some confidence there in Kevin and Kenny. And their j- guns emerge himself, a uh, shooter in his own right. Uh, but, yeah, Pizza Man and Gravity, they're going to need to make some magic happen here, one on each site, depending on the map. Imagine they pick a map like Haven that has three sites. What do you do? You have one person be like, all right, I'm BNC. I'll and, do my best. And, like, again, we play Valorant in, like, swift play. So it's just, like, first to five. Pissed around is dual. Again, if your shots are on point with like a sheriff or a ghost, uh, you might be able to take pistol rounds, which means, okay, cool, two rounds there that you have a strong chance of taking. Past that, you just got to be on point and be good. We're loading into Valorant. I forgot the other PCs had to be connected. <laughs> I forgot the other PCs had to be connected. Apex has the next roll. Murr's looking down. I think happy. Apex. He's going to be able to play. And they are playing a two-site map, which does work to the benefit. Now, the question does come up. We see any ego here. Do we see anybody trying to ego it out and maybe taking some gunfights that they shouldn't, wouldn't normally take? And you said there are two sites here, right? And yes. It, again, it was the buck set up, so it has to be somebody's knowledge of the game. It has oh, 100%. Be. You ain't, I'm, not picking, I'm not picking any site, any one of those three-site maps. Because what what do I do there with that third uh, site? Exactly. Okay. Nothing. Okay, we will be focusing here right now on one of the twins. Kevin. Yeah. Oh, did he? Tries to break that. So we see Arena. They're making themselves known. They got to be prepared for somebody to come up on flank. Ooh. Pushing up. Be long here, sending out dog, recognizing that they're willing to commit here. So I see a sage and arena looking to make a play here. If they're able to get these shots off, they might just be able to stop. But now they've seemed to have stalled out, and they have to recognize that someone's going to be on their flank shortly. You can't just wait here. You have to be willing to make the play. Pizza Man down on the arena. Gravity down on the sage. The first round going on over. But you know what, man? They're having a good time. Yes, you can see the last. Down. Enemy one enemy remaining. No, no. Oh, no. <laughs> they had to figure, they took a second to figure out. And, oh, we sent a new character as well, Clove. Oh, we got a Clove player on, over on the Gorillas. That's some information. Global plays Clove. Oh, I guess fighting game players do die, so being able to smoke after your dead is really useful. Yeah, there you go. That's Makes crazy. Sense. That's crazy that you agreed that fighting game players die. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, it's what we talked about. Fighting game players are, uh, you know what? You know what? That's a, that's for a podcast. <laughs> Podcasts have uh, allegations in, right? that fighting game players are the the easiest genre on the wheel. All right, All right here we go. Look. Holding B long. I think taking uh, the the rifle this turn this time the marshal just to be able to be like, hey, are you gonna actually peek this? No. I can't believe he let him do that. He kind of just stood in the same Ooh, spot. Ooh, but Pizza getting his kills. That's one down on Global Figure. Oh. Pizza killing the dog immediately. Swings. Let's pizza go, gets two. Pizza. pizza gets three. Or is that four? That's four. Hey, yo, Pizza get the ace. Yo, yo, y'all, y'all. Pizza ace. Pizza ace. I wish we could get his POV, bro. We can't, though. The resolution's off. Heck, I don't know. Pizza oh, Ace. If Pizza Man gets the Ace, I need this to be a clip highlight of the year. I need somebody in the chat to go ahead and clip this. Swapping out his long range gun for a shorter range rifle. He's looking around. He's nervous. Pizza hasn't planted yet. They're trying to figure out where is Pizza? Where is Got Pizza? Got 39 running? seconds left. Where is Pizza? Where is Pizza? I know Pizza looking for the Ace. Pizza said, yo, yo, you better give me my Ace, bro. Hey, yo, meet me mid. Meet me mid. 30 seconds left. We see Pizza over here is managing to plant on B, has looped his way all the way around. 
And now Pizza just has to get into a position to be able to challenge for this yes, fight. Yes, I'm so glad he's spectating Pizza, man. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Let's see it. All right, Pizza just waiting and listening. I love this idea. Pizza knows that his opponent's idea is either going to be to have to go they defuse have to that bomb. Him. Yeah. Or they're going to have to check all of these areas and push to a better. I, I don't want Pizza peeking too, too much. So again, just playing safe. <laughs> he throws down the blind. Step hey, up. Let's go, Pizza. Let's go, Pizza. Pizza ace, bro. Yo, oh my God. Uh. You, you, asked me, you asked me about how I said, and I said Val. I was like, Valorant 2v5 might be difficult. Pizza gets an ace every round. Oh, my. Bro. This kid's popping off. <laughs> Pizza looking back like, all right, y'all wait here. Pizza typing in chat too. Pizza in game leading. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. All right. So, Pizza Man with the ace. Let's see what he's able to do. They're starting to move a little bit quicker. He's going to swing this corner, takes a couple shots into the bubble. Now, we're going to be seeing the gorillas rotate. Oh. I don't want them to move too slow. It was a good choice, though, to let gravity peak first. It keeps Pizza Man alive. Trying to figure what out where he is, taking the shots happening? through. So ISO is, has the ability to create walls and to force these fights. But Pizza's going to get pinched here in a second. But he Yo, finds his go. first kill. Gets him another person. That's two kills. Oh, they're killing the bots in the back. Pizza has to know somebody's coming up behind him. Gets the ability to heal again if he needs to. Is moving around, repositioning. Are the bots moving too? No, the, all the bots are already dead. He realized that's a 2v1. Make sure he's taking 1v1s. Is able to get another kill <laughs> with this ult here. Don't let it happen twice. Don't let it happen twice. The flash. He moves yeah, with two pizza. aces. Yeah. Back to back aces by Pizza Man. <laughs> and gets the bomb down. <laughs> For those at home, anybody at home that tells me I cannot win Valorant without my team, Pizza Man is proving you wrong <laughs> in this moment. He has one teammate and is doing everything. Has now killed both players. Oh, man. All five players twice. I Pizza thought, said, you know what? Go ahead. Kill off the NPCs. That's fine. I, it told him that somebody was bottom. He's like, got you. The moment you peek, you're done. All right. They're pushing down B-Long again. I think Pizza Man realized after that first play that them playing fast is their best opportunity mm -hmm. to take kills here. <clears throat> All right, let's see. They're taking shots down range. All right, what's the call? Deciding, I think, the walk back, realizing, like, hey, okay, we've been waiting here. We're making noise. They've been trying to flank. That's a flash. Nice job positioning so he doesn't get hit by it. Yeah, that was really oh, and Ooh, gravity, no gravity. Getting a kill, just holding this angle. No, my question is, where's Pizza? Oh, okay. Pizza's rotated back here to watch their flank. Oh, and look, I'm sure they're communicating with each other, letting each other know because gravity knew to turn around. Now, we do need somebody nice job. watching the other side, so I need his head to be on a swivel. Another kill. Two kills for Pizza. There's only two of the gorillas left. Three kills. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm trying to say right now. But can he? Gravity Steve is farting. Good, 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 good. I love the fact right, that yep. Gravity's watching his back. And he's like, yeah, just keep an eye back there. Just let me know if somebody comes up. All right, moving down. And Merz is lurking. Yeah. Looking possibly for an opportunity. Is Merz the last one? Yeah. Merz is the last player alive yeah. for the they, gorillas. Oh, they, all they have to do is... Uh, is uh, oh, didn't yeah. manage to catch him in crossing. Oh, Knows that there has to be two of them. Trades one out. Pizza with the swing oh! and Merz hits the shot. Merz says not again. Not again. Can't let it happen again. Not three times in a row. Yeah, don't push him. <laughs> and we hear from don't, the comms don't saying push don't push him. Don't like push look, him. don't don't challenge. Yo. Don't we we just gotta play oh, yeah, safe yeah, now. Yeah, we tried to play on his ahead. terms. We thought, yeah, five of us running at him. Can he win? And he did it twice. Oh man. All right, here we go. Now the gorillas get to play on offense. And I have the feeling they're just gonna send five people at the site and hope to win. And I'm gonna be honest.
If I'm the gorillas, I'm hoping I don't pick Pizza Man's site. <laughs> don't push him. <laughs> that, they literally just said, like, look, look, look. They're going to run in and see Rain and be like, nope. Nah, we're nah, going to wait. We're just going to wait. Just, hey, I'm you cool. know what? Go for gravity. Mm-hmm. Yep. We're going to rotate around. And then if we're going to if we're gonna rush pizza, we all got to do it at the same time. Okay. Oh. Like this, all right. Pushing up push. mid here as well as pushing walk. down towards A site as walk, walk, for. Walk, walk. Um, where are the peanuts? All right, they were saying walk, but it looks like they're now making noise. They're moving. It looks like they did find Pizza Man. Pizza unable to get a kill. I think four people is a lot to try to deal with on pistol round. Yeah. We saw this last time. Yeah. Once he got a vandal uh, in his hands is when he bomb. started popping off. And now gravity is going to have to rotate around from B to try to take the fight here. But we see the gorillas rotating as well. Has the sheriff as well. So some good headshots here could swing this round oh, oh. it's a quick blind is he gonna swing oh all the gorillas are there managed to get some damage no, he needs to get into a better position he wasn't ah uh, okay so that was a win there from the gorillas but now the 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 book should have opportunities to buy weapons mm -hmm. right and that opportunity to buy is going to be huge because this is where we saw Pizza Man find those wins. I thought it was going to be off of... Um, I thought it was going to be off of pistol rounds. But really, once he gets some of the more... The, the Spectre, the Vandal into his hands, he's been able to win these 1v1s, 1v3s even, mm -hmm. and take these fights. So, I don't even know, man. I don't even... This has been a really good match so far. Here we go. Gravity is holding an angle. He's playing for contact here to let Pizza Man to know when to ro rotate. So he'll know if they push Pizza or push him the moment someone steps around this corner. Yep. I think he's listening and Pizza's calling. Pizza picks up one. And it was a headshot just to let everybody at home know he, he does not miss. Oh. Ends up getting pushed by three, it looks like. And Gravity's trying to, to get make one. his way over there. Checking all of his corners. Spike is down. Gravity's making a lot of noise, so they might hear him coming. Managed to get some damage on Global, but unable to get the kill. All right, there's, you know one's back in your spawn. Go ahead, gets the flash, but Ooh. Gravity able to pick up one before he goes down. So now we're in the moment, full buys. See, <clears throat> um, I forgot what I was going to say. I was so into this that last round. So what I like here is that l really simply, I'm seeing them now on Vandal. This means that Pizza Man, as he's been playing, one of the big things about some of the weaker guns in Valorant is you have to spend more bullets. A Vandal, if you are hitting your headshots, hit them twice. Mm -hmm. With the Vandal, even with full shields, they're guaranteed dead. Mm. Uh, if you miss one, it gets a little bit hard. Again, holding these angles, so if they swing super hard, He's able to play. Unfortunately, gets oh. taken out himself. Pizza's going to have to rotate. He's going to go swap over to Pizza. All right. All right, now, watch, watch some notes. They didn't push down there. They just checked to see who was there. They saw him. They were like, whoa, 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 whoa. Push him either. Pizza's coming. Pizza's coming. All right, cool. Can we actually watch uh, Pizza's POV from Gravity? Pizza getting some damage. Are they going to push Pizza? Pizza, the fact that he immediately repeaked that, Pizza is oh, willing pizza. to take it, manages to get it, and shade out. They're going to push him here, and if he, he takes these fights, back? he can both heal and go invisible and intangible and reposition off of every kill he gets. He really has the opportunity. Vulnerable means he's going to take more damage. He's playing off of this corner, waiting for somebody to push him. I think one of the gorillas might have said, hey, why don't we just not fight this? And now he has ult. He's going to be able to consistently do this. He has to find these kills. All right, checking each corner. We see him move. Baham is still not down. He knows that's where they were. They might have transitioned. His teammates notice they notably haven't killed the bots just yet, which to me tells they realize that, hey, they're giving up inf way too much information. Baham is planted. And here we go. Look at the awareness on Pizza, right? Every he goes corner. around every corner and, and checks, checks just everything. To be safe. And now he's going to have to progress his way all the way over to B site. He now knows one person's on the back here. One of the bots died, so he just has to find that kill. 
It's like, where'd he go? I, I know you were over here. <laughs> and cool. That gets his health back and gets an overheal. So now this next fight, he's Everybody able to get another, another kill. Person down. Two more. If I'm the gorillas, we're both swinging together. I'm not fighting him by myself. And they're just trying to buy time. They're hoping that this bomb Yo, goes Vincent off. Yo, takes another down. And oh, oh, and the no. last one waiting, playing just in case, realizing, all right, I just need to make sure this round ends. I just want to say that in a seven-round game, Pizza Man got 12 kills by himself. Yeah, I, I'm being honest. I got to go play Valorant when I get home. I Mm-mm. The way he, I got to learn, I'm going to study exactly what Pizza Man. I'm like, nope, check that corner. Okay, he swung. Yo, Pizza Man did so well today. Honestly, both of them did really, really well today. I just want to highlight just how scary Pizza Man is going to be as he continues to work with the Bucks or any other team that he's on so that, um, like, he's just, he's going to be an end game. If you tell me, you haven't played Madden before. You haven't really touched the game. And you were just pressing buttons, and you ended up with five picks, three of which you returned for touchdowns, and your quarterback. I'm like, wait, you, you haven't played Madden before? You Never. just Oh, no, he, he has. I'm sorry. He has. Last time he played was when he was six, so about a year ago. <laughs> Evan, he carried the team as well in Call of Duty and it wasn't just Call of Duty, he proved now in shooters, just in general, he's a threat mm -hmm. in Valorant Valorant, legitimately, I'm looking at like, wow, if he had like another teammate, they probably can win Valorant. A lot of these games, one more. Where, where they just needed one more person, bro they just needed one more person to be here to help push that needle forward just a, a little bit Yes, and we saw Gravity as well coming out. The two of them working together, obviously, on a game like Madden and Pokemon, finding those opportunities, picking the right moves, and finding the ability to get those kills. Again, if you are looking at the Bucks, like, okay, well, the Bucks, how do they do this season? I'm like, season nine comes, a few draft picks. And the Gorillas have forfeited Apex. That's because they scared of the pizza man, bro. Look, after that, I, I would not want to go in and shoot. I took five of y'all to make sure y'all killed him each and every single time. He got pushed. Every time they pushed a site, they pushed with at least four. Yeah. At least four. He literally took out three people pretty much by himself. Overwatch yo, let's 2. Play yo, I, mm, can y'all get Overwatch in a minute, please? I need to see, I need to see Pizza's Reaper, bro. And don't look at me like that. I'm scared because, like, if he look, there's a lot of games. If you make Overwatch competitive two v five, I'm absolutely terrified the moment you have teammates. Because at that point, I'm like, wait, 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 wait. You went through tanks, DPS, healers, all by yourself, and we've seen Pizza Man's Reaper constantly find those game defining ults time and time again. I will say that. That whatever character Pizza chose, mm -hmm. I'm glad they did all all agents or whatever you call them. That character that he played is literally my favorite character. Oh, Rain is amazing. What's that? Okay, so it does not look like Overwatch is being played. I think that is the game that I know that we're gonna have the gorillas in here, but I wanna do something a little bit different. I need the Bucks in here. <laughs> I need Pizza Man and I need Gravity. We haven't had the opportunity to really interview them. Uh, this, because the Bucks don't have any other games, do they? I, they might have one more after this one. One more game. Okay. I mean, I, I don't. I don't care. That's besides the point. All right. I want to see. I need them in here. I need them. Yes. Can we please get the Bucks in here as well? I need both of them. <laughs> yes. Oh, really? Get in here, bro. Get in here. Yeah, he, as he should be. <laughs> who, Come on who, in here, pizza. Feel free. Please remember Wait, to speak into the mic on. loud and clear. Wait a second. He's no. ducking. You know Merz is ducking. No. You know Merz is ducking. I'll be right back. You start the interview. Hey, got you. I, you know, I, I got the buttons. Go do the thing. All right, first and foremost, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, feel free to take a seat. So uh, I'm going to start with a, with, a, with a few questions. Okay. I'm happy to have you sitting down here. Okay. All right, all right. So what happened today? What do you mean? What, what what happened? What happened with Pokemon? I'm looking at you. Um, yeah, no, but it's not. He the coach. He won the coaches. I'm I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. No, nah, but no. Nah, Dang. Yeah. 
Hey. No, nah, I'm just messing around. Now, y'all did amazing. I want to first actually shout out to all the Gorillas players. Y'all actually performed well today. Each one of y'all, y'all came in. Y'all saw the games that I know y'all needed to perform in. How were y'all feeling, obviously, heading towards playoffs? Um, we definitely wanted to end the season off strong, you know. Get a little, get a little something in, you know, have a little fun before, you know, we have to get back into work and for playoffs, you know. Um, just have a little fun game, you know. And then once playoffs comes back, um, we're going to be facing the Phantoms. We're just going to lock straight back in, get to work, hopefully make a run in the playoffs. That sounds all right. That sounds great. Now, Global, can you do me a huge favor? I'm going to take this from you for a sec. Bring, t- can you get your GM and have him stand right here, please? Uh, he wants you to come over here. <laughs> Thank you, GM. Perfect. I don't have any other questions for you guys to begin with, but you. Good, sir. All right, I got to add first of all, that Raina was, went nuts. <laughs> all right. So I, I really want to know, uh, Pisa, what was going through your head when you were playing Madden? And bring the mic up to you. Um, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> That was really it. And when was the last time that you played Madden? Years ago. Five or six years ago. That's crazy. And really, really good job in Valorant. I know that it's been a tough uh, season for you guys. It's typically been just you two, right? So, um, Pizza, thank you for that interview. I need to speak to Gravity now. You can go ahead and hand on the mic. <laughs> Gravity, how have you felt in these last couple of games? Come over here. Uh. You know, personally, I felt good. I've never took any of the losing or anything like that as anything bad. It's it's growing. And first year, mostly rookie team, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. But, you know, today I'm actually very much happy uh, with how it went with only two people and caught six points. And then this this little guy going <laughs> absolutely monstrous in Valorant and Madden, uh, despite saying, you know, I haven't played it in five years. <laughs> uh, I think you're lying to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, honestly, good job all around. This was a really, really good game. Um, I, you got us hype in here so many times. I don't take, I can't tell you how many times this fool has stood up, and my, I've, st- I've stood up myself. Not my incredibly fun game from all y'all. Like y'all put on a show today, and mm-hmm. I have to say thank you to each and every single one. I of just want to say the real one who put on this show, this little man right here. Absolutely, he, he's a problem. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. He is a problem. <laughs> And oh, nah. Nah, he is the problem. <laughs> That's all I got to say. All right, cool. Well, that... Ollie, what you got to say? It was a great game. Hosted by Game Master of the Year. Um, <laughs> and, you know, tomorrow we have Eclipse and Ghosts. So we got, we'll see you guys tomorrow at 2 p.m. for that. Hey, close us out. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs>